Welcome back to Metro Ball Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's another Tuesday afternoon, March 22nd, 2024. Sorry for that long intro. I realized right before the stream starts, I was probably still hungry. And so I just had to make a sandwich and eat it very, very quickly. <laughs> we finished streaming like 12 hours ago. Like, what is going on? I realized I was like, maybe I'll go live at 10 in the morning again. It's like, you just finished streaming 10 hours ago. You don't need to do this, buddy. Uh, on that note, we did a stream last night called Hollow Knight, and uh, we played the Hollow Moon decks, and actually, like, highly recommend. Seemed to turn out pretty good. We did two interesting archetypes, and they both worked, so I recommend watching that. I worry that if we put out too much content, it buries the old content. So, sorry, I ate a sandwich really quickly, as aforementioned. Hey, Izzy, happy Tuesday. How's it going? The Montreal Discord so far has been really cute. I like it. Professional streamer lifestyle. Axu, how's it going? Enjoy your tier list. Uh, I'm really, let me know when, when Baramu sends you that monster, that's the monster energy drink, right? Cause there's no way that he, it's not going to happen. There's no way you're not getting that free drink in the mail. Sophie, how's it going? First, welcome to the stream. Steven, love the streams. Hey man. Also props for them having really punchy and evocative titles. I, um, I like to have the streams to have titles that you can kind of guess what's happening, but you know, sometimes more than others on that note. In terms of the the weekly streams, this is our final day of our launch sweeps week of Rebelling Without Rehearsal. I've had a lot of fun. I've genuinely had a lot of fun. Uh, it, like, just more than I thought I would, which is really, really cool. I would love to have any sort of feedback if you're watching this. Specifically, also, if you're watching the VOD, please leave a comment. But, like, does this amount of content in this sort of shape make sense? Or should the time be better spent on something else? Like, I don't know if this is exactly sustainable, but it was really cool, so... I'm glad that it kind of works, which is fun. Hey, Leon. Someone beating me to it every day. I did first like multiple times. Thank you, Leon. Yes, like the video if you can. Um, it actually helps a heck of a lot. Hey, Tread Pinging. Good morning. Probably good afternoon. It's another Tuesday stream at the normal Tuesday stream time. TGIT. Hey, Joe. Hey, Wavy Oli. And we got an interesting double no work Tuesday plans. <laughs> Swedish Nationals was announced recently. Is it up on Always Be Running? I'm getting hyped for what kind of fresh breeze will show up in NPC. I think we're going to see something real toxic in NPC. There's no way we're not going to see something real toxic. Ian is coming in. <laughs> hey, Pele, how's it going? Pink Funkle as well. How you doing? Ryan, glad sh making sure to eat something. I had breakfast, but I thought, like, we're going to probably stream for four hours. I probably should have a bit more. Augustus as well. Welcome. Not Yeti. How you doing? Mukbang stream incoming. Dan, please not. My hammock veil got delivered 10 seconds ago. Yo, well done. I know I said this before, uh, in Canada, Hemlock Vale has been delayed till April. It was meant to originally come out in February. So I did travel across the border to pick it up. I am four scenarios in, I think, three scenarios in with my partner. I am one scenario in with my regular Arkham group, and it's been really just re quite good. Uh, Yeti, let me know how you think about it so far. 100% fan, which is giving it out to me. <laughs> For those who don't know, there was a, a bet made at the end of the tier list, the corp tier list between um, Aksu and and uh, Augustus and and uh, and Ba and Ba made a pretty big claim about the team sponsorship card. I still don't know the name of. Your thumbnail got a good laugh out of me. Which one? The 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 Holloman one. <laughs> Excuse me. I tried to like make my face into Holloman face. Like I did spend. 15 minutes last night trying to haul him in my face and like break it up into different sections and it looked so bad just so incredibly bad that i destroyed it but i already posed for the haul in face so i just used that oh my voice the sandwich it was too fast hey er Ella, eris how's it going daujin how you doing as well german swedish Finns, and baltic nationals have been announced i hear ronji and a cat are gonna be town for tournament tomorrow oh cat's coming in too sick yeah keezer's in town that's awesome hey lane how's it going Okay, something's wrong with my voice. I, yeah, I'm going to fix that. Nanako sighting. She's up there. Cleaning her butt on camera. It's good to be clean, Nanako, but also have some standards. So there should be some nationals announced. Um, Austrian nationals in Vine? I think I've been to Vine. I don't know if you say like Vine. I'm pretty sure I've been to Wien, probably. Nationals. Can I filter? Austrian Nationals. Nationals. That's the only Nationals here. So they're probably a bit later on. I'll have a better way to recap these in the future. If you have a Nationals you want to advertise it, just let me know. We'll get it in there for sure. We'd love to get info and thought of thoughts related to the balancing of Holloman. 
like whether I have thoughts whether Holloman's balanced. Uh, I'm assuming it's balanced. You got to hope it is. Is it balanced? I think it's really expensive. But the thing that worries me about Holloman is that it, it seems quite expensive unless you win the game with it, because then obviously the price is fine if you win. I think Holloman's going to have issues in other decks where it does wild things that people are not expecting. And it's the sort of thing that's hard in playtesting, right? Like Holloman Rococo, I'm assuming, came up in playtesting. Holloman in like PE. Holloman, you can put on top of traps and then the runner can't run it. Like there's a bunch of weird things it can do, but inherently it's more expensive than the Sand Sand. But of course, it's much more powerful than the Sand Sand. It's also easier to trash. So like pinhole and all that sort of stuff works. And so that's kind of cool. But I'm no doubt we're going to see some strong decks with Holloman. Uh, I don't know if I'm thinking it's the most powerful card in the set, but I think it's because there's like one or two combos that certain testing groups are hiding. Where like, oh, in this in PE, you can consistently OTK someone or uh, obviously an op, it's really powerful, even in good stuff op, not even like combo Urtica op. So <laughs> it seems good, but the price seems kind of fair. It seems kind of fair. It's very, very splashable, though. And that's the thing that's worrisome. It's like you have to balance this card in every faction because it is just three influence. Apparently it does a lot. Eli just posted a bit early in the Discord that World Breakers. Oh, Ellie probably, yeah. Just posted a bit early in the Discord that World Breakers will be arriving soon. Oh, cool. The um the Indigo Prophecy stuff, right? Hey Nimrov. So good to hear. Currently my thoughts on Hemlock Veils at the box. <laughs> it looks nice. Yeah. <laughs> the hollow man. Yeah, yeah. Hey Lox, how's it going? Fly to EMA is coming up soon. Oh, uh, Pelly, I have to get back to you on that. It's like in the middle of April. So there's a couple of events that the Italian folks are running, which are called Fly to Um to EMEA. So in short, they're doing some online tournaments to get people to come to uh, EU Nats or EU Continentals, which seems sick. So there's a bunch of these that are going to be online. Uh, the first one is here on 3.30. So that's soon. That's in a couple of weeks. That's next week, right? There's another one at the end of April. There's a chance we'll be streaming it. I have to get back to Pellegrini about that. Um, but they're online events. They have prize support. They, I think there's an entrance fee. And the money that's going to be raised from this is going to be used into the fund that exists, which is basically just uh, the all run together fund but for going to uh, EMEA Continentals. I think there's a lot of people who are going to be going to EMEA Continentals because it seems like a sick event. Uh, but yeah, if you want to get involved in these, it's a really cool thing. It's raising money to get people to, uh, to Bergamo in June. And there's going to be, I think, three of these, but I think Pellegrini can probably talk a bit better about that. Uh, but yeah, that's sick. And there's a bunch of like commissioned art stuff for it. So it's going to be cool. The dude is two to trash. He's fine. Yeah, two to trash isn't downside. I think the thing that like bothers me about Holloman and like, there's a lot of stuff in the set like this is, as we saw last night, and again, watch the stream. It turned out good. Is that one of the best cards for Holloman is Recursion. Like Holloman is busted with Restore. Agendas are busted with Restore with Holloman. So I worry when one of the strongest design angles to get good use out of a good card is to play more Recursion cards. Because if you restore a Holloman, a card wasn't installed from HQ, so Holloman can give you three advancements. Now, I may least spend two clicks for three advancements, which isn't beautiful but it's not bad especially if it wins you the game uh but things like that are really strange because restore seems to be a very powerful card as much as they're both three influence cards but just keep that in mind it's like this card inherently there's a lot of recursion stuff in the set and that's a bit to me is the part that i'm like why is there so much recursion in this set? it's really weird me and vesper coming the first one hell excited oh sick vesper's so chill yeah i'm, I'm happy i gotta finally meet vesper in person at worlds um i've obviously we've known vesper for a long time and i've worked with him online on stuff Wien is Vienna. Okay. It's Wien. I have been to Vienna multiple times, and I knew that. <laughs> That's embarrassing. I have been to Vienna, actually, a couple times. It's absolutely lovely. Vienna, mind you, is, like, very similar in kind of the style and feel to Ljubljana, which is the capital. And that's because you have this sort of, like, Viennese architecture. One of the famous Slovenian architects did a lot of architecture in Vienna. Uh, but, yeah, Vienna, Slovenia, not far apart. Go to both. After you go to Vienna, come down to Slovenia. You'll enjoy it. It's kind of the best city. Uh, especially in the summer, mind you. Ooh. Ooh, even in the winter, go to Christmas markets. You go to go see me Klaus and the other two Santa Clauses they have. It's sick. All my card games are coming in at the same time. I got both my Netrunner cards and Guilty Gear cards on the same day. Me and Vesper, I read that, sorry. <laughs> Enjoy your Guilty Gear. I got replacement tokens for um, Vampire Rivals in the mail the same time the cards came in from NSG. My RWR and Ashes Remastered are arriving today. Yo, time to build bad decks until smarter people figure out what's actually good. Uh, Morgan responded to a comment, and Morgan says that they're 99% sure that the narrative cards come in all copies of RWR, which is sick, because it is that important. I do believe it is that important. Uh, so that is not just a, did you get in a box thing. Hey, trusty never -Never streamer person. Neon Static, Eric, how's it going? Just in time for recursion hand-wringing hour? 
it hasn't been that bad. This week has gotten better over time. Like, like I just want to say what my concerns are. I'm not going to hide my concerns. Ugh, but yeah, um, we should be more scared when we see it. I'm just like twice burnt, whatever, whatever. I think we're in a weird spot right now before rotation. A bunch of cards are like, oh, this is the new Sand Sand. This is the new networking. Yeah, I agree. Right? Like, we're now in the weird spot where this is probably the worst example, but like, not tributary, excuse me. I wanted to say the other one. Seraph exists. But if you ask me, why would I play Seraph when we have access to um, to uh, Hydra? The answer is I won't. However, on the other side, we have Cloud Eater. And then you ask, why would I play Cloud Eater when we have Anansi? I would. I'll play my fourth Anansi, which is called Cloud Eater. It's even better. So there's a bunch of cards that like obviously exist for rotation holes in the future. So like Jinteki can have one really big scary ice you're worried about. But currently they have four big scary ice you have to be worried about. And then the other code gates as well. And so it's the same thing. It's like there's a lot of cards here that exist before rotation, after rotation. Like when rotation happens... Does Cleaver go? Maybe. I think there's a big chance Cleaver won't be around forever. And then, like, we can't all dunk from Orbit on Capacitor. So. Cloud Eater's better than Lindsay's the fourth Anansi? Most definitely. Uh, yeah. Cloud Eater's just good. And the CEO tomorrow, R is the CEO tomorrow? R-W-R-T-A-I. Bit sad the new cards aren't available to purchase for the UK. We have a CEO next week. R-W-R is legal. Former carry is banned sooner than it actually is banned, I think. The new set has been hype, but I'm having a rough time on JNet. Trying to learn untuned runner decks with the new cards into unknown corp game plans has been brutal. Yeah, I think this is like not a doomer take, but one thing that is very notable about this set. I will dunk on Capacitor Chill the day I die. Uh, one thing that I think is actually very true from the set is I would argue out of all sets, this is the set that probably has the least amount of signposting. I think this is the set that is the least obvious what you're meant to do with the cards. That's not a bad thing. It's also not a good thing. I've said this before. But when it comes to sets like Borealis sets, uh, it was very obvious that the, the, here is a runner and here's the cards that go with it. I'd argue that we have that with Seb, but actually most of Seb's cards are in the previous set. Uh, and even Seb is not very straightforward to build the way is like, oh, Sabotage, go Burr. Makes sense. Um, so this set is really difficult. Like actually picking up Nuvim and understanding what to do with Nuvim, I honestly still don't know what to do with it. And I've spent a whole day trying to figure it out. HB is probably the most straightforward, but it also is like just unfortunately a not very straightforward game plan. Um, so yeah, this set is very strange that I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this more once there's like decklist published on Netrunner DB. Because like, what the heck are you meant to do with kingmaking? Like, it's hard to make a kingmaking deck that feels good just because there's so many restrictions on the, the thing itself. Uh, yeah, it, it's tricky. Wayland also makes the least sense to me out of all of them. Like, it's not bad. It's generalist okay. But it just doesn't seem like it's popping off until you build something. And building something, when they give you a 1 and a 3 and a 2 in the last set, like, how do you do that? I love the stage when everything up is up in the air. Yeah, CJ, how's it going? It's a cool stage for sure. And then, like, you know, we'll look back at it and be like, ah, oh, when we were young and we didn't know Hollow Man was busted. And Tributary was a 6 of in every deck, right? <laughs> it is fun. I do agree. And that's why I'm so stoked to be streaming more this week. Specifically to be like, let's figure it out. The CO next week is Startup. So we played last night and had a lot of fun playing Mercury in Startup. That early multi-axis feels strong, though it was probably related to the core players not knowing to defend against it quickly enough. Or they can't. Or oh, you inside job essentials. I don't know. I uh, The duality of Mercury. Enough crims are on Kurapira that I think a 3-cost barrier aren't completely terrible. A 3-strength, I mean. Yes. I think that's the one thing about Capacitor is if you're on Kurapira or you're on Heaven Forbid, even like if you're on, uh, what's it called? Uh pressure spike like this is not terrible but it's still worse than it could be right like it cost four for three which like we have a bunch of ice it's three for four not a good start uh gain one credit for the runner tag heads that's just not a subroutine so like they only have to break one of the subroutines like it just sucks that it doesn't have a face check obviously two out of three factions are on cleaver consistently so you're right against criminal this is not bad but it's like it's so easy to make this thing more appealing i'm not sure how it ended up like this exactly not that every card has to be a banger, and like in limited formats, like in startup, this card probably sees play. But like, why is it three strength? Why is it four cost? Why does it not have a face check? Why does it have a subroutine that only matters on certain board states? And only the certain board states where the first text also matters. So like you're double dipping into this having to be valuable if the runner only has tags. I don't know. NBN Ice in this set wasn't particularly uh, appealing to me. Is Passenger good in Acme? It's good in Acme. It's not bad in Acme, but it's definitely good in Acme. It's better than it was. Like, paying four for a five-strength barrier seems fine. But unfortunately, in Acme, like, once Cleaver Turbine comes down, it gets broken for one. But, like, that's most barriers. Right? Like, back in the day, though, in Acme, just so we understand what the same page we are, and I don't think I like this card, it's like, Acme, you used to play Acme because you had Data Ward. 
This is not data ward, but of course it's not. It shouldn't be. I like that better, to be honest. You get to create cool lists instead of just playing all the prescribed archetype cards. Yeah, yeah, I, I think there's a plus to it. I think there's definitely a plus to it. I remember when the last, like, when, I don't know if it was Parhelion or Midnight Sun came out and, like, all the, uh, you were just getting sabotaged nonstop and all the decks were the same, right? Like, that's, that's cool. It's cool that it's different. We're all just waiting for some smart person to do the good work. Yep. And we had someone play Wizard's Chest at Wizard's Chest. Yo, get out. How stoked is the story to have that Wizard's Chest as a card? King Megan King fits right into the Wage Workers NEH. It scores Aries for you. I agree. But I don't know if that's the best way to use King Making. But I agree. It makes more sense outside of Epiphany. Oh, that didn't work because you want them to trash your stuff. Like, it, it's it's hard. The cost of being Acme is being only Outermost is really big. Yeah, yeah. Acme is not a slam dunk. I think if you play Acme, like, it's funny how long it took us to see this. But, like, uh, what's it called? What's that HB card called? Fully operational Acme, like... That makes sense because you don't want to build huge servers. But then the fact that you have you have a barrier that you only want to put on the outermost is like, yeah, it's not great. Weird that it's almost strictly worse than Palisade. Yep, it's almost strictly worse than Palisade, which is a really weird place to be for neutral ice or for not neutral ice. But that being said, once the runner is tagged, it is good. But it's just like we have ice that is good on both fronts, right? Like we have ice and obviously it's not a barrier that ends the run exactly. But when it comes to things like Starlit Night, which I even play in decks without tag punishment, as you saw the other night start the other starlet night right like this has a face check and if they go tag me it is good and this has no face check and if they go tag me it's okay too bad because the art's not bad on capacitor john how's it going art and capacitor is really good like the art and capacitor is very very quite good uh yeah even resistor was a better card than this Pranus looks so much worse than valid it is because it says one it's also easier to play around hand size than it is to be about money like the corp usually is on five hand size admittedly with the six hand size but like comparing this to Balan Chao is unfortunate. It's also harder to take a bad publicity in NBN because NBN is generally more cares about credit differentials more than Wayland does. Funny enough, I don't think this card's unplayable. I think if you set it up, it is not bad. Like a six strength Kogi, it's not bad. But I do think there's many more ways to break this uh, than there is Balan Chao. Like Balan Chao, especially in outfit face checks for zero. This still face checks for five credits. Like that's not good. Uh, but Balan Chao in outfit specifically face checks for zero. I don't even know if you play this in, in outfit. You probably do, but maybe not for three influence. Data Ward was not okay. No, it wasn't. I'm going to just say you're going to burn yourself out. No, not at all, Sean. I'm going to miss this next week. I got coffee. By the way, we're on holiday next week for part of it. So there'll be a Tuesday stream, but there won't be a Thursday stream next week. So no, I'm, I'm good. I think I'm good. Jaguar Rundi and Acme. I think Real Talk Jaguar Rundi has seen less play than it could. Uh, it's because it has an A in it. Uh, but Jaguar Rundi is not a bad card. It just threat four turns out to be really, really difficult. But this card, when it has that text, is like genuinely very, very good for four credits. It's just like the tag. Is, it, it, this is cool in terms of core damage ice because core damage isn't game winning. Like giving a single core damage, your deck needs to care about it. But this gives a tag. That is a face check. They can't run into this again really for free because two core damage is like does change the game. And then it has additional text throughout the later part of the game. Like this is a surprisingly good card. But like I think there's another issue going on is like try and play an ice and HB. Like, it's one thing because all the HB ice in this set really cared about, you know, Thunderworld, not Thunderbolt nonsense. But it's just, like, so hard to put an ice in a generalist HB deck that's not Drafter. So the question is, Jagrarundi better than all the other ice after Drafter? Like, we're really squoze when it comes to HB ice. Like, try to put something else in your deck instead of Drafter. And I honestly think in some of, like, those Barf Thule decks, like, Drafter is just better than Jagrarundi. Yeah. It's hard. It's, it's really hard. I, I don't see how HB is going to get a wider card pool unless, like, things get banned. Because, like, Hagen rotates. Mind you, rotation will matter because Hagen rotates. Hagen, I think, is really good. Bronze not going to rotate. Uh, Gatekeeper rotates. Gatekeeper sees a lot of play. Magnet's not going to rotate. Actually, no, Magnet does rotate. It's an FFG card, technically. Um, so only when that happens do I think we're going to see HB ice. Because it's really hard to make HB ice that's better than Drafter. Like, we had uh, David Devadis talk yesterday to be like, Epiphany is probably not as strong as NEH, but we can't make a card as strong as NEH because you shouldn't make a card stronger than NEH. Like, you can't just make something stronger than probably one of the strongest IDs of all time. At some point, NEH won't exist, and then Epiphany might be the premier, oh, I'm putting assets in NBN IDs. And I feel like Drafter win the exact same situation as much as Drafter's NSG card. It's really hard to print a more impactful Sentry with better cost to res ratio with better subroutines than Drafter. So I don't know how you print better sentries in NBA and HB. There's a chance this will be the only sentry forever. Unless like situationally on cell gets good or one, you know, one of or something. And those academic subtype on Holloman, what does that even mean? I don't know. I should ask Morgan. I'm not sure. 
Should the art for coalescence be better served for Muse? Uh, no, the art for Muse is really good. Because the art for Muse is like a tribute for someone who passed away, right? Like, this is the Muse for the art. You see this all the time in like street art to be like, here, I'm going to make a somewhere between a shrine and a piece. This is such good art for Muse. Coalescence obviously has really great art too, but like, I think this is such, this is really cool thematic art, uh, which is strange. Like, this is genuinely weird because technically this is in cyberspace, mind you. Like, you see the thing up here. And I was going to say, in terms of cyberspace cards looking like physical world cards, this could have been a program that wasn't, right? Like, it's a very interesting thing that a physical space art shows up in a digital space. It's very interesting. Is Vo a name or like a term of endearment? Have any old ideas received a significant boost from new cards that I might not have noticed? Um... <laughs> you got another byroid. The only byroid in the set is, is Isaac, which like in Architects of Tomorrow is probably not the worst thing you can do because uh, you res it for free. It's really funny how that is. Architects of Tomorrow. Uh, but old IDs, I think there's like technically support for Isawak because we have a bunch more ways to add advancement counters without advancing. But that's like, you know, it is what it is. Technically, just like all the good Jinteki Econ Trap looking cards are good for all the like kind of underperforming Jinteki Trap decks. So like that works as much as Sir Swati's nonsense when it comes to Charlotte. So I, I don't know. I don't think there's anything that like jumps out, but I'd have to look through the whole card set. Yeah, Draft or the Goat. Keeling and JK are the other ones. Right now we have nothing that cares about academics. No, we have, we've seen academic, I think on three cards. They're not going to show up on runner cards. There might be at some point synergy cards, but there's nothing that actually matters. <laughs> Just like real life. Jaguar versus Drafter is such a value pilled fight. Yep. Keeling and JK are the only other academics. Yes, that is correct. And Keeling's banned. Why is Hagen rotating? Oh my God, Hagen's not rotating. I, I unspoke. Jeff, how's it going? Yeah, Hagen's not rotating. Shit. Yeah, this is not. It's an ashes. It's not rotating. Uh, Gatekeeper's rotating. That's the only one that is. Yeah, very, very true. It'll eventually rotate Andre means, I think, as opposed to gateway cards that'd be more fixed. I did not mean that. I just misspoke. Uh, but it's going to take years for Hogging to rotate. It really will take years for Hogging to rotate. It will eventually, but it won't. Ban Ashes, please. I'm not against Ban Ashes. I feel like the Magnet reprint should be Jinteki. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Kind of does feel HP because they have all the resin res stuff. To be fair, Ansel was really good for a long time and people played like two drafters. I, I, I think Ansel is like not bad right now. Like people are not breaking Ansel very well and the face check is important. But like on the other side, we also got like MIC, we got Brown and those just to seem better in the like big, big slot. And these are better on more board states than Ansel is. Right? Like if we had no MIC, I think I would consider playing another Ansel than I am. It's not program art. It is. It is if you look into it. Like, I think that's super no, no like, I honestly didn't realize it's a digital space, but it is a digital space. Um, so it's kind of cool. All the shape of program art in the set is street art based. Uh, no, I don't think so. There's a lot that aren't. Like, Labasomim isn't. Uh, Pressure Spike isn't. A bunch of it is, though. I like the art, but it's really not a program. Coalescence it looks more like an SMC. I could see that because SMC generally has like that naturalist vibe. Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. Where like, yeah, it's just this isn't a Muse. This is more of an SMC than it is a Muse. Muse Art Slaps would be a fun playmat. Yeah, it would be a really good playmat. I think it was on a podcast. Somebody said that. Someone was saying, I think, Happy or somebody put this on a playmat to see what it looked like. It looks great. He really likes Labasoman. Yeah, that's what we're playing today. At least the start of the stream. If we have more time, we'll be able to try and do a assassination. Blending real space and net space while running is Ari's thing, right? Uh, yeah, it's weird because most of the tagging Ari does is in net space, right? So it's closer to this. Really like Muses are just not a fan of this card. Oh, for this card? Yeah, that's fair. Vo's grandmother. Oh, man. That makes sense. Damn, thank you, Izzy. Muse at ASCII art would be sick. Muse as ASCII art. Yeah. When is Hyobu going to have its day? Uh, never. Re-education got boosted by Holloman. Re-education did get boosted by Holloman. I don't think re-education need to get boosted by Holloman, but admittedly re-education also just got uh, crushed in other ways. Like, I don't know on average if re-education is better than it was before, considering Burner is a thing, uh, considering people are playing Stone Ship because Chart got better, uh, considering Imp and Virus decks seem like they only got better, not worse, even on the Corpse side. Uh, so I don't even know if it got... It definitely got tools, but I think overall it's still a hard archetype to play. According to my partner who speaks Portuguese, Vo is basically granny. Thank you, Steven. Holloman Isawak makes sense. Uh, you also have business as usual. Hearts and Minds Isawak. Uh, cohort program Isawak. There's a bunch of stuff you could do in Isawak. Unfortunately, it's still Isawak. 
Try building Hollow Manis so I can eat someone else to figure out the, <laughs> the ice that works. Yeah, ice is hard. How is the next rotation after dawn? It's not that far. It's pretty far. I think we saw on the schedule. It's like 20, 26, 2027. 20, it's years. It's literally years. Unsell was great into bin breakers on like Drafter. Oh yeah, yeah, Drafter was much worse into bin breakers because you broke it for five the first time and three every. Breaking Drafter for three in the modern meta is actually like kind of a steal. But yeah, Unsell was harder because MK ultraing into an Unsell sucked. But MK ultraing into a Drafter, like, yeah, you just paid five. It was fine. I think that's a good shout out, uh, Augustus. Augustus, do you speak Spanish or Portuguese? Because your Portuguese seems really good. Sorry to put you on the spot if you don't want to. But like, your pronunciation is always just a treat to listen to. I think after, and I don't even know if you're doing it right. It just sounds good. <laughs> I think after down rotation, rotating gets paused for at least one set. I think so. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, after uh, FFG rotates and Dawn comes in, there's about a year where nothing rotates. So it being the next rotation after Dawn, exactly, is like a year later than you think it is. That's a good point. Do we know that how rotation will go after the FFG are out? Sort of. Let me see if I can find it. Announcing Dawn Null Signal Games. Because they showed a little schedule, but it like doesn't go on very far. Uh, This is not what I wanted. So they announced Dawn, mind you, at Worlds, during Worlds. Right? It's probably this. Yeah, so this is the timeline we currently have. So Dawn comes out second half of 2024, so that's in like six months. And then all of FFG rotates. And then the first half of 2025, no rotation. And then the second half of 2025, no rotation. So the next rotation, which is probably Nash's rotation, is in 2026. So it's literally years away, if at all. I, we, they haven't confirmed if or when Ashes rotates, but you can assume that Ash, like they're not going to rotate for a while because the card pool actually does just significantly shrink by like 150 cards or so. But yeah, the rotation is not going to happen for a while. So yeah, enjoy Ashes for a bit. I'm excited to see how Lobo performs. Oh, Lobo is nuts. Lobo is, is super, super powerful. I played a bit of the new kit and I'm very interested to see how you end up building it. I think I have the same deck everyone does. Once I catch him on a chat, we'll go into it and we'll start deck building. Vo and Vovo. Oh, Vo and Vovo are the same. Of course, it's short for Avo, which is indeed Grandmother. Thank you, Lox. Cupulation? Yeah, Cupulation is a card, but I don't think you're going to see Cupulation. Vovo is Eddie's a grandmother? No, Vovo's a grandfather. Uh, Vovo is the old, nice old man drinking tea. Did Joao do any more art for the set? I don't think Joao did. Yeah, Vovo is a grandfather, and then Vo is a grandmother, I think. No, nah, damn. I thought Joao would do more art. Probably wasn't available. Crisis grid stocks, Chrisium? Yeah, CDD. I think I, I've seen think I've seen you play a bunch of Chrisiums. Your Chrisium is a lot better than it, it used to be, that's for sure. Yeah, Neurospec doesn't like cupulation. I just don't think cupulation is realistic outside of Shaper. And then in Shaper, you just have burner. Like I don't think you play criminal cupulation, but I could be wrong. Bobo is Eddie's hidden flavor text. Yeah, he single-handedly keeps several departments running, provided we give him all the tea he wants. Yeah. There's a couple cards with the secret flavor text that Morgan posted. Wait, Q4 2024, it said? No. Did I misread the article that I used as my evidence? No? No, right? Ashes doesn't rotate on this chart. I don't think so. I'm from the part of Spain that's just above Portugal, and we have a local dialect that is much more similar to Portuguese, and I also pick up sounds from visiting Portugal. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. I don't actually speak Portuguese, just can read the words with the usual sounds, because they are much more straightforward than English pronunciation. There was a couple of words that you read, like how you pronounce Valentina Carvalho's last name. So good. A whole year without rotation? A whole year without rotation, yeah. But adding cards is, it's fun. Galizia Heart? <laughs> I think Lox knows the area. Boomerang lives to fight another day. It always comes back. I was just asking because I don't remember there was an explicit announcement of Ashes rotating. Yeah, I don't think there was. I think you could surmise that it's going to be in 2026, but yeah, I don't think they've officially announced it. Galicia is so beautiful. I've been there only once, but I loved it. Cupulation is really strong. I think there's underselling the fair use of it. I think it's just like, it's a slots issue. Like, I haven't played it. I haven't seen it. But I just think in criminal, like the sort of competition to have your one extra MU slot is really, 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 really hard. Uh, that there's, unless the meta is like super combo oriented, having a cupulation over having a Chesver or Bankroll to me makes no sense. And I only see no if you need disruption in criminal when you're hoping that all the Anarchs and all the Shapers are bringing the disruption that's going to control the meta. Like if every Shaper deck is playing two burner, are you worried about combo decks as a criminal? And can you just get away with letting other people do the heavy lifting for you? Probably you can. I think the Imp Lue decks, like maybe are not going to be popular because people want to try new stuff. But like the Imp Lue decks and the Virus decks, like I think just strictly got better. And I think there's only one card on the corpse side that like potentially makes them a bit awkward. And it's Hammer, which is not going to be splashed. 
So I think if you're worried about combo decks, you just say, okay, you do it. Like, Cubulation does beat stuff. Like, the, the Rangi Doge uh, NEH deck, you're right. It's really strong. Grab their one end of the line and the game is over. But admittedly, that deck just folds against all the imp decks. If it doesn't fold against Burner, it's not good into Burner. But, like, I don't think you need to play Disruption if the other people in the meta are bringing Disruption. It's also multi-axis. It's not just Disruption. I agree. But that's the thing. It's like, do I want a card for Disruption? Do I want a card that helps me deal with assets or Disruption? Or do I want a multi-axis card? I don't want it to be both on a single card with conditions. Like, if I want, there's always a value in having a card that does modal things, right? Like, buy a band's is sick. It can do multiple things on different board states, sure. But if I want multi-access, you don't often want to attach your multi-access onto a lot of other steps, right? Like, I can play a legwork. I can play a Docklands Crack Dip. I can play a Docklands Pass, right? There's other ways to do it. And then if I want something to deal with assets, I'd probably play a Miss Bones. And so I still think the slot is really hard. Unless, again, like, that's the only cool way to do use cupulation is to play it more than once. I don't think you get enough value from a single cupulation to put it down, run something, steal it, then run HQ, pay another credit. When maybe the person that can play this is Shaper, who actually can play this multiple times, but I don't think they will, because I think Burner's better. Do we get any new purges? No, we got a card that says clear all viruses. We did get an anti-purge card, though, but I'm not sure if that slots into those decks. Yeah, we got a card that says pick one card, remove virus tokens from it, but it is not a purge. I have a lot of hope riding on Dawn. Startup seems to be in kind of a rough place post-rotation. Oh, sorry to hear that, Ryan. Yeah, I don't know too much about Startup right now, obviously. But um, yeah, Dawn is going to be a big deal for everyone. A huge deal for everyone. It's going to be the most important set release in the history of Nemory. Besides Core Set. Felt good to be able... Maybe System Gateway is actually the most important. System Gateway is really good, though. Felt good to be able to both trash the skunk work for free and get value on that on top. Yeah, but it's called Miss Bones. Just play Miss Bones. I know the fact that you can grab an operation or something like an installed upgrade is, is wild. It is wild, but like I don't put a deck slot for that wild. Praxis gets back cupulation. Yeah, it does, but it's also a lot of influence. And Praxis, you have to play in Seb. I don't think I play cupulation in Seb. You can play Aya for an eye. Or Imp. More accurately, you'd probably play Imp. I don't know. I'm not sold on cupulation. Everything it does is good. I just don't think everything it does is good enough. Okay. This is where we are right now. This is Big Wolf Kit. I think Kit is really good right now. We got some very, very strong cards that open up, uh, not open up entire archetypes, but like make this archetype a lot stronger. So let me tell you what we're working with. This some of the decisions I made. Hey, Daniel, how's it going? And you can tell me what you think should be in this deck and what I'm missing. So firstly, we're playing Kit. Kit has 10 influence, but very importantly, the first time each turn you can counter a piece of ice against Code Gate for the remainder of this run. Uh, that's a very powerful ability. As soon as we have a decoder down, we can challenge an iced remote server. As soon as there's two ice on the remote server, it gets a bit more dodgy, but that is very, very powerful effect. I think right now in Shaper, influence is less tight than it's ever been. Uh, 10 influence used to be like a really big downside to Kit, but I'd argue you can make a competitive tier two to tier one Kit deck without spending any influence. Which means Kit's downside is obviously still a downside, but it doesn't feel as pronounced as it used to be back in the day. Because right now, Shaper has card draw, it has economy, it has breakers, it has multi-axis. It fundamentally has everything it needs in faction, that using how you spend your influence is kind of up to you. So I don't feel bad about spending 10 influence in Kit um, at all. I really don't. So keep that in mind. That's kind of wild right now. I think Shaper is a pretty complete spot. Influence adds complexity. <laughs> complexity bad. <laughs> This card is buck wild. So there's a bunch of like these mainstay shaper uh, decoders that you'd use in kit decks. And this is probably the best one we've seen in a long time. I still think there's reasons you could look at N'Golo or Inversificator or all that nonsense, but this is just so much value. It comes down for eight. We'll talk about that. We're trying not to play eight. It's a decoder and a uh, fractor. When you install this program and when it fully breaks a code gate, place a power counter on it. So it comes in with one power counter, which is really good because you can charge it immediately. And it's a charge counter with rigging up, which we'll get to. It breaks one for one code gate and one for plus two strength. So it's a pretty good decoder. It's actually a very, very good decoder. You're breaking magnet for two. Not too bad. You're breaking some of the bigger stuff. Uh, like you hit four and six strength, which are not good break points. But hitting four for one is not bad because you break Hordum and all the other cards that are seeing play because Buzzsaw hits three strength easily. Like that's not bad. It's not a bad breaker. And mind you, everything we're breaking on the first ice of turn is a code gate. Now, we can spend interface to spend X credits and spend a single power counter to break X barrier subroutines. So once this gets down, we're all threatening the first outermost ice, we're threatening all code gates, and we're threatening all barriers. So we're actually getting through a lot of ice. Immediately, we can't break sentries if it's behind a code gate. That's the one thing we have to worry about. But you also might wonder, like, doesn't this get at some point we run out of power counters and then we can't break barriers? And the magic is no, because we're playing kit. 
because the first ice we break every turn is a code gate. So every turn, if you're breaking an ice, you're always getting a barrier uh, token, which means, yeah, there's some world in which everything's only barriers that you could run out of barrier tokens. That is a realistic issue that people could worry about Kit. Mind you, there's some really good reasons that Kit got worse in this set. Kit might not be the best person to be playing this anyways. I think we'll talk about tributary, but this thing is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm honestly concerned a bit. Like, I don't, I think it's really hard to balance powerful Netrunner cards by co install costs, right? Like we saw this before, but like, what is a fair install cost for something like uh, endurance? Turns out eight was too little. Does 10 make endurance balanced? I honestly don't know. I don't think so because you can build a deck that gets good money. And then once this comes on the table, it controls the game in such a ridiculous way that to me, having the balance just be credits might not be enough. If you ask me. Like maybe I want cards that have a bit more of a downside or have something else that you have to build around. And merely there's a big build around to this deck. We can only run two icebreakers. That's kind of the hidden fee about this card. But I, I don't know if I'm, I'm convinced that you can make very, very powerful cards balanced by just making the install cost go up. What is a Labasomum? A Labasomum is in Portuguese uh, culture or Brazilian culture, a werewolf. It is. Uh, that's why this art is like this. This is fantastic Adam Doyle art. It's also cool to have art that doesn't matter which side of the table you're looking at. Cost is a good balance only after release, but it's just impossible to do. Yeah, it's a hard thing to balance costs to make this card like should it cost nine should it cost seven? I don't know, because at the end of the day, people are just going to play for free with Spark of Inspiration. So the cost is deck building. That's another issue altogether. Excited to see you queue into SDS drone deployment. Yeah, it's going to be a problem. Uh, we could build around it. There's ways to make this a bit more robust SDS drone deployment. Currently, we only have Ash and Epilogue, but you could play uh, Reclaim. You could play uh, what's that two cost one where that has a like a. a a uh, catapult on it. There's a couple things you can do. You can play test run. There's ways to fix it, but we're not very strong at SDS. That's true. Retrieval run as well. Uh, next is we're playing Orca, and then this is our killer. And not only is this our killer, this charges things. Turns out Orca is just really good. Paying 10 for it, not great. But whenever this breaks something, you get a charge on something. So obviously you can charge your Lava Soman, but we're playing so many other charge targets as well. 1x Simul Chip is my SDS insurance. Yeah, 1x Simul Chip probably makes sense. I think it's easier to play than all the other options. Don't we want two lobby because we always want a first? I don't know. Augustus, I haven't tried this yet. I think there's a chance you want two lobby, but I think there's a problem that if you do a spark into a lobby and then your second spark hits a lobby, I think you're in a really, really bad spot. So I don't know whether having the having a two and three to get the first lobby is worth the payoff on that. A compile. Yeah, compile is the other one. Thank you. So there's ways like right now we're building the most powerful version and then we have to see what the meta does to us. That's generally how I deck build. I'd be like, I'm going to ignore the meta constraints largely. Like, are we good at assets? No, besides having a lot of money. And then you can tune the deck down. I generally try and focus when we do our first iteration. I wonder if it could be a used card for token cards. If you put powerful card in your deck, you must have three X smartware distributor. One X breakers may be a bit greedy, but also opens up to sparking to Orca when you need your first breaker. Yeah, I agree with that. But I feel like double sparking into a is going to be game losing. Is Ashen even protection? Uh, sort of, but not really. It's not why it's in the deck, but in a pinch, it could work. I don't think it's the best protection. I feel like the easy way to play around SDS is play the more than one of the breaker. Yeah, I can see that. Tributary at least lets you build up counters on Labasome. Yeah, well, any car ice does, right, Conrad? How's it going, by the way? But yeah, it does. It's just not great. Isn't it just as bad as your first spark hits lobby, though? Maybe I'm overestimating or rating the goal infect old kid lists. Isn't it just as bad if your first bark hits lobby? I don't think so. You want lobby, right? Because of kid. I feel like, yeah, we're going to see how it plays out. But I think there's some things you could do with this, like play two lobby or, you know, even lobby orca and golo as much as MU will be an issue. Like, I think there's reasons to do a bit more than that. Try this last night and had 2x lobby, but have the exact same concerns even after a few games. Yeah, it might not be consistent. I've seen this thing pop off. Let's talk about the other cards. So we're playing a prepaid package. So we're playing prepaid voice pad. Why? Because it gives us a credit a turn and because we're playing 24 events of which most cost money and we want to play our whole deck again once we go through it. We have a lot of card draw. We might not have enough card draw, let's be honest. But that's the sort of idea is we have prepaid voice pad where I chose to use my influence, the twinning. I think that's a start, just like some of the old kit decks from last summer, so that every time we use prepaid voice pad, we get a twinning counter. And while twinning is multi-access, we always have access to three cataloger. Three cataloger might be too much. There's a chance we can get away with two cataloger. And mind you, cataloger actually scales with cataloger in a weird way where you can use the last charge on the cataloger, install the cataloger from hand, use its two charges to steal two agendas from the top of the deck. Like there's good reasons to play multiple catalogers, which is kind of goofy. Uh, but there's a chance we can get away with two and then just charge it with Orca every once in a while, let alone eventually we go through our deck with Ashen Epilogue if we're not too um too slow. So yeah, catalogers messed up good. We also have Onicom. 
it's good card draw. We're trying to play at least one event a turn, so why not? And then nothing really too splashy here. Daily cast, Nuka. We're only on two telework. We might need three. And then we have a DJ Fenris for just getting our uh, operations back. As much as DJ Fenris can be a bit anti-synergistic with Ashen Epilogue, but I feel like Ashen Epilogue is like, if it fires, it fires. I don't think we have to build our deck about making Ashen Epilogue good. I love Joyride in my list. Yeah, Joyride could be good. I could see Joyride being good. Other cards, two burner, which I don't think I'd build a shaper deck without at least two burner. I honestly don't know if three is right. Probably not. Creative commission, diesel, legwork. One of the best things to do after a burner for sure. You just leave the agendas in hand. They have three cards. Go legwork it, win the game. We have a mad dash because we're playing cataloger. So why the heck not? Uh, two pinnel. Just nice to have some tech in there, of course. It is a one cost event, which is what we want. This is, I'm so excited about this. Rigging up. It just now has legitimately good targets in the deck. Worst case scenario, you're rigging up an Onicom. It draws a card for free kind of fun but if you ever draw your lava somim you can rigging it up and it comes in for five credits with two counters on it that's very good if you draw your orca you're rigging it up with seven it doesn't get a counter you can rigging up your catalogers if things are set up you can rigging up a prepaid voice pad for free it's totally fine i think you definitely want to play rigging up in the deck because it makes bad draws not as bad it gives you three credits a power counter and an install for a single click this is very very good for a slot in the deck and the fact that it now works on a bunch of other stuff is fantastic of course, we have Spark because we don't want Installer Breakers and then Sure Gamble. We have two Trick Shots, which I think is fun. I don't know if we needed more than this. This card is very quite good. Uh, there's a chance that three is correct and we can play two Cataloger. It's technically multi-axis. It's technically a lot of money. I just worry that Kit is not the best user of Trick Shot until you're fully set up because you generally burn your Kit ability on R&D Ice. And if you're charging the remote server, if it's not an Assets Band matchup, that's not going to work out for you. So kind of a mixed bag for sure. Hey, Veronica, I would love to charge Coalescence with Orca, but I don't want to spark into it. Yeah, that's the weird thing. It's like there's a lot of other stuff I want to play, but you can't because of spark. And that's secretly the cost of playing Lava Somim if you're sparking it, is that like you can't play Coalescence. And technically, Coalescence Orca is an econ package, as like clumsy as that sounds, because they're probably better charge targets. You could, there's some other weird things. Like you can't play Hush. Hush is really good right now, uh, but you can't play Hush in the deck. So the cost of this being 10 cost is like kind of annoying. Sparking a Turbine has to hurt. Uh, yeah, we don't have Turbine either. And that's another card that you would want to consider playing. Uh, maybe you could. Like, maybe you can play two Lava Summon and Orca a Turbine. I think testing will tell what makes sense. We have enough MU for most of that. One X Turbine is good. It's the only card you can manage to spark it if, into if you play one. Yeah, that's a problem. As soon as you play it, you spark it down turn one, and it's a problem. Play the deck yesterday several times. A catalog spin doctor would mess it up. Something to look for. A rather similar deck. Yeah, so Jordan, for those back in the day, right? So Cataloger is a re implementation of indexing. And for what it's worth, indexing was like a card that you learned to play around because of Spin Doctor and Corpse played around it. I think we could have played around Cataloger the first time we saw it. Like we were playing against Tron and we messed it up. Uh, and the difference with indexing is actually really notable because with indexing, you had to run back. And so the corporation would wait for you to run back through R&D, spend all the money on the ice, and then they would res a Spin Doctor or shuffle, right? And so the indexing would get disrupted. But for Cataloger, you still need to worry about that. But the really big thing with Cataloger is that you don't have to run back. You just say action. And then they have to spin doctor before you fire it. Uh, so you definitely want to play around a spin doctor. You don't want to cataloger if you think there's a spin doctor on the table. But that's the cool thing about catalogers. That even if it misses, you can basically slow the corp down a turn and a half. Because you just give them the worst cards and order on top of the deck. And then they have to enjoy drawing into operations they can't afford. Should you slot a single because I can? No, I'm not worrying about that deck. Are we sure that Orca is the thing to do? Every time I look at the numbers, they look worse to me. I think their numbers on Orca are really good. I don't know, like, obviously we have flexibility in what we want to break with Lava Somim, but admittedly this is much better once you get a Turbine down, but, like, Drafter for two seems fine. What other sentries are we breaking? Winchester for four is not terrible in the meta. Like, you're paying three when you're fully set up with, like, Turbine Echelon. I don't know, I don't mind. I think the numbers on Orca are actually pretty good. Uh, we're weak to, like, Stavka Half Run. Like, we, are, we get rig shot pretty hard. That's the problem, for sure. We have 20 Orca to access 3 every turn. If there's a Sentry in R&D HQ, that's cool. Yeah, it might not matter. Spark, how's it going? Anyways, that's this version of the list. Um, seems straightforward. Grug-brained, as people say. I don't know if this is the best version of it. I think people are going to do a lot with influence. Honestly, we're at the point where like maybe I would consider just playing Amelia. Because like, who cares what we do with our influence? I think you could play Amelia in this deck because very importantly, Amelia does not remove itself from the game. So like replaying Amelia's with Ashens is like a possible to spam you down. Is this better in Pudma? Probably not. But like, this is the sort of spot where I feel like in Shaper, you can use your influence for nonsense. Because we have everything in Faction. We don't have to play Legwork. We don't have to put Pinhole. We don't have to play Twinning. And the deck is fine. We lose to Afron up. Um, yes. 
Uh, no, we don't lose to Afrin op depending on the space. Because if we have Labasomum and Orca, and then the op is the Afrin is the outermost, which it usually is, they can only blank one of these. So either we break it with Labasomum kit or we break it with Orca. It's asking for a lot on both sides, that's for sure. And it's going to be a weakness of the deck, but like into a lot of other decks, this is good. And I do think you want to go to your way to make this more robust. 1x flip switch, possibly. I just, I'm going to play it as it is, and then we'll see like what works and what doesn't work. Because I want to play like the pure version without worrying about tech cards, and then we'll go into it. Are you worried that all your icebreakers cost 18 to set up? No, we're going to spark of them. Like ideally we pay six. If we draw them in our opening hand, we, we pay them with rigging up. Uh, so some, there's going to be some volatility to this deck for sure. But even if you pay like, like eight is a lot, but how much do you pay to have a decoder and how much do you pay to have a fractor? It's kind of like, you know, endurance eight seemed like an absurd amount for endurance, but how much money do you save not installing your breaker when you're challenged the remote server on turn one that you're not SMCing out a cleaver and then breaking a Hagen for five, like eight is a lot, but eight is not a lot. Because installing your Fractor and your Decoder is meant to be two clicks and about seven credits. So this is a deal. It's honestly a deal. Like, it's one of the best things you can do. Labasomum, I don't think it's a ridiculous card. I think it's a very, very strong card. I did a from Stavka last night, yeah. Yeah, I could see it happening. Who is Fenris for? Uh, Probably DJ Steve, just to get more connections back. Uh, sorry, more events back, because we are want to play an event to turn. Ngolo is the cleanest answer to Stavron, but the MU issues, yeah, I think you could easily put an Ngolo in the deck, and but then you'd have to put like a DZ as well, like just one or two DZs. Uh, I think the deck shell is going to take a lot of tinkering, but I have no doubt you're going to see this on the upcoming weekend. Oh, werewolf. Oh, it's, uh, what is Kit's L? No, that's L Smoke. What is it? Real Kit, right? Real Kit. Cyber Dealer better than DZ here? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, we don't really need DZ. That's a good shout out. Cyber Dealer would be better. It's more expensive, but you're right. It's strictly better. Riel, thank you. It is a lot, but Endurance was installed all the damn time because three Icebreakers cost a lot more to install. Yeah, no, I agree. And I'm not saying it's Endurance, but I'm saying if it says it looks expensive to install your Fractor and Decoder for eight, it's not. But it's physically expensive, but like it's it's not. That's market rate. You save a click. By now. Do you want to find time to do open source coding so I can make the ID box have smart suggestions? Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> Three byte mic. <laughs> okay. Oh, I've never played against Thunderbolt. Ever. I'm glad we get this out of the way because Thunderbolt, we probably not going to get to time to this week. Hey, hey. Uh, we can die to Sice and Tan. So our opening is just Sure Gamble Spark. And as soon as we have a Labus Omen, we can face check into Thunderbolt. If we don't get a Labus Omen, uh, and the only thing we're worried about is like Hagen. And that's not that bad. Oh, Depends where it is, because in theory it could be like a Lycian, but the sand's pretty good, just because we can do Sure Gamble, Spark, Nuka. We'll keep it. Feels risky? Yeah, Infusion. It's a bit risky for sure. But like, you don't want Simul Chip in the deck. Test Run Rejig, Spark of Inspiration at home, can recur to the bin, but doesn't block you from running other programs. Yeah, there's a bunch of ways to do it. I think Test Run's a way. The problem is that Rejig is a bad card in the deck, and then trying to draw into Test Run and Rejig just to fight a problem is not as good as running Compile or... Uh, or, uh, yeah, Compile is a big one. Simul Chip is just playable. Immediately you have to have it on the table. Sure Gamble Prepaid Spark? Uh, yeah. I don't think they're going to go that fast. So, again, Thunderbolt for uninitiated, including myself. Whenever you res an AP or Destroyer Ice during a run, that ice gets plus one strength, and another subroutine is end the run unless the runner trash one their installed cards. After it's subroutines. I think the deck also could be playing Stone Chip. Get us a Lava Somim. So now we can run this. Should we? Probably. How bad could this be? Hey, Andrea, how's it going? Like, I just don't know the numbers on a lot of the HB ice. So, like, what does it cost? Lycian munitions. I am just checking ice costs. Like, what is the worst here? If it's a Sison Ton, we break it for three. If it's a Lycian, you're telling me my 55 card Padma deck might not be good? No, it could be okay. Anemone is going to be annoying. Yeah, but if they res an enemy here, we're okay with it. So Lycian res for three. They can give it plus one subroutine. They should just give it all the subroutines. So it costs more. Yeah, I'll just run it. I want to deal with the Rashida. Your breakers are so efficient. This matchup should be easy. It should, but like it's very easy to make a misplay. Like we could die to snare. Okay, Rashida good. 
we're set up. We can now face check safely. Like this is the beauty of kit. One stop shop. We can now face check into everything and they just do not have teeth. Oh, fuck. Welcome to corporate hospitality. Admittedly, this is really awkward for them. But this is where I don't like corporate hospitality where and with IE cards in a hand, I don't know if this is the play, but it's just like, did you trash Rashida? I'm going to corporate hospitality reinstall Rashida with Asa group. Like, I'm so surprised there's on tempo recursion like this. They do have a problem where like legwork probably is a play. But we should just run this after we nuka. We do install nuka, hit nuka, trick shot R&D. Oh, trick shot here would be sick. That's good, though. Corporate Hospitality is like, let me just get Rashida value while picking up Rashida. I know. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Yep. It's just like NSG said they want cards to matter. And then it's like, do you want to trash the same Rashida two turns in a row? The answer is no. So next turn we spark and we have a whole breaker suite and we're done. Ban Rashida? No, don't ban Rashida. Just ban cards that can put the same Rashida in their remote server on tempo two turns in a row. Surprise Stavka would be fatal here. It's only four strength. We can break it. It's a code gate, right? Because they had nothing to trash. Now they can do a seven strength Stavka. We have to watch out. Okay, so I want to spark before because there's a chance that we draw into our other breaker. So here we've spent less than six credits and we have our two breakers on the table. Like if I was the opponent, I would want to give up now. They have multiple agendas in HQ. We just want to draw into an economy card every turn. We can rigging up the prepaid. Uh, I don't think there's a better target here. Cataloger is going to close the game. Install prepaid voice pad two. Yeah, we will this turn. Actually, I don't want to because we're not going to use it this turn. I think I'm just going to run R&D for a single. And then install daily cast. They could have trashed Rashida for... Oh, you're right. They could have trashed Rashida. Oh, okay. Probably legwork now. Yeah, we want to legwork. We don't have to. I don't think the agendas are going anywhere, but we could legwork probably on this next turn as long as Diesel draws into an economy card and win the game. I feel like this, deck this kit deck has extremely polarized matchups. I don't think that's incorrect. <laughs> Mind you, regular is the most polarizing Thunderbolt card because either they have it or they don't. Uh, Thunderbolt economy. Oh, <laughs> here we go trick shot r d oh man i don't think this card is that good but like it's just sick there's the stavka okay so now we have gatekeeper as well stavka gatekeeper now we're running this if they res we still have six credits jeez trick shot oh my god yeah that's a sick shot no further oh look at you look at you what do you cost to break? Six? That gives us just enough money? Now we really have to leg work. It was a cloud eater the whole time. Again, this is where like Thunderbolts, how do you res afford this? Is it cheaper with Lava Soman? Yeah, it's cheaper with Lava Soman. Because this is two, three, four. Oh, no, it's not. Why is it six? Oh, because it's seven strength. God damn it, Thunderbolt. Why do you have to have text like that plus one strength? Like, math is not the fun part of Netrunner. Why do you have to make it seven strength and I have to do the math? Oh, remember, Cloud Eater is going to be seven strength. Like, that's not fun. So this would be one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's the same cost. Choose an installed card. Oh, to charge? Yeah. Cloud Eater PTSD. We died to it once. We could have died to it again, I guess. So now we have to go through it. So Corp Trash one runner card. We can't do that. Suffer three net damage is probably the play here. Uh, yeah, we can suffer three net damage. We lost the legwork, rigging up Spark of Inspiration. So we lost one useless card. We still have Telework uh, to recover from this turn. We just want to make them not have money. Uh, so we just do credit, install, Telework. Read to the point where Andre's complaining about Stronger Together. Yes, I'm complaining about Stronger Together because I think... People bounce off Netrunner when it's stronger together. They're like, oh, but you have to, did you do the math? Like, it's not fun. That's what happens when Jaina does the math for you. People forget how annoying it is. Yeah, with Jaina and math, it's easier. But like, when you have to do it in person to be like, it's six strength, then you do the math, then your opponent says, it's actually plus one. And you're like, oh, I don't know. It's like, not fun. So they have a Stavka, Gatekeeper on the top. This is probably an agenda. We should run HQ, but I can't tell how scared we should be on only three credits. On three credits, we can break most ice. But if it's a Stavka, we can't. Like, 
Should we just not run a lot? Probably not. Draw. Okay, we're going to creative. We can't. Oh, we can daily cast creative. Is there anything we die to? Starting to get commits both the sin of messing with runner math and also being boring. Yeah, it's a both. I think Trickshot is reasonably good, but it's incredibly fun. That was good for them. Okay, so now we have to pressure HQ before the agendas go into here. Uh, unfortunately, I think we need more cards in hand because I don't know what can happen to us. That doesn't do what we wanted to do. It's these two cards, though. It can't be the worst. So we don't die to Anemone. Jai getting a re Reaver PTSD here. <laughs> Technically, die to Reaper function. Yes, we do die to Reaper function there. It's a Brawn. Okay. So how much do we break Brawn for? Their money is gone, but behind a Cloud Eater, like we break Crowd Eater for four. We break Crowd Eater for Cloudy with four with Orca. It costs us the same as you break a on cell. <laughs> or sorry, a drafter. Criminal breaks drafter for four. We Orca through a Cloud Eater for four. What does this cost? Five. I think we can afford to pay five here. Gains a Lobosome in charge. Because we break it as a code gate. Cloud Eater for five? No, we do it with this. It's any number. So we do one boost, one break. Like we don't lobby, we orca it. That's the gatekeeper we know. I think we trick shot on the turn we're gonna run this. So I'm just gonna draw. Cloud funding. It does feel like R, &R has more fun cards. Deep dive is the only one that sticks in my memory for incredibly fun card. Uh Deep Dive though is is from from it's a not from RR. It's from uh the Boreal cycle, right? I'm testing out your refined version of my free worms deck for the first time. Yeah, yo, B Bean Bean, how's it going? Let us know how it goes. So this could be a massive Stavka. This also could be a, like one face check game is over is not the never I like. Hey, Link Pink, how's it going? Because if that's a seven strength Stavka, like and we lose one of these, obviously it's bad for us. Oh, not a seven strength Stavka. Sorry, an eight strength Stavka. I was a momentum member. It's an eight strength Stavka. Ugh. Um, so if I mess up one credit because I can break a seven strength stop but not eight strength stop cut, the game is over. I mainly because we built our deck a certain way, but don't worry about it. So it costs two, four, five, six to break Stavka. I want to keep the trick. I think we just like sit back and wait until we draw a cataloger. Yeah, I don't think we do much here. An Onicom would be good. Oh, Burner's really good. Stavka game over is a big reason not to run this, this rig. Uh, it's really good at it. At breaking it. Like in theory, even we beat Hoffer on Stavka with Lava Summon Orca as the outermost. Uh, draw, draw. I wish we had something to prepaid. So we'll draw. We're rigging up the catalog. Oh my god, rigging up catalogs. I don't like doing this last click, but like that's a good reason to do that. We probably should have hit the Telerik there. But yeah, now we're going to cataloger. In fact, we can trick shot if they put in their mode server. Because cataloger works with run events. You're describing all the issues I have with math heavy PNP role playing games. Yeah, I don't like this like plus one strength on a very important face check. Another Rashida. God, I'm so bitter about HP. At a card. Oh, we don't know what it is. Okay, so now they... I don't know. We probably check archives, let's be honest. I'd rather Cato first than Trickshot to steal the two agendas. If it's two agendas, we just mash the cataloger button though, right? Like, I don't think we have to run back to steal two. If it's two, we win. I hear you though. It's cooler. So here we probably, I think the financially responsible thing is to burner. And then we can put the agendas on top of the deck. Wait. What's the play? Do we burner? Thank you. So we burner HQ. If we find agendas that go on top of R&D, then we can cataloger and then probably cataloger, cataloger. Yeah, that's good. This is the first burner I've ever played. You want to see how sick this is? R&D, R&D, burner, double click, kata? Yeah, I'm not sure what the order is. I think we let rather break this as a code gate. So three cards. Luminal, good game. Yeah, that's GG. Choose a card, two remaining. So if we have legwork, we would win. Top of R&D, lightning, top of R&D. Obviously, they're flooded. Uh, and then we trick shot. We don't even have the cataloger. It's a Hagen. I didn't know math, whether that was a problem. It has plus one strength. Hagen's the worst. It's six minus two plus one. Six. We can break it, right?
Oh, it has two subroutines, right. We could trash one of our cards. I'm just going to break all of it. Trash one program. It's not trash one program. It's trash one program that is not, so we don't have to break it. Joshua, it's standard. It's our first kit Lobosomum thing. We had a good startup. Hype for the shape reaction. Bane, how's it going? Can you help me understand why you dislike plus one strength? Isn't the entire game math based? No. There's very little things in Neverrunner that modify the strength of ice, let alone on a surprise factor. We're now, because like, okay, let me just steal the agendas. Steal, steal. Okay, good game. It's a game. That's a really rough matchup for our friend here on the basis that like, we have icebreakers that just eat face checks and then eat big ice. Like, okay, Cloud Eater for four is a problem. Oh, that's for sure. That's a, that's a rough matchup. Only ice to Cloud Eater in top 10. Oh, no way. Oh, bummer. Oh, that's really rough. How are you playing a new set, Jet? It's a fascinating set. It's really interesting. Um, It's kind of like all over the place. Like certain factions obviously did better than others, so it's a bit polarizing, but the cards are like really interesting because they feel more like puzzles than straightforward stuff. Okay, so why do I now like plus one strength? A lot of Netrunner players, especially at like high level, they shortcut math because they understand what certain things cost to break. And that's just a way that helps you make the game more manageable, right? The idea is that I know that running into a brawn with my breaker speed costs this, or specifically if I face check into a drafter that has this bad of a punishment on this board state, if I want to break it, it costs me four. Having you be forced to recalculate that math on a constant run-by-run -run basis because of things like Thunderbolt, Brasilia Grid, because of uh, Stegodon, slows the game down and makes it a bit of a mental burn. I know specifically my partner, there's certain things, she doesn't play very much Netrunner, uh, but she doesn't like things with advanceable ice where every run has to become like, I have to worry about this and this and this, I have to read the text on this on this. And then when it comes to doing a lot of integer math, Generally, when I teach Netrunner, the hardest part to teach is interface and break subroutines because it's not a fun part of the game. It is the least sexy part of the game, and a lot of people who are not like super numbers plugged in don't like it. And so now when we have big parts of the game specifically attached to like failing to break math correctly into an AP or destroyer can be game losing, and it gives a plus one strength just to annoy you. Like if you mess that up, it just forces the game to slow down where I have to constantly do math. Like in theory, what I should have done is before I face check this to be like, okay, what is the cost to break this? Well, what about when it has plus one? Okay, what does it cost this? What about, like, you start to have to reevaluate math constantly to the part that it really slows the game down. Like, heaven forbid they had a Stegodon. Like, imagine there was a Stegodon Brasilia grid on a Hagen. What does it cost to break? It's six strength. I have minus two breakers. They res it so it's plus one. If they Brasilia dered is plus three. And then if it's a Stegodon, they derez. My breaker goes down minus two. Like, it's just math for the sake of math. It's so hard like i honestly don't know what the answer is what does it cost to break a cleaver okay chat as quickly as possible what does it cost to break an, a cleaver to go through a hagen that is brasilia stegodon thunderbolt it's not easy it just slows the game down where like math crunching through ice is not the fun part of netrunner oh sorry don't forget the extra thunderbolt sub exactly and i forgot the extra thunderbolt sub so cleavers plus one like i forgot about this that hagen had three subs chat goes silent what are the breakers I have? Oh yeah, you have two breakers. And you can simul chip a botulist in. <laughs> and that's the problem too, is like when all it focuses on the math sort of stuff, like I understand now why people spin botulist and Fazerum and Tanglers. It's like, I don't want to do the math. I just don't. 14 credits. <laughs> it's not easy to do. And it doesn't make the game more interesting. It slows the game down. Easy as. I'm behind on chat. Ice math is why I love bypass D-Res ice destruction. I know, but Morgan, you're highlighting some of the parts of the game that people have the most problems with. Only in America does 6 plus 2 plus 1 count as math? Bum, well, I'm a Canadian, and that's offensive. But it's not that. It's not that adding up to 8 is hard. It's doing that consistently on every run when the stakes are that high while playing Netrunner is very difficult. It's hard. Yeah, I think Thunderbolt, if it came, skip on. If it came with a token that you could always keep around to put on the ice during the run, it would help. If it says plus one, plus, you know, uh, plus subroutine. I would like that. I think somebody should make that for support. When running feels like cal calculating 18xx routes, something's gone wrong. Yeah, exactly. It's like feeling, it feels like doing the scoring at the end of a bad point salad board game. And, and that's a big thing. Actually saying numbers are internalized for most experienced netrunner players and having them have to re-internalize all the numbers does not make the game more interesting it makes the game tedious how's this different than recalculating an idea like eigenfusion because you play around eigenfusion 
Like, imagine this was with Ag Infusion. Like, Ag Infusion, you make plays where you're like, I have to run this and this. And then you're like, okay, I have to break Brown into Cloud Eater. I know that costs eight, and that's generally an immutable number. But that's the thing is, like, I think people are better at recalculating that spatiality of it and the pressure angle and the forks, the judo of Netrunner, not the hard maths of Netrunner. The hard maths of Netrunner is not the exciting part. Hope things are going well. Oh, and it is, it is. And they just play an 88 minute game against Punitive Newham, so I think we need a budget more time for games. I don't think it's that bad, Lucille. How's it going, though? I guess the magic list is someone like me who isn't familiar with all standard ice. Yeah, the more you get familiar with the ice, the more this gets annoying to you, I think. What about the text adds an ETR subroutine? Is that okay? That's okay. But the problem is like the amount of my cognitive load that is unfortunately attached to like trying not to die to a Sysenton or a Stavka face check makes me forget that subroutine. Now, that being said, if you forget that subroutine, it doesn't cost you the game. It makes a really bad run because you had to pay a lot of money to stop a face check, but it's like not good. What about decks that use a lot of minus one strengths like Leech and Ice Carver and such? Those have been there. Yeah, but those are easy. Because you just like, when we played around Aracerius Crew Leech on like Wednesday, we're just like, oh, it's, this goes down immediately. Because it's not math. It's just like, yeah, four minus one minus one is easy. I can dig that. A player I've been teaching Resin Ice in one of our games and I immediately go, I break this for X. The response is, wow, that game must be easier for you this way. Oh, yeah, that's such a good way of saying it. That's the thing. Is when I play against like my partner who doesn't play a lot, and then, like, you know, she has to slow down to look at it. It costs this and this and this. And then I'd be like, oh, yeah, it costs three to break. And, like, she doesn't want me to tell her that. She wants to do it herself. But obviously, that slows the game down. I like playing the game with her. I don't think the game needs to be faster. But the game is much easier when you don't have to worry about doing math all the time. I can sign much of the botulism and playing Anarch. Yeah, yeah. You just take, you just go through it. You just ban her through it. Math is for the runner ID. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I am dyscalculic. Yeah. It's strange. It's really, really strange. When are we getting AR upgrades for this game? One of the co-workers I've been teaching has remarked how much less math Netrunner has compared to Magic. Yeah, Patrick, you said that, and I don't know enough about Magic to know why that is. You have to keep track of where that 6 and 2 and 1 are coming from and remember it every time. Yeah, and the problem is, like, the p penalty for messing up the math and Thunderbolt is game losing. It's not annoying. It's not like you did the math wrong pop-up window fires. It's you did the math wrong. You died a Cloud Eater. The solve is banned Stego. I honestly don't know how much Stego is going to show up in Thunderbolt. Because, like, this is the problem. Economy. Like, we trash the regolith. Immediately, they corporate the same Rashida twice. The problem with that's less isn't it's doable. It's, it isn't why I enjoy it. Yeah, it's not why I enjoy Netrunner. I don't enjoy Netrunner because I'm constantly doing integer math. I guess I don't feel like that's much more math than the rest of the game. I feel like it is. She appreciated that Netrunner has physical tokens. Yeah. Yo, Cody, I find my plan Jaina like 400 ELO higher because I struggle a lot with bookkeeping quick math over the table. Yeah, the fact that we can click this button and it says how much it breaks helps a lot of people. I think that sort of bookkeeping is really easy to mess up in person. Like imagine being at a tournament and uh, I don't know. Losing an error game because of addition subtraction error it sucks so much. It makes me feel like a, uh, yeah, I hear you, Peter. Let me catch up on chat. What I'm hearing is I need to run Rhyme more often because it will destroy the runner's mind. Honestly, yeah, <laughs> but Rhyme also destroys Banhar, so you're fine. For what it's worth, Rhyme is like really annoying on that front too because you can res it whenever. And if they do the math wrong, you win suddenly, depending on like the face checks. Mind you, Rhyme and Thunderbolt's a very good inclusion for that reason, which compounds my problems with Thunderbolt. But Rhyme and Thunderbolt's really good because it's the cheapest on res, de res. So it's trivial to fire things like Brazilian and uh, Stegodon. I'm surprised people haven't played Rhyme in like de res decks because you can res it on any window. So any Brasilia, it says like de res a card, you just keep de resing it. It's like free tokens for your uh, thumbs up, I am Halo guy. I think whenever they have plus strength adds judo. Although, yes, it does require calc, but I'm more like it. But I, I do not much more than having to know if op can kill in this situation. <laughs> to be fair, subtraction is math, but there's no surprise there's hidden information there. Or a lot less than a runner. Ban all eyes. I'm not... If I'm noticing that I'm forgetting counts, I usually put a die or an infant token near the ice with a count or count the credits to break. Yes, I think there's a lot of things that people who, you know... There's a lot of nice ways that you can make it easier. Like a lot of people will make runs and they'll pull their pockets to be like, it's this for this and then this for this. So they can do the math and not remember how much they've spent so far. I do that, uh, especially if it's a, like a really big run with like defensive upgrades. And then the math is really important. I think Thunderbolt doing stuff with specific types of ice, but I also enjoy IDs that let me do more with the ice rather than just modifying it personally. I get that people are going to enjoy Thunderbolt. For me, it's like the perfect storm of things I don't like. Scary face checks that can be game ending and then like integer math for the sake of integer math. So I'm not going to be the audience for Thunderbolt, unfortunately. Some people can really like it. That's fine. That's totally cool. But like Sison Don HB, Stavka face check eight strength. Like, I don't think I like that. I do good news for you. Thunderbolt is unplayable competitively IMO, so don't worry about it. 
Yeah, I know. Probably. Heal Polix, how's it going? Welcome. I haven't been active in Everner since FFG announced cancellation. It's nice to come back and see all the things thriving and bring some desiring. <laughs> Heal Polix, welcome. Sorry, I'm on a rant about one of the new IDs, Thunderbolt, which I don't really like. A uh, set just came out on Monday and it's been killer. We've been streaming every week. So if you think that people are grouchy about Everner, it's just me and it's just Thunderbolt. So welcome to the game. It's in a really, really cool spot. If you have any questions, please ask. Rhyme MVP of the last year meta. It did win worlds. That little, that little, that little, little person trucking through. Need to build a mechanical contraption that lets you quickly set breaker strength. Honestly, do you know what I want for board games that I can't believe I haven't found? And let me know if this exists. I just almost searched. I want a little abacus. I want just like a two or three row abacus. Maybe it's because I'm playing Spirit Island and I want to be able to track which elements I have of each. But I, I wouldn't mind a little abacus to just do like quick physical math. Obviously with Spirit Island, right? Like we want to see how much of each. So you have the color code and you move out like, oh, I got two of wind, one of earth, three of wind again. Like I, I honestly want a utility abacus. And I'm pretty reasonable with like mental math. I, I, I did math in school, in university. Like it's still useful. The game is arguably in a better place than it was. I don't think it's arguably yet. I don't think it's arguably. Rhyme seems like a good Atea card because they get around the install costs it brings, but only if people stay on Banhar and Turbine, not Lobo Kit. Rhyme's good into Lobo Kit because it eats Kit's ability for really cheaply. Behind the video, but I think there will be plenty of judge calls soon. I just ran through three ice and forgot the extra sub on Thunderbolt. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think the Corp gets that one. Your hatred for Thunderbolt can power a small nation, which is good. That's important for HB. They want that sort of stuff. Play about plus two credits for ice sometimes, and that's just not fun text. Yeah. And if you mess the math up, it's over. I like something like Foundry way more than Thunderbolt. I just want to put cool cards in my deck and do cool stuff. I agree, but I think the only Foundry decks I've ever played were like pretty toxic, unfortunately. I just missed the math combo. It's okay. We're calming down. We're, we're meant to be playing Kit. <laughs> the Kit deck seemed good, but we had like a, a, a really, really good draw. Tithe and Thunderbolt is pretty sweet. Tithe and Thunderbolt's really good. Yo, Veronica! An abacus for Spirit Island is a good idea for tracking what the f I'm doing. Yeah, I know. I use an app to add in my elements. Oh, no, that's a good idea. Hey. How's it going? Do you have the elements tokens and they can just line up the spirit cards? I do have the element tokens, but I feel it a bit fiddly. I like I like a physical ob I like I like moving wood. It's that easy. Give me wooden tokens. I'm so bad at arithmetic. I got an entire degree in tricking computers into doing it. Yep. A lot, you and a lot of folks. <laughs> Me too. I, I have my degree in comp sci and like most of it was struggling through the math class and just figuring out not to have to do the math again. Could be a lot better, but I'm not playing Thunderbolts. Again. <laughs> uh, it is weekend. It is almost weekend. Real, yeah. Utility Abacus seems like a cooler way to do what people do with a bunch of different colored dice. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I wouldn't mind Utility Abacus. Actually, if I may, I challenge you to name a single card other than the Holloman that's good in PD from RWR. Oh, uh, the Recursion Clearance. Brasilia, maybe. Uh, yeah, but that's fine. It, it's hard. I don't think PD got a lot. I think you have to build around Brasilia. I think Brasilia can be a problem, but you have to build around it. Uh, Tributary. Yeah, it's not the easiest to include. Tribunal is slick and PD probably. Yeah, Tribunal is probably fine. Or you mean Tributary. Yeah, actually you did it again. Unless you're doing it on purpose. Active Policing. I don't think Active Policing is good unless you build around it. Not like PD needs help. Yeah, I don't think we need PD cards, but I, I like Generalist HB cards. I'm going to keep this hand. Seems good. Early Pinhole is sick. Let alone Sparks or Gamble is sick. <laughs> yeah, actually you did it again. I know you said you are going to do that a bunch. You didn't. Sports got more than PD did. 100% sports got more than PD did. Okay, so in theory, we shouldn't draw until we spark. So we're going to sure spark. Here we want to spark for Lobosomum. It's a 50-50. We could have built our deck to not be a 50-50. It's an Orca. That's okay. That means we can phase check into Drafter. Then we'll draw once. And we'll creative. Next turn, we Nuka. We can Orca. We can still phase check. Nothing hurts us. Uh, but that's fine. I fly into inject Shinteki side game. Deck worked great, though. We'll have to retry. Oh, sick. They gave us PD and I loved it. And they gave us Thule and I went, okay, we can win worlds all the time. And then I gave us Thunderbolt. I'm like, I want more efficiency HP. It's not, you're not alone there, Veronica. There's a lot of people who feel like that, but it's it's really hard. It's really hard to design for HP. So I sympathize for it. 
I really do sympathize for it because when HB is good, it's very, very good. And then it's hard to build cards that are like economy cards that support weird HB, but then don't make PD busted. Sparking Orca is bad, but I don't think it's, it's not game losing. We'll face check here. We want Veronica to res and then we can pinhole it because we're assuming this is like best case Rashida for us. Worst case, it's a, a tranquility, which we will afford to trash. It's a tranquility. We'll trash it. Uh, just daily casts. Just Netrunner. PD should never get anything. It already has it all. I don't think it has it all. I think PD is good. I like the fundamental mid base deck. Like, this is so wild. It's like I complain about the weird stuff with like ice and like math and stuff. And then it's like, oh, PD, sign me up. Like, I get that I'm a bit of a a comedy. I think we still want her to res. Gatekeeper would be the bad res. I don't think we want to pay four to bigger drafter here. Let's nuke it into a... Uh, that's good. Okay. So how do we get out of this? We probably don't want to click for credits sure gamble because we're going to be on credits next turn. This is kind of ugly. We could do prepaid pinhole and then we pinhole a Rashida. We have to hope it's a Rashida. That drops us to two credits. I think that's the best way to play out most of our hand. This needs to be Rashida. If it's anything else, it's really bad for us. That's really bad for us. Dame. Prepay Nuka? Yeah, I think Nuka comes down last. Next turn we'll be on four, which is enough. If we don't Nuka, we can prepay, we can sure gamble first. So we might just draw here because we need more cards. Because next turn we'll be on four plus one with prepay so we can play sure gamble. As soon as we see Nuka, we have an awkward click. So I don't think the game goes fast enough that you need two prepaids. If we click for credit, we can do two prepaids. Yeah, maybe that's fine. All this deck needs is Dagan. It's perfect. Morgan, I could see us playing like Dagan and Amelia in here. Yeah, yeah, the math and pre is a bit hard. Hey, Blurby, I'm trying to figure out a way for active policing to work with B1001 and our front company. It's a full-time remote lockout, but my experience is that it's just worse than normal Doom upgrade server. I think if you want to do B1001, Blurby, play in NBN, and then you have Funhouse, Ping, and uh, Blade of Barrier, and you have Brasilia. I don't think you need to do active policing because you can't recur it very easily. Hitting Orca legit cost the game here? Yeah. If we didn't have Orca, we could charge this. So we do prepaid. We go down to three. We can afford this. So now we get two credits a turn as long as we're playing events. So we just do Nuka. And that's good. Uh, the problem is how we're going to draw into our last breaker. Day with Catalog is a match made in heaven. I feel like it's so extra. It's not necessary. Okay. So now we can face check. We haven't made Veronica pay any money. That's probably a spin doctor. This is probably an agenda or Rashida. Uh, we have the last pinhole here before we ash in. And again, ashing seems kind of unnecessary considering how the games are going. Uh, but we probably want to check this. There's no bad face check. The other option is Nuka first. If we hit a spark, we're in a good spot. Uh, we can't really trick shot. We could. It forces running to res two ice. That's kind of fun. We could do on a common to trick shot. That means we're running. We're going to be drawing too many cards, but we have to go way faster than this. The deck probably has one too many catalogers, let's be honest. I just like extra things. Yeah, I know. Brazilia with Pink Ablative? Yeah. Play Rhyme. Brazilia, with, Brazilia has a chance of being toxic. It's just kind of balanced by Hush. I think Awful Wave is way better than it looks on the basis that it's a fine face check and because it gets you your tributary. And I think tributary is worth putting Wave in your deck in HP. I think tributary is really good. I'll never dis disassociate prepaid voice pad. With the cursed cat economy shaper meta, that's not too different. This is the idea. You can't hush Brazilia, no, but you hush the uh, the ping or the ablative. You hush whatever card they're they're abusing with Brasilia. But you're right, you can't hush an, an asset unless or the upgrade unless the upgrade says the ice gate into the text, which it doesn't. Yeah, prepaid voice pad was a fun thing. I don't. I think we have to do this. We're just kind of behind. We haven't played an event so far. 8 billion corner office. That's a problem. This is a cool pressure. I actually like Trickshot a lot. wonder if any mini faction cards are more viable now. Almost all are 5 influence. Uh, I think the the one... The reboot is like reasonable if you're considering... Uh, what's it called? Aesops. But I don't think Aesops is the best version of that. You don't hush Brasilia. No, I don't. So this run's not successful. But we still get a run of remote server. PvP is still missing some hard draw power. That quality time and lucky find can replicate. I think you would have to play uh, Joyride. 
We just want Veronica to spend money. So now we still have four credits to work with. A single Hoggin's not that bad. No further. So this is going to be a Hoggin. Or a uh, Gatekeeper or Magnet? Oh, cool. VRcation, unfortunately, is just not very playable. It could be, actually. Honestly, it could. Two clicks to draw four is not bad. Drawing at the end of the turn is kind of ugly. So, probably a Spin Doctor? It'd be wild if it's a Rashida. So we just need more card draw, unfortunately. That means next turn we have to, like, click one. Pinhole, probably? Pinhole might be interesting here, because Veronica might have had to res. Oh, not Illuminal. Oh, god, we're gonna lose on turn four! Seamless is back. Two clicks for five if Anna comes down. Yeah, that's true. So Veronica has one seamless. So here we need to run HQ. I'm going to hope that's a Rashida. She didn't have access to Rashida. We're going to hope that's a Rashida because it's very unlikely she has double seamless to win. What's the ice on HQ? Yeah. Having two Labasomum seems important. It's a drafter. Oh, thank you. So we can get rid of the seamless. I think we'll start with the pinhole because I'm pretty sure this draws as a card, but I'm pretty sure this has to be a, a Rashida. It's a Managarm. Well, we're here. Burner slows her down. I think we want to contest the Spin Doctor first, though. Oh, no, because we'll just bottom the cards. Actually, we don't want to bottom the cards. We want to un let her undraw. Like, that's the thing with Burner, is we want to... Oh, wait, we don't have enough money to break on HQ. Oh, that's not good. Well, she didn't have the thing to draw. So I guess we just draw here. Ugly. So telework is much slower than daily cast. We just got to hope that Veronica doesn't draw into the 5-3 soon. So we'll put the daily cast down. Yeah, we need four to break. Um... Oh, no, it's only two. We could have burned Oh, man. Why did I think it's four if it's drafted? It's two. Are we finding out why we want more lob? Yeah, this is a good example of why you want more lob than Orca. Our last game, we were like really lucky to get them not only very quickly together, but back to back. Yo, she's going. Yeah, having a lob here would be so much more important than having the Orca. Okay. So 11 credits. Seamless is in hand. So the burner seems pretty good. Uh, we can rigging up a catalog or just a draw card. I think that's fine. Sure gamble. We'll play the sure gamble. Well... Unless it's an unsell, which we'd be surprised. I think the burner is just going to get burnt. We just need to slow her down and like, yeah, okay. So she told us the truth. That's good. This allows us to charge the cataloger, which is whatever. It's not going to matter. <laughs> you know how burner's really good? Well, I'm merely just, just bought us a turn. But seamless bottom, seamless bottom. We could have dealt with the spin doctor first, but that's really funny. Uh, if we can draw our breaker, we have a chance here. That being said, we can get taxed out a bit by boarding control, but this is the 5 3 that wins the game. That's good. Gotta sleep. Hey, Morgan, thanks for dropping in, huh? Spin doctor shuffle again. Spin doctor managarm goes back. There's a chance that you only want to do one of those. Oh, that's fine. So hedge funds in hand. What else is in hand? So hand is two hedge funds. Wait, what was the top deck? Oh, the Vitru. Okay. Our money is good. We can actually come back because we can just like lock the deck with Cataloger. The problem is we need to draw into our... We have three draws that wins. This draws four. So we win. I honestly think here we Ash an Epilogue. Okay, hear me out. Do we just Ash an Epilogue? It draws us a new hand. Now, sometimes it deletes our breaker. I think we're so far behind that we have to do this button. Ashen 100% removes your breaker. I think we're so far behind that having a button that just says draw five seems so correct.
You just uh, you just grabbed one, right? Oh, what did you do? You hedge fund scored? You PD'd one back, no? I think we just do it. I think we're going to do it. Safe. It was the right play. This is the thing about Ashen. Like, there's some turns where just playing it is good. Removing any of these cards has no implication on the game. Well, the pinhole sort of does. I would do it, but another thing we should build the deck so it doesn't happen. Uh, yeah, I agree. But we're here. Spark. Lava Soman. Uh, run R&D with Cataloger. Set up the next four cards so that she can't win. Andre Future Champ confirmed. Well, I played a Lara. Le like, Levy Air Lab Axis, you did that. If you had a bad hand and you had a Levy and you were behind, you just played it to draw a new hand. Cataloger. All right, so we know Hedge Fund, Hedge Fund, Unknown card. So Drafter, we don't care about. Brawn, we don't want her to draw, but she doesn't have the money. Well, she's going to have Hedge Fund, Hedge Fund, so that's not true. So we'll move. MIC is annoying. Brawn is annoying. Well, this is annoying. Will this deck be better out of Dao for more consistency? I feel like you can't really play Lava Summon too easily in Dao because you will get locked out. Jesus, I'm disgusting. You get locked out. But like Lava Summon charging every turn and the fact that if you just get this Breaker down, you can face check into everything. I don't think the five cards off of Dao is that good. Um, It's probably something. I do think you can play the Shell in more Shapers. Like even Padma makes some more sense as well. Now she has to worry that, like, if she draws, we know what's on top. So we know the next four, know the next three if they're mandatory, that we can just catalog her, right? Like, she has to worry that we now know the next three cards. So she has a Mavirus Hedge, Hedge Unknown. Giving her a Mavirus is annoying, because if she puts in Tranquility, she draws. But, like, what can we do about that? Hedge Fund? So we know Hedge, Mavirus, Unknown. That's the Unknown. That's a Mavirus. So it's three ice on top of the deck. We don't have to do anything here unless that's the winning agenda, which is the one in hand we missed. I'm going to say that's okay. We can pinhole, but it's, but it's a virus. Do we have time to get the twinning down? I don't think we do. We actually can claw up from here. We have to get really lucky. How does Corp Blake lock from Cataloger? Draw a lot. Spin Doctor. Of which there's still two. It's hard. It's definitely hard. So we tend to make sure we're getting our money up and continuing to do the game. Twinning is unnecessary. I think twinning is unnecessary with three Cataloger. I think you're right. That's a really good last click. So I think we draw here. We do daily cast creative, draws us a card. Okay. So the next two cards are known. Next one card is known. Hedge fund. <laughs> yeah, that's what you have to do. So that's a brawn or an MIC. I forget the order that we did things. Cataloger lock, just be op. Yep. Yep. Just be op is right. So this is a trick shot, which gives us four cards to run R&D. I think we need to do that. The other options we can wait for her to draw. If we wait for them to, if she draws, right? So she thinking the top deck is an ice. So she has to draw once, then draw again, and then put in the remote server. So like we can fork both. We just want her to res stuff. Is this deck better in Kit or Padma, especially for Cataloger? I think charging, uh, there's no reason to play Padma once Orc is on the table, right? Because like we can always run HQ to pay two to charge Cataloger. I think we trick shot here. Maybe trickster trickster talk is good in this deck. I don't know. There's that. So this is the unknown card. So like check this out. Orca charges. I think the lava somum is more important than charging the cataloger. That's cheaper with Orca. Ah, whatever. Oh, what? Oh, this. The Breaker Suite doesn't work anywhere near as well outside of Kit. It's doable, but it's much easier in Kit. There's an on sell. Okay, cool. So her money is now cooked. So Orca, we break on sell for four. That's not bad. You don't need that many triggers of Kata in practice yet. You don't need. You're better off playing more catalogers than like you can just install the second catalog for hand and the bottom act is active. Right? Like breach RD, only if you made a successful run in RD, the cataloger you installed doesn't have to see that trigger. Very importantly. All right, so the top is Brawn, MIC, Tranquility, Ablative, Ikua. Okay, so we can steal the Ikua this turn. We're assuming that's the Mavirus. 
So a Blade of Barrier is like kind of an, oh, actually not that annoying. So we'll bottom MIC, then we'll bottom a Blade of Trank Ikua. So we know the next four. We'll hit the button. We'll steal the, oh, sorry, sorry. Did you have an action? I'm pretty sure we know what's in their mode server, but uh, if it was a Spin Doctor, she would have rezzed it by now. Yeah, that's what I, uh, that's what we were hoping. Okay. Then we create a last click. Oh, it's asking us to run the remote server. We won't. So we technically ate our trigger. Yeah, yeah, we should have resolved the rest of the trick first. Yeah, we messed that up. That's fine. We're not going to run the remote server. We could have. We shouldn't. Okay. I Yeah, with the Ansel. So draw, draw. So then we know the next... We know nothing on R&D. If she draws, she gets an unknown card. That's actually a really cool line. But now, what does it cost to run R&D every turn? We can rigging up this cataloger to draw. There's a chance we win this turn. So if we rigging up the cataloger, we get another cataloger. Not unique. Weird. Now we very likely win. This is what like Shaper control plays like like yeah you have to rush out because once they get to late game it's going to be a problem for you that being said this is a pretty expensive server and we only have two trick shots like we, the deck doesn't have overclock uh or excuse me so we want to see two agendas i don't know which ca i can redo that i don't know what i clicked on i double clicked Okay, so it's going to go on even longer. Lobby could run out. It's probably not going to. Like, we've seen one barrier so far. So Seamless launch, she can draw. She has one unknown in hand. Mana Garm at the bottom seems reasonable as much as we have a pinhole. We don't want to have a Rashida, Mana Garm, Border Control, Seamless. Border Control and RD is going to be a problem. So she has one card in HQ that's unknown. Do y'all remember what we saw in the last one? <laughs> I can't do that math. Uh, this is where like setting the twinning actually makes sense because flushing HQ. Stay winning lesbians. Uh, I think we just draw for money. Cataloger and turbine. Why not unique? Yeah, turbine would be good. So this is a card we generally don't know what it is. It's okay, we can pinhole it. I think we do pinhole it. Stay winning lesbians. I don't know what that is in reference to. Oh, it's a spin doctor. Sick. Okay. So she now drew three more. So the top of R&D is unknown. We'll hit them a virus. We don't care about it, but I think it doesn't cost us anything. We have a burner. So this can get rid of a uh, boarding control or Rashida, I think. Math. Don't you have it so you can check the log before hit information? I can, but it's hard because I have to scroll up a lot. This server cost eight. Do you think we spend our last eight? We can't steal Ikua if it's our last eight. We can't mad dash. But the deck has a lot of two pointers. Two, four, five, six, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight. It's what I have. And it's what it costs. I know that she doesn't have it in hand. What's the benefit of having multiple catalogers when you have plenty of power counters already? Uh, it drew us a card and it cost us nothing. So not high. I don't think they're FA finishing. I don't think they are, but she has a border control she can put on R&D. That's a problem for us. We saw in the first catalog was MIC a Blade of Tranquility. Yeah, I'm worried that she's going to put the boarding control in R&D and then we're cooked. That being said, if she does that, how does she win on their most server? I don't know. So there's a chance that gassing herself out is bad. Do someone make unsolved minus one strength or work a plus one strength? But I don't recommend leech and spark. I wish I could. So this is the, the tricky math. Whether we should spend eight to gamble. Because we don't, we know she doesn't have agendas in hand. I don't think she's going to fast advance us. So we're going to see four cards. If two of them are agendas, we win. As long as one of them is not an Ikua. It's likely that's an Ikua. I think we just click for credits. Yeah, Nuka draws better. Because it's cards that will get us credits. Like, that's what we want. We actually could hold a prepaid for next turn. But we'll sure gamble prepaid the, the following one. We probably should get the twinning down at some point. 
But I do wish the 20 was something else, maybe. I don't know if she has it. On 7, she could have it, but we haven't seen Bionic. <laughs> Bing Pot? What's Bing Pot? But yeah, next turn we have a click for six button. It seems good. Hear me out. If we play this out of Isla, we put in Takobi. We always put Takobi under ID. Works every time until it doesn't. You keep the sparks there too. Draw. You can always use Orca and Nuka to keep digging. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So one of these is a Mana Garm. She has nine credits. So we have two options, right? We can sure gamble run server one. It's unlikely to cost us much of this. I think we just have to control this because she's not going to fast events from hand. And as soon as we see an agenda here, we can just go like cataloger and hopefully win. So we'll run this. Creative. Oh, God. Like unending flow of money. This is why Ashen is wild. We basically played through a whole deck of events already. So we want to make sure we have two clicks here. Oh, Vovo. Sick. Nice. So with four credits, she's still threatening to win, so we must go through this. Uh, this is five credits to fully break strength. Yeah, it's going to be what's going to happen. Charges Lava Somim. We have to pay another five credits to go back. That's fine. If she cracks the border control, she doesn't have a scoring uh, remote, so she can't really afford to crack it. Ablative. Oh, yeah, right. We know she has one of those. Uh-oh. That's good. I think we might be camping this. Uh, Lava Summon break for one. Forgot how annoying those sort of like drop downs are, like paperclip. We used to saw that X for X subroutines is really annoying on JNet. Do you see the drop down when I do that on the stream? Oh, for sure. Do you see this on stream? No, you don't. So there's a drop down menu. It goes all the way up to here where my mouse is. Uh, we have to break both. So a Managram gets rezzed for free, which is annoying. Remote is oops, I'll bury you. It is slightly concerning for Labasomum. We can always triple click through Bron, though. It might be okay. Ablative might get overwrote, but with Labasomum, you have a reason to keep around annoying. Yeah, anyway, do it up. The wolf will suffer a bit. Yeah, the wolf might suffer a bit. We can always orca. Like, you can charge HQ to draft her the orca. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Do you think we mad dash this? Do you think we mad dash this? I don't think it's likely to be uh, Ikua. So this is six credits, and then we have to pay five. We can't trash all of this. Burner time? It's honestly a chance, but uh, she's playing Vitruvius, so even if we like burn our way seamlesses, it, there's a chance we lose. Save Mad Dash? The thing is, if this is an agenda, we have no reason to save Mad Dash. The only reason to save Mad Dash is a free card draw. Oh, if it's an Ico, we actually can't steal it. Five, six... It drops us to six. We have to pay five for this. Yeah, if it's an equal, we lose. Yeah, we didn't do the math. If it's an equal, we actually can't steal it. Thinking. I don't think it's an equa. So if it's an equa, the right play is to um to burn her the hand to trash at least two seamlesses. I don't think we can uh, run R and D anymore. She's made it too taxing. Draft around cell magnet. She has a board control in hand too. It is Manag. Oh, you're right. It's not Managarm if it's an Iqua. Oh my god, yeah. Do you think it's just a Managarm? Yeah, wait a second. It can't be a Managarm and an agenda. There's only one card in there. Unless it's the Iqua, this doesn't matter. Now, if it is an Iqua, we can refuse to steal it, and we can't run back because of Mad Dash. I'm just going to run it. My gut says it's not an Iqua. I think uh, Veronica just has to jam whatever she has. Breaking Brawn for five is not bad. We don't want to let the subroutine fire. If 
Was a manogram you can res and trigger before boarding control though? Uh, no. The last thing you can do is manogram. You can't manogram then pay in boarding control. It is a manogram though. Okay, sick. So we called that. That's what I thought. So we can't pay to trash it, so we shouldn't pay. Uh, we'll just creative last click to keep our money up. So now at least if we run R&D and she reses a manogram here, uh, this manogram gets trashed. But financially, we have a problem. I think we should have actually been on the twinning because sweeping HQ is relevant on this board state. Bummer. I think we're getting played pretty well. Thank you for contributing to our bottom line. Draw? She doesn't have it. Uh-oh. Hedge fund. Pretty good. So how do we get out of this? Diesel's draw four. That's pretty good. Uh, Braun is five, six. That drops us to four. We can double click for Manigarm. It'd be hard for this to be an agenda. There's no way she puts an agenda here. Have we fired Cataloger? We fired Cataloger twice so far. We stole an Ikoa off a of Cataloger. We fired Cataloger three times. We did two runs and then we got the Ikoa off of the Cataloger. The thing is like it's hard to track because Orca charges Cataloger. So we've actually used them. This one was on four at some point. Why wouldn't it be an agenda? I agree. I click one run and pay clicks. What can we draw into? This is where knowing the deck better. Like a trick shot is not good. Well, admittedly, it's not the worst, but it's not great. We can break Brawn with Labasomum as a code gate, which is good. It's the same cost and it charges the Labasomum. Yeah, we probably diesel first. This is where I wish we had overclock. So we can run double click. Are two clicks worth five credits? Probably. It creates a lot for R&D, but finding agendas means you don't have run back for them. That is true. It's just, I think this is a mana garm. So I think we want to get to game point and then we just want to threaten cataloger. Like what is better than 20 here? It is, but I think if she has, I don't know if she has multiple agendas because she drew. The gamble for gain sex is strange, right? So I don't know if she had anything better to do there. Uh, so we probably do gamble. This could be anoetic, but if it is, we don't care. So I think we do gamble run server one. Install telework. Because we spend one click to gain five credits. Yeah. This is where prepaid is really wild. Like you think you have a window and then they do, they do click for six. Like it's it's messed up. Managram is unique. So yeah, if she reses this one, this one goes down. So we break this as a code gate. So it charges itself because we broke a code gate. This is whenever, mind you, not first time. It's whenever on Labasomim. I thought I was going to click a button that says end the run. I was like, wait, no, I don't want to do that. Anoetic. Okay, so now we have the legwork. Mind you, also burner is like nice into anoetic in general. This is really bad because of Ikua. We can't steal Ikua. Choose an installed card. Probably Lava Somim. Don't see an Ikua here, please. Honestly, actually, maybe burner's better because we can't steal Ikua. Brand seamless ablative. Damn. Wish the ruling was that you can't res a unique that's already res. Presents a really interesting fork for corpse. Uh, I think it's more interesting if you can. Because now you can fork the corporation. I don't know if you want to hate the card that you resed. The whenever clause is wild, you can't do the normal kid tactic layering out of most with Kogates. Yeah, you can beat it. Okay, so it, this could be any agenda. This is smart if Veronica is specifically playing around, um, uh, playing around us burnering the seamlesses from hand like that's a really good line the problem is we've spent too much money so we need to get lucky here we need to we played every single sure gamble every single creative commission so we would have to probably like nuka and then hit like i wish we had overclock but like we have trick shot like what i think we have to nuka for trick shot Mad Dash Archives guaranteed win? I think she's been looking for an agenda for a while. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So cost us eight. We can't even break this. And then we have to double click Managarm. Overclock 3x? Yeah, I feel like it. 
That seems really good. Okay, so the best we have is Trick Shot, which makes us do a run, and we have uh, 10 credits for the run. That means we can get through all of this if we have to double click through Brawn. The problem with Trick Shot is we can't Mad Dash. If we Trick Shot, we're on 10, we spend 8 for the ice. If she reses Mana Garm, we have to double click through and then we lose the game. So that's probably not the line. I, I uh, my second got ashed. I was kind of wondering about jamming multiple trick shots and overclocks in the deck last night because once you have breakers, they just give you so much money. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like overclock to me, I, I see a lot of utility in the early game because I used overclock a lot to SMC on my breakers. With this deck, it's not the case, but it's still like a five credit run. Like that's absurd with prepaid. So I think you want a lot of them. So I was on mostly overclock, then I changed the trick shot. There's a chance that trick shot's like still very good. Like maybe we have too many rigging ups and like just having other economy cards are more flexible because the rigging ups are really bad, especially after you ash and that's for sure. So maybe it's not worth a slot. I honestly don't have the twinnings worth the influence. Mm -hmm. Even multiple, like that's the thing is the influence is like so weird to spend because you have so much of it. Like we're spending extra influence and not even using it. Like maybe three, um, three pinnels, right? If overclock could be templated for SMC to drop orcas for spark for other tech. Sparking out an orca is... 12, 12 credits. I don't think you can spark out an Orca. Or sorry, SMC out an Orca. It's way too expensive. Like the, the fact that the spark is a nine credit economy card makes it seem pretty good. Okay, so what's the line? Yeah, it might. I don't know. I have to find Ikua. So if this is an Ikua light, like burnering kind of makes sense. We got a YOLO R&D hit two four-pointers, very low odds. Four, yeah, two two-pointers, you mean, right? Can't tell me that. <laughs> I have burner in it. <laughs> then you should burn it. I don't know. Veronica's been telling us the truth so far. But yeah, burner ring, like, we would have to hit both seamlesses for the burner to feel really good. Because it could be three seamlesses, so maybe Veronica's safe into that. But it looks like that is the Ikoa, if we're going to believe Veronica on this, which we probably should. She's been telling the truth so far. So if that's the case, it might be right to trick shot R&D. Oh, no, no. If that's the case, you definitely burn her R&D, but then you just catalog her. You trick shot R&D and you don't use the multi-axis. No, but we have to do the double clicks. We have to trick shot and actually see two cards with trick shot. Because check it out. If we're running here, we have 10 credits. So this is two, four, two. So we're down to two credits. Res, Managarm. We have to spend two clicks. So we have no clicks left. So the only way we win is trick shot to see two agendas. Unless it's like in archives or in hand. I wouldn't have gone for the IA if it wasn't equipped because I can't calculate pinhole run the remote. Oh, neat. Don't have to break the drafter. Uh, you kind of do. Well, actually, you probably don't. You're right. Unless she has an anoetic in hand. If she has an anoetic in hand, we have to break the drafter. But even if we save two credits on it and break for six, we're still short of dealing with the managarm. So we have to not break two of the ice. The deck will be on two Iqua. Yeah, it's 100% on two Iqua. It gets you to 20. Or 18, sorry, because it's PD. I think we just uh, trickshot an Axis. It's like very, very, very unlikely. Mad Dash? Mad Dash doesn't work because we think this is the Ikua. Just just hit it. <laughs> I think we just have to trickshot. I don't think there's anything to it. This is the sort of thing where if you're watching the replay, you see a better angle, please let us know. So we'll see. If this upgrade isn't a Mana Garm, if it's just like a Mavirus or a Chrysium, which that's not good for us either, uh, we can use the Cataloger. Oh, sorry. It doesn't really matter what we charge. I think we're too poor to Mad Dash and Steel Echo. Well, we're, this is the second Echo, so there's no Echo on R&D. Well, yeah, we probably actually don't even have the money to do it. Because we have to double click through the Mana Garm. Your critical mistake was not seeing agendas on your catalog runs. Yeah, it was good, though, but it was also not good. It overwrites the Mana Garm. We bounce and run the remote. Uh, we can't beat Anoetic. She can Anoetic like three times this turn. So maybe I'd have to do the math again, but I'd, I'd be surprised. We have two credits. Admittedly, we have a trick shot, so we have four credits, but let's see what this is. Yeah, no worries. Do it up. 
I think we're too poor to break drafter. We're too poor to run back. We don't have to worry about mana garm. I think we have to break the draft. Like breaking or not breaking the drafter changes nothing unless we want to run HQ once, which we can't. We still can. Yeah, not enough clicks to burner after anoetic fires. Yeah. Okay, so we spend two clicks and we see two cards here because it's going to end our turn. So we need to have two agendas in a row with the trick shot, which will really truly be eight billion. Otherwise, if we end the run, we have credits and the run won't be successful. So you won't get the trick shot plus two credits, which is attached to successful. Uh, but we'll be able to run this. We can't break it. So if we jack out here, we can run HQ for a single. We could even do credit burner, but I don't think that's right. I'm just going to spend two clicks and see two cards. Hold on. Ah! Oh! <laughs> almost had it. Almost had it. Almost had it. Uh, that was cool, though. Uh, cancel. Uh, we were so close. We were so close. Five cards. Okay. Uh, don't need that. Sweating over here? Yeah, you and I both, Radhika. So it was the EcoS, so we didn't respect it. Good game. Three seamless in hand? It was hard to... Server must be cerebral. Only two. Okay, so actually Burner had a chance of like slowing the game down. And maybe that's correct. Like That's the thing I have to learn is if you Burner and you find the seamlesses, you can't put them on top of the deck, so you can't slow the game down, but bottoming of them buys us a turn. That's kind of cool. There's another out, which is one agenda and trashable, then click cataloger. We had no clicks left because we had to double click Managarm. Yeah, so we couldn't because that was our last click. If we had a click left, yeah, we would hope for a trashable and then we would cataloger. But if we had a click left, yeah, you're right. It's still better to see two, hopefully steal or trash and then cataloger one more. I said HK is mostly ice and one hedge on a hot back on the chat. Okay, cool. Feeling very down on Burner? Oh, it's so good. It's such a good card. We were just behind. Like, imagine we were in a slightly more ahead here. Like, we could control uh, the game entirely. I don't think Andre played it all. I played it once, and a bottom two seamlesses. It won us the game. Or, sorry. We lost the game, but it mean that we didn't lose the game four or five turns ago. Like, we hit a Burner and saw two seamlesses. Like, it, it was incredibly important to the game. How good would minus one strength be here? Uh, in this break math? Uh... It changes nothing. Oh, no, it saves two credits on Ansel. It saves a credit on Magnet. It's okay. The Seamus going to the bottom didn't do a ton. Hey, Veronica, Rashida would have helped that game a bit. Yeah, because I didn't draw uh, a ton of agendas. I missed that just to see two other copies burning a hole in the grip. I think it's really good. The problem is like we were at the spot where like Burner's really good to slow the game down and to disrupt combo decks. It's still okay against PD, but it's not the best against PD, against other stuff. But the problem was, like, we were mass Shaper U. So Veronica could take cards from a from the remote server and put them into the cursed remote. We unfortunately lost a pinhole, and we spent a pinhole. Uh, I think the pinhole we spent was kind of bad. Uh, but, like, if we can't deal with Anoetic, we can't beat this remote server, period. Not that Burner doesn't help. Uh, but that was the problem, is, like, Burner is not good on this late-stage board state, unless we're trying to hit both seamlesses, which actually would have bought us a turn. When he leg worked, I was thinking if I had an agenda, wouldn't I just have jammed it? Yeah. Did I legwork really bad? You're right. In like very immediate hindsight, if you had an agenda, why wouldn't you have jammed it? Yeah, what the heck was I doing? Yeah, why did we legwork there? That was a four credit swing for no reason. I was wondering if 20 inference would be better as Ice Carver or HQ Archives pressure? Yeah, I think it could be. Like, I don't know if we're playing Beatrice, but like here you could play uh, Ice Carver. You could play Trickster Taka. Which makes sense with twinning as much as we're cutting the twinning. Uh, that's the thing. It's like I don't know how to spend influence on the deck. We'll, we'll make some changes. Getting the orca down on turn one was bad. It, like it really had an impact on the game. Veronica, good game by the way. I don't know how bad the legwork was because I didn't remember what you knew, but also digging for points on that point. Yeah, I could tell you you didn't have it, but you did break lock. But yeah, you're right. You probably should have jammed it if you had it. I like Burner since it gives the answer to the Shaper U problem. You can't put the gen on top and only run the expensive R&D. The thing is, like, putting the gen on top of the deck, I think, is one of the least common use cases of Burner. Like, for me, my best case is Burner is putting ice on top of their deck, putting the combo pieces on the bottom of the deck, leaving the agendas in hand so we can, like, work. Good game well played. I think three Stone Ship will make sure you find the two or three sparks. Yeah, I like Stone Ship a lot. So let's cut some stuff. Fenris also would have been good. Fenris was on the bottom of their deck. Fenris would have been run HQ for two credits, get an event that's worth six credits. That would have been nice. 
Boomerang to help early game. We have a really good early game. We just need to get a second level summon that I don't think I want Boomerang. Drop twinning, gem overclock. Yeah, I think so. One less rigging up, probably. The issue is like, what do we do with all this influence? Like, cards. Cards are really hard. Probably don't need three catalogers. Yeah, we want to lose some rigging up. You can't leave the agendas in hand. You have to put them back in R&D. I don't think you need to. You need Harmony Air Therapy. Harmony Air Therapy is such a slow card. Ash and Epilogue is like eight times, ten times more powerful than that. If you draw the programs, if we draw the programs, we install them. Like, hear me out. So if we draw our program, and then we have a bad card in our deck, then we have to play Harmony Air Therapy. So we spent two credits. Then we have to uh, Spark of Inspiration it. So we've now spent two clicks and five credits to, re to get our program with Spark. As opposed to just installing it for eight. You know? If successful, instead of breaching HQ, reveal three cards, add two of the real cards to the top end or bottom. Yeah. Two of the real cards. Yeah, you can do whatever you want with it. One of Classic has helped me a ton in the bottoming. Yeah, Magnus, I don't know if we played against you. We played against someone who's playing Class Act. And it's like, it is kind of cool because you can draw with uh without worrying that you're drawing your cards into hand. Alarm clock? Yeah, alarm clock sounds fun. Like, that's the thing. I feel like you have luxury influence in here. Alarm clock is, like, not bad. The problem is, like, alarm clock is not naturally good with Kit because Kit's ability matters on more board states sometimes, where, like, eating your alarm clock on HQ seems sometimes not the thing you want to do. Yeah, I do think Bravado is probably one of the better ones, which is, like, I think where we're getting to in Shaper. It's just, like, you can play Bravado in Shaper and it's fine. That face to intent influence is too many. Yeah, tell me about it. The problem is card slots. I think Bravado is sick. I think Trick Shot's kind of fun though. Wildcat Strike is one influence. It is. It's not bad. It's just like Bravado is better. And the, it's not that we're like, I feel like the problems we have with deck building right now is we want a good card for a lot of influence instead of a lot of small influence cards because like clearly we're already at 47. Draw Mad Dash might be right. Like it doesn't, it works with Cataloger, but it doesn't work with Cataloger. Disrespecting Staff Run is criminal. Oh uh, no, it's it's Shaper. We're playing Shaper. Third panel would have been good. Door? Like sneak door? We can't because of uh, uh, Spark. Or Doof. Uh, Doof, you could. You could play Doof. I read this as Cyber Sand Harvester is for the D-Res decks. Yeah, Cyber Sand Harvester. I don't know how good the D-Res decks, but Cyber Sand Harvester seems way more important in this set than it ever has been. Three Stone Ship, drop a Lobby, and both rigging up. I do like the rigging up as a panic button. I think Stone Ship is good, though. This is hard. Like, I don't want to play 47 cards when it's like draw your spark is so important in the deck. I'd probably do bones and flip. Zero cost events makes voice bad side. I know, but like, you're still going to play diesel. I'm keep hitting the why not wake button. Wake is not bad with Orca. You're right. Wake is actually pretty good. Joyride, uh, Joyride is conditional on us getting our uh, lobby summon early. We just want to cut one card. We'll try this, then we'll see how it feels. I think this seems better. Is Telework the worst card in our deck? It is eight credits on a single card. Maybe an overclock down. Is two Telework and one Bravado better than three Wildcat? Yeah, I think so. Are we sure about three prepaid voice pad? No, we're not. Oh, we don't need three prepaid voice pad. Yeah, it's because we're on twenty. Yeah, we don't need that. That's a good shout. What did I just call? I think Overclock is better than the third prepaid voice pad. I want my second free worms run. Yo, hey, good to hear. Rigging up steel feels bad. It's not the worst. It feels kind of necessary. I do agree that we we'll probably end up on less than that, less than that, but I don't think it's terrible. Without twenty prepaid isn't great. It's not bad. It's for Zeki. You fire it every single turn. It's not bad, especially also with rigging up. But um, two of them I think makes sense. One of them maybe. Uh, you could fully cut them, I imagine, but it is like basically every turn we got a credit off of them. Why two lob? So this is something that was uh, suggested by like Augustus and some other people. It's much more important that we spark into the lob Somum on the first one on the basis that like we need this as soon as possible because getting an orca down doesn't mean we can run. So two out of three times we get a lob Somum and then becomes a 50-50. My guess is that the 50-50 hitting two lob Somum is going to feel worse than not getting the lob Somum immediately. That's my guess. Uh, but I'm down to try this because it, it it does seem correct. I don't know how people play Dirty Laundry in decks that say rigging up is bad. Wait, am I not on Dirty Laundry? Okay, yeah, you're right. I'll just play Dirty Laundry. <laughs> I forgot I'm not on Dirty Laundry. 
Okay, I just want to play rigging up. I think rigging up is good, but dirty laundry is also seems to be okay. Okay. We would have liked dirty laundry in that matchup. You should have 3x overclock before 1x creative? No. Assuming you use credits for breakers? I don't think so. Because there's going to be a lot of cases in which you need to install a lot of something from hand. Or an orca. Some cases. I think creative is actually worse than sure gamble in this deck. Because it doesn't work as well with prepaid. As much as we only have two prepaid but now. I want creative to be good. I mean, pre I want rigging up to be good. P, okay. Uh, all right. Well, we have an orca. We mulligan this, huh? One on account for one stone ship, divide up the draw and have less dead cards. Mutual favor. You don't want a mutual favor carry because you don't want to install your stuff when they cost 10 credits. You don't want to add it to your hand. Uh, I think stone ship makes some sense in the deck. It's just like, it's inherently a draw two for a click, which doesn't feel brilliant, but it's good against this matchup. Hey, thanks, you too. I don't like this hand. And it comes really good into this matchup. Overclock doing nothing in your hand? Yeah, because we don't have SMC. Overclock is way less flexible on more hands. Uh, so that's why I didn't play Overclock originally. I can search the other Lava Summon so Spark can't hit it. Yeah, but it's really, that's like two or three influence for that ability. Like at that point, we're getting closer to just play Class Act. Which like, just play Class Act might be correct. Okay, we'll start with the diesel. I don't want to do Anacom into diesel. Telerik, hit Telerik, Anacom for damage prevention. See what they do. So is better than Nukon Maths. Uh, no. Yes and no. Nuka gives you more draw. It can get Orchid. Stone Ship is more draws per click. That's for sure. And maybe that's correct. But I think just having a card with a lot of burst draw on it is nice for an operation-based deck. Operation-based decks need some bigger draw. Like there's actually a chance Earthrise Hotel is the right play. Because inherently every event is very high on tempo. It's just it's downsided by like not a lot of value. Like you don't have lasting value per card. So you need to back it up with more raw draw. Compile's kind of interesting. Compile is like what you need to play into um what we're worried about. Damage prevention. So we could die as soon as this turn, right? Casador? Casador makes sense. It's funny in, in French, cacadora means golden poop. Uh, I don't think we do much here. So we could die in theory to like see how they run into something. I guess Anacom kind of changes that math. I think we have to just manually draw here. That seems like too much draw. That's four cards. What? Do we pinhole a Casador? I don't think we're brave enough to do that. So we can install the daily cast, no problem. We can throw out two on a com. That puts us to six. Uh, we can install the cataloger. Oh, we don't have money to do that. We're one credit short. Cataloger is really good against the PE. I don't think we need the overclocks on this end. Yeah, it's a Charlotte. Bravado, we don't want to face check into ice. We die. We just want to wait till we have a Lava Summon down. Once we have Lava Summon, we're good at face checking. We have no real reason to face check into P. Cool. So we can pinhole that. Are we on three pinhole? I'm not. You had like 300 cards? Yeah, but like playing the cards is better than face checking. Like in theory, that could have been a Cloud Eater. Ooh. I think we pinhole the Charlotte. It draws us a card with Onicom. They trash it. Admittedly, making us spend two seems pretty okay for them. Shaper full filter and multi axis is my jam. Like class act shaper? Seems fun. Seems really cool. One click left here. How much of this ice can be res? We definitely need to stop Charlotte. It's way too much value. So we will pinhole it. Ideally, it draws us into, of course, a spark. Yeah, that's fine. And if we trash this, they probably jam the next turn. That's okay. I like deep dive Husha cataloger, I mean. Oh, I see what you mean. So it just got trashed. That's fine. It's a prepaid. That's okay. We can draw once. 
We have the spark. I think we can do prepaid into spark and still be fine. Labasomum. All right. That's not the worst because <laughs> unlike the last, it's just exactly like the same setup. We now 100% chance to hit our uh, our next spark. Uh, Orc is good against a Jiteki, but let's go. Prepaid Telework Spark. I didn't want to lose the spark to damage. I think it would be hard to lose the damage. Do you think this is a Sisyphus? You think we're going to Sisyphus here? They have 12 credits. Orca breaks Cloud Eater for four. Don't mind the extra text. We could just overclock this. I'm feeling kind of uh, into it. What do we break? We break a Nancy for four. This, how much damage could this do to us? I think this is an NGO front. I think we let them score out. Unless it's a Sisyphus, then it's actively bad. Otherwise, we're, we're fine with this. So we shouldn't hit Telework first click. Do you care if you get Sisyphus? It's not great. It's not the worst, though. Uh, they could see how they run kill us. You need to beat that with events in hand. Okay. You break everything decently? Well, we don't break code gates or barriers. Just the Charlotte. Love it. Bravado? I don't think we need to. I'm not worried about them doing anything too quick. They have a lot of money. Like, this is where you burner them, right? It just, we probably Bravado HQ here. They have a lot of money. I'm worried it's punitive. Like, this is PE. This is good. Yeah, see how they run's okay with Onicom. It's not the worst, that's for sure. All right, let's see what you got. I can only break centuries. Uh, a teeny here would be probably six credits. Faunatria. Okay, yeah, we saw Mindscaping turn one, didn't we? So four more cards we do. We can let one damage happen. I feel like our cards are better than that. Oh, actually, with Anacom, we can't usually. So we will break it for two. <laughs> it's the tag that's annoying. Choose an installed card to charge. Nuka, it's cute. It costs a lot. It does cost a bit. So we're going to see an end of line somewhere. Blend the water. Not what I was expecting. We lost the burner. Feels bad. We have a tag. If we nuke us, so we can probably win on Cataloger. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have Mad Dash. But they're going to try and see how they run us. So we want to make sure Anacom wins. So if we nuke her, we're on seven. We probably don't need a nuke here. We're going to clear the tag for sure before we forget. Taking the net on Fona to avoid the tag is sweet. Yeah, the problem with Anacom is you're not in control of it anymore. But sometimes it's right to take the net. To, it saves you a card and two credits. Or a click and two credits for a card seems like fine. Uh, I don't think we nuka. I think we just draw up. Remove the tag. Cast is a great draw there. Just keep the pressure up. We now can run HQ for two credits if we don't have a lot of cards in hand. Yeah, yeah. Onicom is really funny because it fires immediately when the subroutine fires. Uh, on this hand, it's not very likely to, to hit it. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's really funny. I have no doubt that somebody's done that accidentally. Because Onicom is not May. It's, it's mandatory. And we DJ Fenders for Sebastian to get value off that tag. <laughs> yeah, Fenders here is pretty good. Um, we don't really have that many. We have no connections to the neck besides Nuka, if I'm not mistaken. And Fenders himself. Yeah, you have to do that. So we just need to draw into Spark with Nuka. Luckily, they're not doing anything. If they advance Charlotte, it's like, okay. Uh, but like, Cataloger is really frightening to them. Seb is a Gmod. Yeah, Seb is a Gmod. Okay, they didn't advance it. Obviously, it could be anything. I'm not that worried about them scoring out, I don't think. So, Nuka for three. Hey, speak of the devil. So, we probably need to go deep into the deck. This turn, we're going to likely prepaid, cataloger, creative, and just see them sweat. We actually likely want to get DJ Fenners down before we lose him to damage, potentially. Yeah, I think we do. It's good into P, that's for sure. So, we have Los. Okay, a lot of money on the table. Sable, whatever. Quetzal, whatever. Uh, probably only Tattoo Bola. Reyna, whatever. Uh, 121 credits. Lou, whatever. Sebastio, okay. That's a new Steve. Okay. I think we'll just do Cataloger down to five, four, creative. This puts us on four cards in hand. That's to see how they run. That's not the ideal thing to do. This is our first event, so we draw a card. It's fine. Yeah, DJ Steve is really good at the matchup because we're assuming to take damage and it just adds extra hit points. It's like run HQ, draw a card. That alone, even if the card is blank, is valuable into the damage matchup. They have to have agendas in hand. Like, they're trying to hurt us. That's for sure. It's probably end of the line. Uh, which, like, losing a burner hurts. Mind you, at the end of the game, if we survive with an Ashen, and, like, that's the problem with Ashen, you can't DJ Fenris back or Steve Cambridge back because you only have one of them. 
<laughs> yeah, well, this is the cataloger effect, right? So here we should probably run HQ. I think we can nuke a first for a spark or for an overclock. Oh, we have an overclock. Should we just run HQ? Run HQ drawn event is two HP in once, yeah. I think we can do prepaid overclock HQ. Uh, a teeny doesn't have threat text. This is just to get on less than three cards in hand. If we hit a snare, we hit a snare. It's not the end of the world. Uh, we draw a card after this. It's an enigma. Okay, nice. That works. We have no way to use the overclock credits. That's fine. Uh, where did all our clicks go? The answer is enigma. I don't think we want to play the creative here. We have enough money coming in. I wonder if we have to worry about archives. DJ burner back? Oh, we need two burners. You're right, we could do like burner ashen and then that's kind of awkward sometimes, but they definitely have cards in HQ. We just need to draw into our breaker. I'm gonna diesel next turn. I should probably nuke a next turn. I don't think we need to draw four. So we have four draws in our deck to find our breaker. And we break Enigma for one. No, two. What a world do we have when P is 25 credits? Yeah, they're trying to set up a kill combo. I think there's going to be a lot of decks that are, well, not a lot of decks. I think the archetype exists, which is PE with see how they run Blood in the Water Fuji as few agendas as possible. And so you can actually play like Glacier to get the kill combo. Uh, we'll nuka. All right, unfortunately, we have to install this from hand. Lava Somim. So we can sure gamble run last click. That means we're weak on the remote server. They haven't had to res much? No, they haven't. And they probably have Cloud Eaters. So I don't know if we have to run. I think they can score out anything. We're only worried about, see, oh, see how they run combo. But like, how scary is that even? Like, we probably burn her here, but then we end with a tag. But if this is see how they run into end of line, we 100% die unless Anakam fires off of one of this. So we just have to keep as many events in hand as possible. So that means we should install daily cast and then keep diesel creative burner. So we probably don't die to it. Is daily cast better than cataloger? We can always charge catalog with Orca, so yeah. And so we'll throw out a resource specifically just to make our hand mostly events. So if it's see how they run into end of the line, we probably don't die. Sometimes we do die, but it's like not favorable math. Can you explain the combo? Yeah, you'll see it here. Oh, just kidding. Fuji. So they could punitive, uh, what's it called? Neurospike us here, but they can't actually, they don't have clicks. So the combo is see how they run when you score it out. It gives a tag, it gives a net damage because you're playing PE and then it does either net or core damage. So for most runners, they go from five to, to three and they have a tag. And so you just end the line them. As soon as we have Onicom, when they trash an event, we go up to four and so end the line doesn't work. That's the combo. So here we just run HQ, click one. We lost our burner. So we can ask for two burners. That seems fine because they're definitely a combo deck and they're forced to score out. Uh, if we steal a snare, it's okay. Steal. If it's a Fuji, it's okay. Yeah. There's a chance playing around phone a tree is incorrect. We're going to access with four cards though. So Lava Soman fully break. Orca break for two. Charge the cataloger. I'm not assuming there's going to be a lot of bar barriers. Steve, we can ask for two burners. I think it's probably the best clause here. Bonus points for stone chip and combo cancel. Yeah, it's stone chip, steel skin. There's a lot of ways that the combo is actually not very robust. Uh, yeah, I think we just go for, do we need money? No, we have creative in hand. I think we just do burner burner. Charge Nuka for more HP. Ah, we have another Nuka. I don't think we're in a rush to mass draw. Okay, that's what we expect, snare. We will trash it. We have a tag. Bummer. We lost the burner immediately. So I think now we Nuka. Maybe we should have charged a Nuka. Yeah, maybe you're right. Remove tag. Uh, we could sure gamble here. We probably should. It loses the prepaid, so it's click for six. Seems good. And maybe we should just try and win off a of cataloger. Maybe we don't have to disrupt HQ. This is where Airblade's useful. Uh, none of these actually work with Airblades. It's only the damage. And so we're installing Airblades as a three net damage protection, which, yeah, that's okay. But generally, I like to play around the traps more than just have the brute protection. The thing is, like, there's not that many win encounter abilities. Like, all the Jateki ones are win res or win pass. Uh, very importantly, we don't lose Ashen. Ashen is the one card that, like, they're going to be so upset about. Like, we have 10 cards left in our stack. In a second, it's going to be reset. Like, as soon as we draw Ashen, we just play it. Like, it's that simple. Create over gamble when it's last click. Uh, yeah, because we're losing prepaid value. We just wanted to click for six, not click for five. I, I don't think we need the creative like quicker. 
We just wanted more money from our cards. This looks like the last I tried the other day. Is it running Spark? It is. Tanuki, how's it going? I think a lot of people are on a similar rent list. This has big snare and remote energy. I don't think I want to run it. I think we want them to spend ice resing this. We haven't seen anemones yet. I don't like this hand that much. I think we can just run R&D. As soon as they res an announcer or Cloud Eater, we're okay. There's definitely a Cloud Eater in the deck. Thimble Rig, cool. Well, that's good kid hate, I guess. The stream is making me want to actually play Ashen. It's it's good. It's a good card. It doesn't fit in every deck, but like in an operation-based deck, like it's turn 10, we're 10 cards left in our stack. Like we're just going to play our stack again. And this is a safe run because it's a cataloger run. On a Tria. Bomber, gonna have a tag. But we also could win, unless that's a spin doctor. This is a bad cataloger into spin doctor. But you always just ask for action if they res a spin doctor. Hey, <laughs> cool. Okay, now we want the airplanes dive gen. Cool, very cool. So if we run into this, we break it for uh two. Seems good. We take a tag. Now if we win, we win. I think we're going to go for it. Need hushes? It's impossible with Spark to play hush, unfortunately. Wow. Whoa. Mindscaping Biovault Tributary Bodo. So we don't want Tributary ever. Bodo is annoying, but Threat 4 is really difficult. So I don't care about that. We break it, mind you, for like five credits. They don't have money for it. Uh, Mindscaping will bottom. I evolved Botto. Okay, done. Action? Well, we have for an action here in case there's a spin doctor. Because they could shuffle. No. Perfect. You want to do that every once in a while. So remove tag, remove tag, creative to draw. All right. Ashen bottom nine. Let's go. Rashida. Okay, cool. So they have Botto. Biovald, Mindscaping, and Tributary in hand. Tributary is really good. Wherever they install it, we're going to try and avoid running it. Obviously, that's not super possible. But probably with Funhouse, we just don't run R&D anymore. Like, we incentivizes us to camp a wee bit. So we know four of the cards in hand. We're just going to try and get through our deck as efficiently as possible and then just Ashen and then actually be a bit cautious. Mindscaping, okay. So they have unknown cards. We haven't seen their kill combo yet. Uh, running HQ with less cards in hand seems okay. It cost us four, and we get back a sure gamble. Mind you, removing the sure gamble before we ash in, like, that's a bit dodgy sometimes. Funness is a little gross, yeah. People are not playing Hush right now, because they're playing Spark Shaper and all that other nonsense. This remote server seems pretty easy to run. They're discarding a lot of cards here. I think maybe we run Archives. I don't know if they're on Regenesis, but uh, to be a bit scared of it. They throw five cards. I think I might try the list. The hard plays was Lava Summon. Relying on the drawing spark and being program restricted felt bad. Yeah, I think you can afford to hard play Lava Summon. I think eight credits for this is totally reasonable. Play rigging up two if you want. Yeah, Fun Tree and Fun House. It is gross. Chinteki still doesn't have tag punishment though. So running archives, there's a chance that we get hurt. But if we steal a Fuji, we probably hit an event and then we'll have more cards in hand. If we steal two Fujis, we win. So I'm going to start by running archives. Yeah, with rigging up, it's not bad. Because you get a second charge and it comes in for five. It's like totally fine. I think there's a chance the Spark deck's not the best version. It is a Spin Doctor. That's good. So we pulled that out so we don't catalog into it. Let's see what they shuffle back. Two face downs. Okay. So they're trying to recover. So Cloud Eater, Bodo, come. <laughs> Yikes. Oh man. Three Breach Dome. So we can overclock HQ. I think it's reasonable. If we hit a snare, it's not the worst. Uh, we're going to try and like ash and through our deck anyways. So the worst case scenario is like if we draw a card accidentally, then it gets hit by damage, right? Like if we take damage into damage somehow, like you could steal a Fuji, do the one damage first, and then we draw into an ash and then you hit the ash with the Fuji. The order that you actually do the Fuji damage, I think kind of matters when stolen. We're getting down to low cards to play around Fauna Tria. So wait for dinner. Did my suggestion turn out to make the deck worse? Eh, it's hard to tell. We have the double love of summon and we got the orca first, which against PE, I think we're okay with that. But it's hard to tell if it's obviously the better thing to do. 
I honestly don't know how much we should Steve Cambridge because of Ashen, but I think it's fine. I think it's whatever. One card out is not a big deal. Oops. We haven't seen a tattoo yet, right? Click on the right cards, Andre. Burning a full spin resin for big deal catalogers. Yeah, it's not bad at all. All right, I think here we can just do gamble, gamble. We can also just go sparks so they're out of our deck, but no, gamble, gamble. Imagine we pick a spark here. How confused they'll be. Piss. That's fine. Did we not draw a card? Why didn't we draw a card? You think they're on the bring them home? Did we play an event already? Oh. This is frightening, y'all. So hear me out. When we play this, we gain an extra 25 hit points. Just about. We lose it. We lose five cards of our stack. But we gain 25. Yeah, we gain a lot. Losing this is like, unfortunately, so important in the matchup. I just don't know how they do random damage to Ash. Yeah, perfect time for Ashen. So here we do draw. We do sure gamble, draw, draw, Ashen. We just can't run what this is in our hand. We're lucky we drew late in the game. Ashen's good. It's a good card. It's a bit gross, honestly. So, sure gamble to draw. We're just trying to extract as much money before we can. Uh, I don't think we do creative into Ashen, unless we do. Yeah, we actually probably do. Creative. Ashen. Oops. We lost two Nukas, a Diesel, and a Telework. That's a lot of card draw we lost, but like... We have 25 more cards left. <laughs> Just PE that hit us with two snares. Uh, we can still lose to like damage stuff. We also removed three resources and we removed a spark. Like we, some, our deck actually kind of got better. Moving three resources matters if we're trying not to die to Anacom combo. No point to draw because Ashen puts you over. Uh, Ashen draws you two five. It doesn't draw five, right? So it won't put us over. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it empties your hand, draws five, so you don't overdraw. <laughs> I'd be so upset if my opponent did this. I'm playing PE, they're down to six cards. Imagine you get them down to six cards and stack, and you're like, I got this, and they just like ashen. Like, I'm glad that there's a card that makes this sort of thing. Yeah, you shuffle in first, so you always draw two five. You will never draw more than five cards with this, unless Anacom triggers after it, which actually you could. But we played an event. This has snare energy to me. Um, we have one burner in our deck. You said gamble, draw, draw, ashen. Oh yeah, I was considering doing that because we could have drawn to another economy card. Like, I'm not sure what was in our deck, but like gamble, if we did gamble, draw, daily cast, ashen, I think that would have been fine. But I didn't check our bin to know it was the last seven cards of our deck. Yeah. Ashen can't trigger Anacom since the RFGs. Oh yeah, Veronica, that's true. It can't, it can't because you remove it from the game. It doesn't trash itself. Yeah, very good, very good. Okay, so we don't know what the remote server is. It looks like it's a snare. Uh, we've seen two snares. We've seen one spin doctor. Uh, three Rashidas are out. So I don't think there's a lot of things we have to never advance to. We want to keep a lot of events in hand. We have a lot of events in hand. So we could just like sure gamble run HQ. I think just keeping the HQ pressure on. Unfortunately, Steve doesn't fire. But we don't have to be that precious. We have 24 more health. I'm running Archives to play around Regenesis. Yeah, I think I'm running Archives here. I just don't want to get Regenesis. That's how we lose. Regenesis into to, to Fuji loses the game. Fish for Spin Dock? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think we want to make sure that it's not Regenesis or Spin Dock. Checking Archives against Shinteki is something you should just do more often. Yeah, so that's probably Regenesis. So I'm glad we didn't run that. If we didn't, we might have lost the game. Uh, we also see a Tributary, which I'm surprised they threw out. It's like so good against Kit. I think that's a Regenesis. We don't need to steal it because it doesn't win us the game. But now we have to make sure we don't run into a Botto or something too late in the turn because they can throw it out and, and do good stuff. But I'm pretty sure they set up the win there. So we probably win on the next turn with Cataloger. So we just do one Cataloger and see how it goes. We just want to not die. Uh, respecting Regenesis is the thing that I've been getting better at. Maybe there's a Trib out? Yeah, there, there actually might be. Maybe this is a Trib and like Brodo's been moving it around. That's a good call too. That's a that's a better call than throwing out the tributary. Yeah, I think we have to assume that our opponent has a unique one on the table. Oh, I like burn skin off my knuckle or something. Feels bad. 
Howie credit. We could trick shot R&D, honestly. We're totally safe to traps. It actually plays around the Fonatria tag. It's probably correct. We just trick shot R&D because it gives us four credits for the run. Uh, we have a lot of hit points left. And then we catalog her. And then unless it's a spin doctor, which they probably would have Fuji'd back, uh, we win the game. Advance. I think it's a Regenesis. They did discard a card. Okay, thinking. So I think it's still a Regenesis. I think we just trick shot. We know it's not a Spin Doctor, so if we see a, a Fuji or Blood in the Water, we win. There's definitely a trip out. Excuse me, I read that. I used to think Regenesis was too much work for deck construction, too cute, but in the past six months, I don't think it's, I think it's so good. I think it's so good, and it's also really important for trap decks, because getting your opponent on game point as fast as possible is really important if you want your traps to be a bit more problematic for them. I don't know what to click on. I'll just click on something until it works. There's only so many options to click on. So we're under four cards. Phone Tree is cool. It's cool that it makes you play around it. I like ice like this that you can play around as much as like accessing with three cards in hand is not a good idea a lot of times. Okay. Take a tag. Break for two. We're going to catalog or we're not going to access to five counter catalog or scary. Yeah, it's hard to sit across from this when you're in game point and think like that's not obviously how I lose. Well, apparently not. That's apparently not how you lose. Tattoo Bola, Hansei Review, Hedge Fund, Bio Vault. Okay. That could be a Bio Vault. That's annoying, but I think if they're advancing Bio Vaults, we're happy because their ice doesn't seem that good. We found the Cloud Eater. Isn't that to see how they run the remote? It is, but we'll probably win. I think it's more likely a uh, Hanse. Uh, sorry, Regenesis, considering they threw out their 5-3. So our goal now is clear the tag run archives. Bio Vault. I don't think we want them to have slightly more money. Oh, we can run server one. <laughs> yeah, Chancelling, how's it going? Uh, I don't think we run server one. Because I think if it's... We don't care if they score out that. How many Charlottes in the bin? Two. I don't have running server one. Action. There's nothing they can do here. I'm just checking. I'm going to run archives. We're going to clear the tag. We're going to keep events in hand exclusively so we don't die to see how they run combo. But I think this is Regenesis. They threw out the end of the line. Yeah, okay. So they are on the see how they run combo. I think it's too late in the turn to run this because if it's like something bad, like a trap, and then there's a, and what's it called? An anaway. I think there's a, what's it, uh, the, Anemone here, considering they were moving the ice around. So we'll just draw and remove the tag. Immediately trash Bio Vault on site. But that's just my take. I agree, but I feel like we are the sieged corp here. That we're not worried about it. Like, it costs us, like, four credits to run R&D. Just about. Trickshot looks so good, especially when you compare it to Into the Depths. It's better than Into the Depths. It's not always better than Overclock. But it's a really cool card. It's because it's making us excited. Eight point corner office just tickles me. So, if they score out, we're okay. Do you think we run this? I think we do run this. How bad do you think this is if we run it? I think it's a Nemini. If it's a Fuji, we win, because we don't care about the scored or stolen text, because you win the game. Now, it's, a, it's not a problem. If they score it out, like, so it does a damage, it does a damage, so we're on four cards. So, it, it can't kill us with five events in hand. It has a 0% chance to kill. Now, if they do seamless advance into Neurospike, that also doesn't kill us. We survive that at zero cards. I think I'll check it, though, because I think it's a Vio Vault, and I don't want a Vio Vault to be up while we catalog. I think this is an Anemone. This is probably a Nancy. Yeah, mine's giving Neurospike. Anacom is so good, and like having mostly events is really, really safe. But this is an Anemone or a Tributary. Oh, Cloud Eater. Sick. That makes sense, too. Now they're broke. We break Cloud Eater for four credits. For four charging the cataloger seamless score end of line install core blood and water kills but it's three cards in hq yeah it's a lot harder and they threw out one end of line uh we have to take two tags here so now they can't raise anything yeah yeah it's all about anacom anacom is like the great equalizer this is a bio vault or a genesis it's a bio vault fine 
All right. Uh, sure gamble. I think we just want to have money. I know we can play creative here, but we use two prepaid, so we draws a card. So why not? Airblades. Uh, Airblades doesn't work on anything on the board besides Funhouse. It's a real high fine flash. Right, like Airblades is good for damage protection, but generally damage protection can be played around by just playing, like, uh, I don't want to say skill issue. <laughs> But like, it's nice to have airblades to face tech damage. I just don't feel like there's enough decks that can force you to play airblades. It's just really hard to generate a fork if you know the card pool that you need it. Now the on encounter text here matters for Funhouse, but like this deck is so slow that we can clear the tech for Funhouse. Airblades doesn't save you from Cloud Eater. No, it doesn't. Cloud Eater is not an on encounter, uh, so it doesn't do anything there. Like airblades is like way more limited than you think it is. It's not Hush. It's a lot worse than Hush in some ways. Uh, I don't have to do much here. So we lock the top four. They drew two. So all we're going to do is run archives, play Dirty Laundry. Uh, we can run HQ if we want. Airblades is good into NBN, not much else. Yeah, mostly NBN. Airblades is seeing... I, I know it's seeing play. I just don't think it's 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 brilliant. Uh, I don't think we need to give them four credits here. Like, I don't think it's a shaper deck I'd play Airblades unless there's a lot of NBN and the NBN is playing Funhouse. Because, like, Airblades only works against Funhouse. That's, like, the only good thing I want to play Airblades for. So they can't fire snare, so we can run HQ and clear the tag. I think that's totally fine. We can dirty laundry. Mess and Chesso, oh, Mess and Chesso is, yeah, sees more play than Funhouse. Airblades into Mess and Chesso is actually really quite good because it is basically a telework you don't click. Even worse than not being an encounter, the two clauses of Cloud Eater are cost, so they can't be avoided. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We're going to take a tag for Phonatria. Uh, they can't fire snare there, so this is not that risky of a run. This is where, like, having a twinning is good, but, like, I think we're in a good spot regardless. Uh, fully break Enigma. Another notes. What are the odds of Canadian Nats or MTL again? This 0%, Dave. We did not win the Nats bid. Um, I don't know. I think this one's in Toronto and one's probably on the West Coast. So 0%. That being said, we'll apply next year. I'm not surprised we didn't get it because we got it last year. They're generally going to try and move them around. I'm glad we still applied. Uh, but, yeah, 0%, 100%. Is there a value there is considering Miami or talking the deck? I think I would consider either of them, yeah, Chinchling. I think Taka showed up in the last kit deck from last summer, and Miami is probably not necessary with prepaid, but Taka is cool. Two cards in the heat. I didn't even check if we have two of the sames. But we would just get anything here. See so yeah, how they run. There you go. Good game. Yo, how upsetting is Ash when you're playing PE like that? That Ash <laughs> can't feel good, huh? Oh, no way. I only found snares in there. Yeah, but they're definitely setting up the combo, and unfortunately on a com, like, there's so many reasons why this combo potentially can be strong. I think you need to do something super unfair for the combo to be strong, like Hollowman. But it's just, like, so much of the meta is defined by, like, on a com, Stone Chip, Burner, Imp, Steel Skin. Like, it's, it's really hard to pull this combo off consistently. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping to always have enough events in hand. Good game we'll play. Thank you. Is World Tree Target to get your console out? Agree to disagree about Airblades? I know, Diogen. You put two Airblades in every deck, and like I, I don't know which decks it, it works out well against. Oof. Wow. Yeah, they flooded up pretty bad. But at this point, like we can literally wait and just wait for them to advance cards in their remote server. Because anything they put in their remote server, they advance. It's either BioVault or an agenda. And one shot Casador left. So like we don't have to play Netrunner. We can just click for credits and we'll win. They'll deck out. My new RWR cards arrive in the front door. Yo, Ryan! It's so nice to open physical cards. It's not something that happens all the time, man. For someone who, unfortunately, well, I, not anymore, but used to buy too many board games, you know, it's an absolute treat. I'm drawing agendas, I'm not drawing money. Your early econ was sick, but I hear you. Yeah, the early econ with Charlotte was really, really quite good. Is there value here in considering Miami or Taka? I read that and responded to it. My, my thoughts haven't changed in the last uh, minute and a half. Need to make you run early. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not too I'm not too scared of you scoring out the first couple until I can get a read on the deck. Looks like cards are delayed for UK distribution. Oh, sorry to hear that, Nick. Mind you, of course, proxies are legal if there is events coming up, but yeah, no, that's a bummer. There's always there's been pain points when it comes to the EU store for sure. London tournament will be all proxies, yeah, okay. One of the hidden benefits of being into Netrunner, I buy far less board games every year. I got to the point where I, I bought way less board games last year and probably even less this year. I think there's a lot of reasons why that is. 
money is one thing running out of space to put them definitely another thing so i'm a lot more exclusive right now there's a couple board games i'm trying to get rid of that i have extras of yeah yeah for sure i wonder if you build uh, you build around anoetic and really force the issue like, I think for this deck to be really strong, you need to Anoetic and Remote Server. You need to play defensive upgrades. Like, you have to play... I don't think you play Funhouse, Phonatria, exactly. But you want to get to a spot where the Remote Server is, like, Anoetic, maybe Lacosta, so that on a single turn, you can score the agenda, end the line, and Neurospike. Like, you need to brute force it so hard. It's so hard to brute force it. And it's just, unfortunately, like, the single tag payoff on Phonatria, Funhouse, like, everyone sees it coming. Uh, also, Public Trail might work. Like genuinely, there's some turns where like, uh, what's it called? That it might be right in this deck. And I'm actually kind of scared of that. Public trail into neuro spike into end of line will kill runners. Because that does five damage. And it's not hard to have a runner on less than five damage on five cards in hand. But I generally think public trail, mindscaping, end of line can kill people out of nowhere. Running out of shell spells is real. I've also slowed board game purchases a lot since moving last year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, once you have to move all your board games, like, oh my God, it's so hard. Oh, you hear me? Fantastic. Yeah, Public Trail might be good. I think we'll catch people off guard. I think Public Trail will win you games. Uh, you can't really do distributed tracing because it's too much influence and like you don't want the double part of it. But finding the room for PT and probably Neurospike, yeah. I think you need to make the combo as robust as possible because there's just so much inherent tech to it. Like a burner on HQ closes you. Uh, again, Steel Skin on Com closes the game off. It's it's really, really tricky. Problem is that you can never hold all those cards and have the money before that you're absolutely flooded with agendas. Exactly. Which is why you play as few agendas as possible, which I think is what Brodo is doing. Like, I do think you play Fuji, see how they run. I don't know about Blood in the Water, probably. Like, it would be nice to have an agenda that you want to square out in the early game that helps set up the rest of the combo. But again, Jinteki just has a really unfortunate pile of agendas that are not tempo positive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Play Gaslights to find the pieces? Yeah, you could. You could. You definitely could play Gaslight. Because I don't know how many end of lines you play. You probably have to play two of them. Like maybe Brodo's not even on all the spin doctors. It's hard to imagine that he has all the spin doctors, considering the influence we've seen. I was on similar agenda sweep, but yeah, I ended up flooded. Yeah, I can believe it. It's just because you don't have a proactive game plan to deal with agendas. That's a problem. Like, yeah. Seven games in a row. Yeah, you just don't have a proactive plan. Sebastian with Mercs also just sits around and waits for the corp to burn the resources to force a kill. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm quick to play Mercs in the Sebastian deck, but yeah, there's a lot of tech that's just going to be a problem too. Yeah, yeah. Blood in the Water combos with End of Line. Yes, it does. But like, you would hope that there's an, like, this is like the quintessential agenda that's going to get drawn to your opening hand. It's going to be in your hand until it gets stolen. So like, hopefully you have a card that like, like, I don't think you want to add false leads because then the density gets really bad, but you want a card that helps you for the win condition, but also scoring out doesn't feel terrible. It's two End of Line. Okay, cool. Yeah, that tracks. So that takes you to eight influence. Funhouse is some amount of influence as well. Nine, 10. Okay. We're probably on three spin doctors, 11, 12, 13. It gets tricky. Like you probably want sprint, right? Two in and line, two funhouse, three spin. I'm not sure I want funhouse. And maybe if you want funhouse, you want on the remote server where you're forcing the, the fork. Do you know what I think is good? Funhouse is a test right now. I think check a scion is good. I think check a scion. If they run a double event, check a scion, you win the game. I think that's a card I would try. Feels like you need Moonpool. Yeah, that's so hard too, right, Izzy? I don't think you're incorrect. It's just like really difficult. Brodo, you can hear me, right? Your responses have been like way too good to not be able to hear me. Because <laughs> I'm not typing in chat anymore. You definitely can, yeah. Uh, but Check a Scion seems like a play. Maybe, I don't, it depends how often they're running it. But if they hit a Check us and take three tags, right? Like, uh, that can be a problem for you. Because that's the problem with Phonetria and Funhouse. It does next to nothing with Mindscaping. You want Mindscaping to do two damage because then you can do Mindscaping and end of line and that will kill a bunch of runners. Not every runner, but a couple runners. I was on Checkus, but people are, aren't are aware enough of the the shitter. I hate the, the acronym is shitter. I can't hear you. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, of course. Yeah, I don't know. I think Checkus seems important. It's just I don't know how often people are advancing traps. You're right. If you do install advanced events, they have to consider running it. But I think most people will just either burner or have tech. So they don't. And then the Checkus feels bad. So maybe you keep advancing the Checkus. What about Behold? Oh, Behold's actually not bad either. Yeah, Behold's pretty reasonable. People respect Snare. So, like, Behold fires in the same case as a Snare does. So maybe you do, like, yeah, two, three Snares, two Behold, something like that. That also is worth checking into. I do like having an Advanceable card, though, because the big thing about this deck is you have to run the Advanceable cards if you don't have tech. And that's when Checkers gets you sometimes. 
But again, if you keep advancing the card, do they run it? Maybe, because they're worried about Neuro Spike. It's hard to tell. Uh, Daniela too, but that's hard. Check as good as people are aware. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I turned on the stream after the game. Didn't realize you were streaming until I saw the game go up. But if they're not respecting it, check as is dead, but they can just die to the combo. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. It's a hard spot to be in. I think it's a deck that like, even uh, maybe there's a chance, uh, what's it called is right in this, uh, Holloman. Because Holloman can do the combo way faster than people think they can. Because like, say you have a Holloman on the table and to see how they run, right? Like it's expensive, but you do, you can do it all in one turn from never advance. And there's probably some tricks. Like I'm worried about P Holloman. Cool thing about Holloman too is like, obviously in Jinteki, it's a bit strange, but you can put Holloman on top of an Urtica. You can put Holloman on top of a, a Czechist and like they can't run it. They'd have to pinhole it. I think his deck has legs, but it really needs refining. I think you need a way to answer the meta. Because I feel like with everyone on Burner, Onicom is pretty popular, Steel Skin, Stone Chip. I think it's very hard to play. I think you have, the, the onus is on you to figure out how to make it work. Like, you have to beat that. Considering I think that's a very consistent matchup. Good game, by the way, Brota Turret. It's fun. Halloween P. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely something there. There definitely is something there. Dude, thanks for the game, eh? How are we doing on time? We're three hours in. It's three o'clock. We have another hour in us. Okay, listen up. I don't know if we have time to build a uh, assassination deck. Do we want to play more kit or do we want to build an assassination deck? Because this is like the last hour of our rebelling without rehearsal week, I think. Holloman might be safer in Jateki. It looks like Mwanza. Yeah, that's the problem with Holloman. You put it on centrals and my immediate response is, ugh, I don't want to run it. Because you don't want to run uh, centrals against PE. Hey, good game. Good game, Andre. Hey, abbreviator. Assassinate. Drew, are we doing it? Let's do it. Whatever. I don't think it's going to fire, but we'll do it because it seems fun. Let's build a deck. I'd love to see assassinate decks. Me too. I'm not a big believer of it, which I think is the best case for me. It's like, I'm glad that it seems not consistent. So let's try and build it. I've never done it. Slap an Amelia on kit for more jank. I think Amelia is like worth looking at. It's just harder with that deck because we don't have a lot of multi-access. In Zaya, no, I think I'm going to do it in Az, which seems like very quintessentially an Andre version of this deck, which is the, the spice I can provide. Okay, let's talk about it. I still don't know how to say the name. Jay Chinyu, I think, is the best I'm going to get. So hopefully that's correct enough. So just to make sure we're on the same page. When your turn ends, if you made a successful run on all of the central servers, you may add this hardware to your score area as an assassination agenda worth nothing. Then if you have three assassinations, you win the game. Threat three techs whenever you bypass a piece of ice, you may spend a click to install this from your heap. So that's okay. It means you can actually discard the early ones and the extra ones, and it means you're not weak to damage. But that clause is probably worth building around to some extent, but not exactly worth building around. Everyone just calls it meme knife. You want three Estabrado, three inside job? Estabrado is a bit tricky because you might not have the clicks to get it down, but I think in as you probably do. It's the knife. I want to know how to pronounce the name, though. Like, I like saying the names from other languages. I think it's the coolest pair of Netrunner. Just build a red cream and put 3x murder knife. If you whiff steel and give a backup. I think if you're not building around Jai Jin Yu, it's not worth the card slots. Because you're right, it's nice to play reg and then have it as a backup plan. But I think if you don't have, if you don't at least slightly build into it, it's not worth the spots. Because you're right, if you whiff, you have it. But the chance of you whiffing, finding all three, running all three central servers, which is not something you do in most criminal decks not built around it. That's basically three really bad slots. How many alarm clocks? One, probably. Let's go kill some fools with S tier cards. Augustus, I still can't tell where your tiebreakers think how good this card is. Because it's everyone's out of their own opinion. It's funny. I've been playing the knife out of Zion, startup and stable and standard. You need to build into it. Yeah, I think you definitely do. Like, what but if I told you your goal in Netrunner was you played a 40 or 45 card deck and your goal was to play three copies of Sure Gamble, three different copies of Sure Gamble. How many turns will it take you to play three copies of Sure Gamble? That's not run all three central servers and successfully install this card, but just draw three copies of Sure Gamble is hard. Like, it's not the easiest thing to do. So just keep that in mind. About 11, yeah. It's not about right. Asmund's great. Lord Gitlander. I don't know if I like Asmund. He's definitely worth looking at, especially in Az. It depends on the rest of the deck. Jay Chinyu. I just can't tell if it's Yo or you. I heard saw it with Y O O. Jay Chinyo. I'll say Jay Chinyo. Yo, Leonard, my entire uninformed opinion on meme nice is that I can connect whereas genuine borehole can't. I do think it's better than borehole, but like low standards, you know? The card is a complete blank card that applies absolutely no pressure, does nothing, requires you to win the game off scoring seven before it's text. It's my opinion. It's cute. It's cute. And I think if you built your deck around running three centrals and playing, you know, deep dive, you'd win way sooner and way more consistently. But that's fine. It's still cute. The advantage is that you can 
Jaichinho a lot faster than multi axis doing it on turn two and three. So you need to play a lot of copies. Read Wizards Jestia. I can get the third knife down to Zaya on turn 13 to 15. Sable about 10 to 12. 13 to 15 is really long. Hence entirely uninformed. <laughs> All right, let's try it out. So why do we want to play as? Well, because we have Masterwork. And Masterwork says two things. Firstly, installing our hardware. Where can I put my head, I guess, here? Draws cards. And that's really nice. We can also install this stuff mid-run, drawing card, which is really good. And our hardware comes down one cheaper each turn, which obviously Jay Chinyo, Jay Chinyo is, is cheap, but it's it's that definitely helps. So let's do collection standard. It also can be pre-installed and doesn't eat all your influence in Crim versus Deep Dive. No, it doesn't. But like slamming that many centrals, you can play twinning. Like you can play cataloger in as like you can do a lot with it. Wizard Chess feels like the move. Yeah, Wizard Chess seems good. You can run a low amount of hardware. We don't want to run a low amount of hardware. And I still think we Wizard Chess, funny enough. Jechinho in Brazil and Portuguese for little way loosely means to circumvent social conventions. Yeah, I've read a bit about it. It's like making things work with what you have. If you're not spending the influence on deep dive, you can spend it on card draw instead. Yeah. Okay. So we have that. We also have prognostic Q loop. This is where like Wizard's Chest is going to be like, oh, I don't know about it. But at least we can do Wizard's Chest and the Wizard's Chest. I'm over here voting for a singleton exploit. Neon, I, Eric, I think exploit is like legitimately a good thing you can do. Because if your goal is to run three central servers and you've ran three central servers, exploit will make running three central servers relatively good. Like I think exploit is genuinely worth playing in the deck. Like if you're doing the thing anyways, why not play this? Like exploit was not a good card. But in this deck, if you're doing the thing anyways, yeah, G res three ice in which they have to res ice on central seems fine. How do you find about Asmund finding up Fazerum and Tangler? Um, mid. Not bad, but mid. Okay, so the problem with playing the Wizard's Chest is we want to play a lot of hardware because Boomerang is just so good with Masterwork. We want to play a single alarm clock. We want to make sure we're playing g genuine Netrunner anyways. So we want to play like a Docklands Pass. Like we just want to play, like there's a chance we don't play Docklands Pass because we're killing people. But like ideally we want to play Docklands Pass because it's good anyways. Asmin is worse than Earthrise almost always. At, uh, in As, it comes in for one credit. But I, I agree with you, Augustus. It's really hard to make Asmund worth the card slot over any other card draw. Like our game plan is literally find the weakness, exploit the weakness, <laughs> repeat. Yeah, the poison goes in, repeat. So other things, like I don't think people do this. Like I think diversion of funds has some sense in here because you just fundamentally need to slow the game down. I think emergency shutdown makes sense. Like you need to slow the game down. I think I've seen so many Jay Chinho decks so far that are just like, I don't care, debrado, debrado, debrado. But you still fundamentally have to play Netrunner. Where like I think cards like this are worth considering. You need to slow the game down. You can't just hope I'm going to draw it before the corporation does their thing. So I like this sort of thing. This is where you have to play good Netrunner on top of Jay Chinyo. Chess gets you free installs doing the thing you wanted to do. It's not bad. It's definitely not bad. We're probably going to play a couple of them, maybe even three because it's goofy. Idea is play Bypass Mercury Docklands and Pretty Mary to hit three axes, play Amelia, ESD, exploit for Econ Denial. I think I could work. How do you decide on the number of copies? Damian, how's it going? Uh, it depends on the cards. So we talked about this a bit yesterday. Mind you, the stream yesterday, I think, has actually turned out quite good compared to the normal slot we put out. <laughs> three versus two versus one is basic rule. Three means we want to have it in all of our opening hands. Obviously, unique cards make that a bit more interesting, but we want masterwork in every opening hand if we can get it because it is a key piece central to our deck. Boomerang, really good. Means we can pressure the remote server as soon as turn one. We install it for one credit. Masterwork, it's part of our engine. Jaichinho, obvious reasons. Sure Gamble wants to be in our opening hand. Bravado, best card. Like, that's the idea. We want in our opening hand. One of our first, very first best clicks is Bravado remote server. Two ofs means we want to draw them at some point in the game consistently, so we don't need an exploit in our opening hand, but we want to have it. And then one ofs are cards that we want to draw at some point in the game. We do not need an alarm clock down. If we have an alarm clock, we'll probably be okay with it, but that's the basic idea. Three onto two onto one. I realize the tributary exists and bypass dies to tributary so hard it's hilarious. Yeah, tributary messes up so much stuff just accidentally. It's bad into inside job. It's not great into boomerang, but not the worst. It's like really, really problematic on a lot of reasons. Uh, tributary is messed up. You have Docklands for HQ, pretty for R&D. They combine with Mercury to hit three and trigger Amelia. Yeah, I think Amelia you have to build into a bit more than this deck wants you to. But I could see it. Going to go on a limb and say we might not even want to play Diversion, but it might be okay with Wheels. Well, I don't expect us to Diversion on the on the turn that we're like Jai Chin Yoing. I just think we want Diversion because Diversion's good. I don't think we play Pula. Pula is kind of rough. Flip Switch? Yeah, we can play Flip Switch. We don't need to, but we can. Okay, what else are we playing? Events. Uh... Class Act 3X, for obvious reasons. Uh, our breaker suite's going to be interesting. I think we actually have to run real breakers, right? Do, we don't just play no breakers, right? Like, we play actual breakers. When's the last Az deck I published? What's Az look like? Az got a lot of support in the set. Uh, Az. 
coffee as. Okay. Unity. Cool. I was on red team. Hell yeah. So Baya Bands. Yeah, Baya Bands is sick. Uh, Chesva is slow but good. Masterwork. Poison Vial. Why? Because of Boomerang? Why are we on Poison Vial? Why are we on Poison Vial? What does that do? It doesn't do anything. Why are we on Poison Vial? Red team is cool with Julie. I don't think I like Julie that much. I don't know if I'm into Julie. Julie's okay. Probably going to lose me some reputation in Everness Circles, but I think Tributary is quite mid. Veronica, you're not the first person to say Tributary is quite mid. I think it's ridiculous that a three cost ice that has already premium stats on it forces you to play around it entirely and just like eats so much things incidentally. I haven't played into Tributary enough, but I think Tributary from my distance looks really, really good. I know I've heard other people. I don't think Jeff is into it, which like our tier list is going to be a bit of a fight. That's fun. Probably built that when cards came out. No, <laughs> no, not even. <laughs> I don't think I don't think I built that that long ago. There's no timestamp on it, is there? But it, it this wasn't. Oh, January 9th. No, it's been out for a while. Okay, what else do we want? Nuke is a bit slow. Poison vial stretch your revolver counters. Yeah, but I don't know if you need to do that. How's it going, Oran? Wonder if there's another weapon viruses. Pula gets solid. Amakua revolver. It's just like not as good as just having regular draw. Gatchapon. Merrick Gatchapon's not bad. Getch one's not terrible. It fires Masterwork on their turn, which is cool. Chesva, Baya. How many tricks do we need? Giving the Corp two clicks a turn by hitting Tributary on a dummy server and not breaking still awful. Yeah, like for three cost, it already has. Like, okay, in terms of Tributary, I'm not going to get too derailed here. The res to value of subroutines to cost is nonsense. If Tributary didn't have the additional text on it, obviously it's a bit mid because it is a positional ice, but like the res to trash, sorry, the res to strength to how impactful the subroutines are, like the subroutines are not exactly game losing, but they are potentially game losing against like, uh, uh, like Ag Infusion and against a bunch of other stuff. But those subroutines are already on a well-costed ice. The fact that it can move is just bananas. Like how many code gates do you think are in the game that have higher strength than, than res cost? It's very countable. A lot of those cards are banned. And then a bunch of them are like very, very playable. There's not a lot of ice in the game that's higher strength than res cost. The biggest problem with the ice is how you get a res. Yeah, uh, I agree. But that's all ice, right? <laughs> all ice, you need to res it. I think the subs are mostly relevant. The subs are so good. It's a free double install with Ag Infusion. Oh, sorry, with Asa Group. It's uh, a TF trigger. The plus two strength is for the whole run on every server. So Ag Infusion is a monster. Even just installing non resable ice. It's very, very, very good. Do we need Fazerum to have possible recursion for the jet? There's a chance. I don't know. Like losing Jaichinho, Jaichinho only sucks against like PE. And maybe you do want it then. I can't tell. Out of Ag, it might be miserable. Ag is a really good use case. And Ag is a very, very important like part of Genteki right now. So it, it's hard to not think it's really great. Letting the Corp draw cards, isn't that? It's really good attached to an install a card. Because Veronica, that's the problem. It's like one of the subroutines being install a card is only as good as card draw, and card draw is really good attached to that. So it's like a it's like a really good combination. Draw a card, install a card is the worst option. Yeah, two X exploit. We're gonna try it. I, I like the idea. And then the ice behind it is still messed up. Like people are in buzzsaw. You break it for four without support in the early game. You can't run into a like. It's not the best card in the history of the game but the fact that it costs three credits and it has a huge impact on the entire board once it's rezzed is bizarre that is a lot of value for three credits you can just access their cards how the ice is like plus two strength it's so bad early i think i like it early I, if it's the first ice i draw i'm really happy because then i have one of those for the whole game just legwork them I, it doesn't always work like that obviously 100 percent Play an untrashable asset that drew a card my opponent ran anywhere. Exactly. Yeah. For three credits. It says draw a card. Right? We used to see 4-2 agendas that did that. A 4-2 agenda. It's just a three cost dice. Obviously you can break it. Snipes kit. Snipes kit. Snipes bank card. Snipes inside job. It does a lot. It does a lot of work for something that's surprisingly cheap. Okay. I derailed myself. That's fine. Um, I don't think we need to play any of the late game like access packages. Like we don't have to play... Um, uh, next what's it called uh wake we don't have to play zanit i don't think i'm gonna do any of that you're selling me on it play wave yeah wave gets it in hb i don't know you're right the subroutines aren't like utility subroutines but just like having an icy res for three that has an impact on the entire board is bizarre it's very 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 unheard of we've never seen an ice like that 
The only bad thing about tributary is that's unique and inconsistent. Yeah, you play wave if you want it in HB. Oh, what's a real breaker suite? Like maybe we do play Fizerum. I think Fizerum is fine because if they trash it, it's fine. I just don't know how many play Fizerums we play. Wave gets it in Hyobu. You want it in Hyobu? Wave gets it in everywhere. Wave is also only one influence. Uh, you can have secure and protect if you're playing Glacier at Wayland, which is probably not the best use case of it. Uh, so we probably need to play real Netrunner. So like we should have real breakers. Laundry missing? Uh, not always. Probably, but sometimes you don't want that many events in your prognostic deck. I'm not sure what I did the last time. What is this? What are you doing there, Nat? I did play two Dirty Laundry. All right. Amakua. Cool. Carmen. Yeah, I guess so. Unity. Uh, Kurapira. We have two Fizerum, two Chesva. We might have an MU issue. That's actually worth looking into. And then we have one Revolver, which like, okay. So maybe the Fizerum challenges us because this is a lot of MU. I was doing one of each of the core three and three Fizerum. That's neat. We can also install Fizerum mid-run, which is like obviously pretty sick with Prognostic. Surely Overclock is better than the Laundry most of the time. Um, no. Overclock, so in this, mm, no, not always. Overclock's only really good against assets or having breakers, and Dirty Laundry is good against assets already. Fizerum plus Spree? Okay, I don't think we have to go that far. Andre, hey chat. Cinderin, we read your name last night. Congratulations on working on the set release. We can install with Masterwork using Overclock money. Yeah, we also have Chesva. But the thing is, like, Overclock in your opening hand is not as good as Dirty Laundry in your opening hand. Like, I'd rather Dirty Laundry HQ turn one or R&D turn one than Overclock by a mile. I know that it works with our engine, but, like, also not exactly. Uh, okay, let's play some other stuff. So we have six influence to do stuff. Like, what do we do? Do we actually do Wizard's Chest? I still like running Vancouver NPC this weekend. Yeah, I'm stoked to see what that looks like. I know it's going to be filmed. Bachlin Botchkin, mind you. Haven't seen this yet in a sub deck, but it, it does make sense. Uh, backstitching is also relatively good. Um, just doesn't have the biggest synergy with the rest of what our deck is doing, but it's a hard card to play around, that's for sure. Is there anything else we want? Like, we're already on 46 cards. We're playing two exploits, but it is what it is. Wizard Chess with so much hardware, it's still value. I agree, I don't seem too sold on it, but like, what about if we just say resource and we get a class act? Trick shot slipstream? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> How good is slipstream into uh, Jaichinyo? Whenever you pass a res piece of ice, you may trash slipstream. You do cheese a piece of ice putting a central server in the same position. You're now approaching that ice. Is Simon Chip for Zerum is a thing? It actually could be. I could see it being a thing, especially in As. I just don't know if a Zerum is inherently better than Boomerang. How good is trick shot? We don't want to run the remote server. There's definitely some cool cards we're not thinking. Like, even, uh, what's it called? Uh, I think running central servers with uh, the one where Leonard Cohen throws an axe at the brawn. Y'all know the one I'm talking about? Opportunity? Window? Like, this for central servers is not bad. The thing is, like, we are 3x boomerang, 9x boomerang the deck. Yeah, Slipstream seems cute. I wouldn't discount Slipstream. Miss Bones also is like a meta card. We could play that. It costs one credit. Uh, is this good? We have two influence. Anyone has a good idea? Like my idea would be cut carbon, play echelon, have real breaker suite. And then we have a mid to late game deck. Pinhole? Oh yeah, pinhole seems good. We have Chesla anyways. There's no way we're not playing two pinhole, yeah. What about Leonard Cohen? Uh, I was told that the Windows of Opportunity actually has a flavor text from Leonard Cohen, who is a Montreal icon. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. I don't think I'm that familiar with the Leonard Cohen oeuvre. My parents are. Yeah, it's from Anthem from Leonard Cohen. There's a crack, crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. It's a Leonard Cohen song. Credit cutting femme bug up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's sick though. Maybe, but probably not. But maybe. Okay, so now we have 47 cards. We have one influence. Anybody have a happy one influence card that they like? We love a Leonard reference. My parents love Leonard Cohen. So growing up, I was like, I don't get it. I'm probably at the point where I probably enjoy Leonard Cohen. I think we don't need to flip switch. With Fizerums, Fizerums are flip switch. Hush? Uh, maybe. Just seems extra. Spin Doctor. <laughs> Airblades? I don't think Airblades does anything. It's nice that it deals with damage, but like we're not that weak to damage. I don't like Airblades. I, I don't know whether you're memeing on me or not. You could be. You could be. Uh, I worry we don't have enough money. 
D-res seems good. Like emergency shutdown seems good. Like just hit central's emergency shutdown seems re re reasonable. Some additional econ, yeah. It's like, but what? That's the hard part. It's like, do we do Wildcat? My parents too. Scrubber, we have Miss Bones. You don't want to spend influence on Scrubbery. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. We can play, we can play this many. Leech, nah, influence or slots. Like, is this our opening hand? How bad is this opening hand? This opening hand isn't great. So we do Masterwork. Solidarity badge. I don't think we're gonna be trashing stuff enough. What's the opposite of Scrubber at home? Do I not like Fizerum? Is Saucy wild? Saucy is like kind of wild. It's not the wildest. Minus Echelon plus one chest. I think chess is nonsense with 14 hardware. Like, let's be honest. We probably shouldn't be playing uh, Wizard's Chest. But you're right. One of the best things you can do is play more Wizard's Chests. Because one Wizard's Chest... Hit Maybe we should just have inside jobs and Estabrados and like, you know, the nonsense stuff. Drop Echelon for another Nuka. I think I was happy with the amount of Nukas we had. Because, like, Masterwork is the draw engine. Like, more hardware might make sense. Stay on page. Stay on page. Just hit with chest. Easy. Okay. Let's try it. Echelon. Carmen. As Asin. Oh, Dirty Laundry also made sense. It's a shame that we're not going to play it. As Asin. As a scene. All right. I don't have high hopes, but I, I think it's going to be fun. You got to remember to play Fundamental Netrunner and then sometimes kill a corp. You can't just kill a corp. Maybe this deck is consistent enough. I do think Az is like kind of cool when it comes to this sort of play, stat play pattern. Az McCaffrey. I play Starter Bliss with Steve to recur the chests and bypass effect to speed the knife out. It's been working okay. Don't know how best to translate that to standard though. I think you just play Steve because you still can. The thing that I don't like about Steve and the thing that I don't like about uh, Nuka and also, uh, mind you, Zaya is that like maybe it's no surprise, but a lot of corporations are inherently going to ice their centrals against that ability. Against it as it's a bit different because as it doesn't exactly your, your plan is not exactly to ice up centrals that heavily. I feel like this is a good matchup, but also I don't know what they do. I Nobody knows what Ampere does. Okay. No test draws? No, honestly not. You're we that's right. We usually do. This is a great hand though. Do you think a pair can survive and exploit? I don't. Best of luck, have fun. I just don't know what Ampere does. It's usually assets, unfortunately. What if we replaced with knives with jailbreak and analyze would be better? Oh, 100 would be better. If we replaced our knives with twinning, it's better. But that's not the point. Our point is we need to kill somebody. Killing Ampere, that's the, the least likely corp I want to assassinate. We saved the good hand. Wait, I, I cut off by the like button. By the way, you can like the thing on, on YouTube. It's pretty cool, huh? We saved the good hand for the thing rather than wasting on test hands. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so sure gamble. Masterwork draws a card. Now when we run, we can bravado. So our play next turn whew, is we can bravado HQ, install the boomerang from hand, so we should prognostic here, I think, just to run archives. No, we probably don't. And then if they res two ice, we can exploit them. Let's go find a Jaichinyo. We have so much hardware to install. I'll install this now because it costs zero. I think murdering Ampere makes you the villain. Do you not remember the Ampere CEO was also a killer? We are killing a killer. Now, she didn't kill, but she was about to kill, which is probably how the game is going to end. Us about, oh, come on. Upgrade. Upgrade. Let's just bravado HQ. Install one hardware, yeah. Boomerang. We probably could face check. The problem is he just died to Sai Santana, and that's happened once too many times against Ampere that I get upset. Uh, the order, you should technically draw first. But it's not like we're going to boomerang something else. It's a Winchester. That's good. We have Link. Uh, we can only break two subroutines, which is what we want. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I break, I break, I break. I misclick. Yeah, we definitely break that. We just misclicked. They found the one of Chrysium. I know. <laughs> they definitely did. So this boomerang comes in for two. Uh, Masterwork draws. We put that there. It's nice to have the revolver into it. So do you think that Lord Gatlander can res everything? Because we can exploit this turn. And we actually could. We can Jaichinyo this turn with Wizard's Chest. So I need to hit the boomerang. So the trash program doesn't matter. If you have a reason to fire the trace, you can. If it's a Chrysium, you're being trolled. Yeah, I know. We still get the bravado credits. The boomerang doesn't get shuffled, though. 
But if they do that, the exploit also doesn't work. Card, but they didn't res. I feel like you trash that when you see it. It's a L Isaac Liberdade. Okay. Okay, y'all. I'm doing a thing that's really scary because there's a big chance that this is a Sisenton and we just die when you call hardware. Well, you call anything, we largely die. So, is this a good play? I don't know. I don't think we need to install the prognostic. But there's a chance if we can get through this. Oh, it's a thimble rigged. We've been countered. I don't know what this is, but I'm scared. So we draw here. We have a buy bands. So we'll do the next turn with prognostic. We want a Chesva. Carmen, unfortunately. How good is dying? Ah, it's not great. I think it's a super cool card that does not work. It is clumsy. Imagine de resing six cost ice. Attitude adjustment. Oh, I thought they were going to hurt us. Ikua goes back in the deck. There's a good chance of a specific artist. <laughs> you do not know how wild it is in there when you die to size and town and unpair. That's a really smart ice. Now, unfortunately, they're not like really doing anything. So we just need to draw into a breaker. Oh, uh, our hand is largely unplayable. We can install this to draw. We have an alarm clock. Alarm clocking HQ is pretty good. There's two things on here. I think alarm clocking HQ, they did just attitude adjustment, but it looks like they're on five threes. How many times have you died to Sisenton in my life? It's not the quantity, it's the quality. Like the, one of the last COs I was at, I played against John, bless John, set up perfectly, had a great as deck, or I forget what I was playing, but I had a great start, ran HQ, Sisenton dies. It was like turn three. I was so favored in the matchup. Just got upset. Oh, Fiserum is good. Fiserum, we Fiserum the Thimble Rig, don't we? I don't think Lord Gatelander can purge. Obviously, it's absurd to Fiserum a Thimble Rig, but like, it's a Fiserum. I don't care. I really feel. Well, I don't think a five cost I should kill you. Hey, Eric, who's going to win NPC Vancouver? Uh, Are you playing? I like Rongi to win. I just like when Rongi wins things. He's just a nice guy. He interviews well. I am? Okay, it could be you, man, but I think you're pretty washed. All right. I think we can just make some wild plays here. Put the alarm clock down. We could have waited to next turn, but then it doesn't fire. What about two cost ice? What about it, Sindrin? I used to laugh at your fear of size and ton HB, then <laughs> they printed Thunderbolts. I don't think that's absurd. It's a piece of ice that moves around. Yeah, breaking it for one's not bad. Eventually, we're going to echelon, but like it obviously makes it not great. If Getlander purges after we put alarm clock down, stop it. Stop it with the upgrades. This is what Ampere is like really good at. Is like, I can't tell what this is. I can't make a smart play into what this is because it's like straight full random. I will run HQ. It fires net masterwork and prognostic. Top two cards of stack is Nuka into Wizard's Chest. Unfortunate. We're going to force the archives rice. No further action. I will double click for an axis. It's not the best axis. It's a managarm. You win this one, my friend. Actually, no, you don't. Our economy is gutted, but I feel like I can do this turn after turn. Oh, this is full glacier. Uh oh. Time to die to Mwans into snare. Limit, limit one. Yeah, limit one is an important thing. I think you can have that. I don't want that. That's our turn. Okay. We don't have a good way to exploit after we double click with alarm clock. That's for sure. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it looks like our opponent doesn't have a game plan. Our opponent is just going to ice up central. So we should stop interacting and just click for credits. No cool Managarm unique fork. Yeah. So active policing. Yeah, neat, eh? Yeah, so they could, in theory, click for a credit here, or just take a credit. Whatever you wanted to do. Yeah, that's cool, too. When people install their console, face check into Cortex Lock, die? Yeah, in Wayland. <laughs> in Wayland? Yeah, I hear you. I think we still face check here just to force a res. I think you, I was told by Izzy. Yeah, it's just, yeah, that's fine. That you can um, double do this. So we only have three clicks this turn. I don't think that matters. We're just going to draw once, install Nuka, click for a credit. Like, admittedly, they don't, I don't know what their game plan is. Oh, Thimble Rig's there. That's smart. That's really good positional. Oh, Thimble Rig. Like, Alarm Clock gets beat by uh, Tributary. They definitely have a Tributary in their deck. Do we begin to have a game plan with Centrals look like Wall of North? Yes. Uh, in 33 cards, they will deck themselves. 
Like, I don't know if they're playing big deal. It's a one of, so I don't think we have to worry about much. Uh, no. Chess was really good. The problem is we need to wait until we have a boomerang. This wizard chest is probably garbage. But like, this is an error I don't like. We're like, we gotta make a play. It's turn six. You gotta, you gotta do something. Uh, I think we just do credit, credit. We can install the revolver. Mind you, we shoot Winchester for two credits. It's not bad. Uh, so we probably do chess with the Winchester. I just feel like we don't want to go to two low in credits, but we also can't do anything. Wait for 33 draw. It's like they have one spin doctor. 32 cards in. They still have a lot of work to do. They're advancing ice. I guess they have one Isaac. Like the corp has to win. The runner doesn't have to win. The runner just has to be there. No. So the, at least the deck that will have time to draw three knives. Yes, that is the good thing we got. We can also now face check. They when when did that happen? They paid for that. Oh no! It's like worlds all over again. Like our play is probably click four here. Imagine prison Drago R plus with Hollowman. <laughs> I think it's too expensive to do it. I think it's way too expensive. You could give two tags every turn though. It's really expensive. Yeah, this is like I I. I'd, this is like 59 card deck. I don't like this. This is not good. Like click four is like not incorrect. They're not doing anything. They're dirtling. It looks like we took Sokka's deck and removed the parts that won the game for him. I just want to see what the deck does. Like we're lucky we saw Isaac so far. What's the three advanced dice we're worried about? Were they resing on six credits? Just send it. I don't know. I don't know. It's just like send it R&D for a single. Is that right? Like they're also clicking <laughs> Oh no, we're going to be here all day. I just want to have a boomerang before we send it. Let's find a boomerang. Uh, no, okay. Well, now we just bravado H R and D. Right, with a revolver, we're relatively safe. The problem is like, if this is a Hordem, it's like game losing. Yeah, exactly. So I'm saying Hordem is really scary. I think Hordem is a problem. Uh, unfortunately, we can't deal with Hordem. So bravado archives. will I think we'll master for the Jaichinho. Because we're not going to install a ha hardware from hand. So we can use this credit. We have a mutual favor. That's good. Look at top two card stack. Class stack, class stack. That's ugly. Thought we'd get a boomerang. So Jaguar. Okay. Does that matter? I don't know. So we either take a tag into core damage or we just shoot it a bit. Just shoot the cat a bit. We only have to break one sub routine. Oh, I always hit that button. That button's like tempting. Click three sounds like a Pharos. It could be, yeah. <laughs> You're an entertainer at heart. I appreciate it. We are trying to have fun. Now, if they res a Ferris, we derez. The problem is like the Hordem face check on triple advance is messed up. It is straight up a problem. Uh, now we have a weak server. So next turn we can buy a bands. Install the class act. Here, we should install the Carmen for three. So then we can break Jaguar run D4. Unfortunately, three. We can mutual favor for the coder. Yeah, we probably should. We have a unity, right? Yeah, we have a unity. Amaku is probably actually correct in this matchup. But we're going to respect uh, this to be a, uh, the thing that we don't want to lose to. I'm just going to take a credit for it. We don't need another wizard chest. We have one Jaichinyo already. The problem is you can't wizard chest on the turn the Jaichinyo is installed. So it actually might have been wrong to install the Jaichinyo. And just actually like wizard chest for the Jaichinyo. Oh, they're building a remote server. This is where Amaku gets good. No, thank you though. And it may be worth doing. We don't have multi axis, so I think we, yeah. Man, imagine we land the exploit, how good it's gonna be. We actually can do it this turn. Do we start by by advancing archives? It draws us two class X. <laughs> uh, we don't have a hardware in hand. I think on seven we can run RD. I think that's the server we're worried about. Yeah, it's too much. Oh, we shuffled. Yes, we did shuffle. Nuke into Kurpi. We did shuffle. Very importantly, we shuffled with the, um, whatever the heck, the mutual favor. It's not cat. Brutal. Just miserable. Ice that always fires. Just really wants to make you interact with the board ice that always fires, huh? They spent a lot of money on that. Uh, I don't think we care about the advancement here. We can't go through it. So do you remember what it is? It's Nuka into Kurapira, so I do think we buy advanced archives. It's unfortunate we don't have a, a hardware in hand, but we're going to use the chest anyways. 
We're running three. Should we have accepted the clock? No, because we need to see what this is. If it's a barrier, this doesn't make sense. So I don't want to clock sooner than later. But you're right. Yeah, it gives us a click. That being said, I want to figure out what the size is before we clock. Apparently, this is advanceable too. The combination of Ampere and Advanceable Ice is like my nightmare having a nightmare. This thing's doing well into the Jaguar. Cards like I can't make me ask for the crew. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I honestly don't think Advanceable Ice is good. I think people are coming to terms with that. Like Advanceable Ice is not fun. Ice that infinitely scales or gets subroutines. Like the fact that they triple advance this is, is I don't think it's interesting. So Kurapira breaks it for 700 credits. So we have to boomerang the Aket. That's fine. The question is whether we want the Nuka down. I think we installed the Nuka for free. So we'll just get the Kurapira down. We have all our breakers. We should be scary. This comes down for zero credit. Like, luckily they're going slow. It's just like, unfortunately, interacting with them doesn't seem to be the right play. Aket doesn't infinitely scale. No, I, I know. But a lot of the ice we're seeing does. Like Logjam, Treeline. Like, you saw Worlds. Like, I don't think Big Ice is a cool part of Netrunner. I like that NSG is having big ice, but only as unique cards. I think that game is a lot more interesting to be like, there is a big ice, but there's probably only one. And then you have to fear the second one. <laughs> Don't you love mass combat? I do like mass combat. It's nice to have money. Is this a trap? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out. Could easily be a trap. Probably an NGO front. I think they'd like an NGO front here. Wonder what would happen if we had a real win con. Uh, if we had twinning here, we'd be in a beautiful spot. Because they're going really slow and charging the twinning is really good. I also think a big problem with Jai Chinyo is it's unplayable against Ag Infusion. It's like straight unplayable. Yeah, like twinning. Twinning here would be on like five counters. And then we just make one run on RD through a cat instead of having to run this a cat like three times at least in the game. Let's nuke it for a boomerang. Got it. I think we do credit sure gamble run the remote. Uh, we could die do some stuff here. Alarm clock helps with the Ag matchup. Yeah, but you just can't afford to run three central servers into Ag. Uh, I don't think we installed the boomerang. Oh, we have to do it now, if anything. No, we have breakers. We have nine credits. Uh, let's do masterwork, draws a card. I don't want to strand the boomerang here because they don't have to res. Because if it's an NGO, they don't have to res. So I won't do, I'll do prognostic first. It's class second to Chezvo, that's fine. All you. Yeah, it's an NGO friend. It's a Pharos. Great. Uh, so here... Taking the tag's not that bad. The chance of them have relevant tag punishment is pretty unlikely. They can trash the Nuka. Imagine they have a retribution. Like, yeah, that's great. This is where, like, Empire is hard, because understanding how bad the face check is is, like, a bit much. Uh, So we're going to take a tag and we just end our turn tagged. It's fine. Throw the Jin Jin Yo, right? Honestly, it's, like, not the worst with Viserum, but it's also not great. Uh, What's the worst card in hand? Probably the Baya? Eh. Probably the class act. The game's going slow. We're massively favored to win. Yeah, but maybe in 30 minutes. Andre's going well. New cards are, are pretty wild. We're trying to do an assassination, which is not the easiest thing to do. Are you enjoying the new set? Did you get cards? Montreal got the delivering. Dashino does have text installed from Heap. Yeah, it costs a click, which like don't love to do it. The problem is like making the single run on HQ without Docklands. Like, this is where like we probably want Docklands. Diversion would be really good to draw. So we probably should run this, which means we're going to boomerang it, which means we have to clear two tags. Um, I think we can afford to do that. Our deck doesn't have a really robust economy, unfortunately. The good thing is like we can run Jaguar Run D for free every turn with boomerang. Why do we need to run it? Buy the remote? Yeah, buy the remote's cool. Why do we need to run it? Because it seems important. Masterwork, boomerang, boomerang, mass prog, Chesva prognostic. Another Chesva is too much MU. Oh, Fazerum. Corpus dead to exploit, just crest until we can do that. I think you might be right. I just assume that Lord Get is finding ha happy about their, um, about their Pharaoh, so they'll jam an agenda. We just don't know enough about their agenda suite. Yeah, we probably can just chill. This is a luminal, though. I think draw two cards. Oh, it's a virus. Okay. Well, it's good to know that, I guess. I think we do trash it. At least we have the MU back. The Fiserum is pretty bad. You can use Alarm Clock to install the Boomerang with Masterwork and save money. 
Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, actually, yeah. Because we're not using our Chesva the turn. That's cool. We can bounce off of that. So if we get the Chesva down, we should use the Chesva. I don't think we're using the Chesva. I think we're installing the Chesva. Like, we don't have money here. I don't want to install the Chesva. I think we just do credit credit throughout the prog. But yeah, you're right. That's a cool thing. Alarm clock, we can bounce off and end the run. And then just install things from hand. They spent the three cards to do one net damage. Did they? I didn't notice that. No, they didn't. They didn't res it. Right? No, they didn't res it. Oh, they didn't. I see what you mean. Yeah, okay. So here we should pressure HQ. I do think we probably can just like get a kill in this matchup. The problem is that like we're going to spend a lot of turns clicking for credits. No standard rotation? No, Andre. There's a startup rotation. Uh, but in standard, we just got 65 new cards. In startup, they lost all of the Borealis cycle. So it's actually like 65 cards smaller. Uh, so we might as well run to see the top of the deck, right? Prognostic. Bravado Miss Bones. Bravado's good. Install a hardware? No. We could have cycled the prognostic. So Bravado Miss Bones. No. I thought the blades are good into full glacier. Airblade? Which blades? Oh, these blades? Uh, it's not the easiest. Exploit is probably the best card we have. Actually, should we get an axis there? We break this for one, and then we break this for two. We should have got an axis there. Yeah, we should have actually ran that. So we should have installed Chesva last turn. Uh, I think it's fine. We can install the Chesva now, run HQ. Chesva is really good into Jaijinyo. I haven't seen a lot of people build it up. Axis doesn't help us kill, yeah, but it helps them not win. We have to make them not win. Because we break this for one. We want to overlight the revolver anyways. We should have ran HQ. We should have installed the Cheswell last turn. This play is probably the best card we have. Genuinely, it gets unpair. Like, we need them to be scared of us. It sounds like water is running, which is concerning because there is no water running in the house. I might need to check up on that in a second. Let's see if they move the thimble rig. That would be annoying. They're not pressuring us? No, but they probably have an agenda here. They've gone through like 20 cards, 22 cards, and uh, they have a Pharos with two ice. Like they're clearly setting up to push. I think it's very likely we're going to find a 5-3 here, and they're on as many 5-3s as possible because they're on a slow like Glacier deck. Uh, match strength of Winnie. Three bullets, unfortunately. But we want to reinstall our revolver anyways, so that's fine. It would suck to be flooded when you aren't even playing Corp. <laughs> Ah, okay. That's not good. That didn't cost us a lot. It cost us bullets. What's the next bravado? So bravado is our play next turn. Yeah, you're right. I think we just click for credits. We didn't, don't do anything. Even if they push it to score seven while you have the triple central three times. We know they had bio vault, right? Okay. Maybe we shouldn't have used the bullets. Oh, we should have installed. It's fine. We'll do it. We'll do it after. Stink lack of agendas here. <laughs> uh, okay. So I think we bravado archives. This is maybe a mess knee. So we bravado archives. We get the last shot into Jaguar. We can still discard it. Then. What's the top of our deck? It's like a class act or something we're not installing. Oh, Miss Bones. Miss Bones is not bad, but not the best. So we can afford to draw once to see two new cards. Okay, well, Bravado Archives. We just want to get our Carmen down, and then we're cooking. So we'll do Prog first. Top two of the stack is Sure Gamble Boomerang. Okay, that's really good to know. We won't install something. And then we'll encounter. This is like La Costa maybe, but I'm worried about the Bio Vault. If they put a Bio Vault on this, it's fine. Bravado Archives puts down Carmen, starts exploiting. I don't know if we can afford to do it this turn. Like, we may want to wait next turn to do the revolver to shoot the Jaguar once. Yeah. So it's what? Sure Gamble into Boomerang. So I think we draw Sure Gamble. And then we're good to go. Oh, sort of. Alarm Clock is tricky, though, because we want to run this first. Draw Carmen. We're over MU. The revolver saves us. One credit. Yeah, you're probably right. I think the Sure Gamble is better here. You need to install Carmen here, do we? Oh, because we want to exploit. You can only use Alarm Bypass on the Winchester. 
I don't think we can afford to double click. We want to exploit. So if we run this, we have four clicks. Yeah, I don't think we can. Maybe we do need like a Julie or some way to get another click here. But if we sure gamble, we have money. Yeah, alarm is the only, the, no, it's not the first ice. It's just the first click. You have to use it at the beginning of your turn, but it's any ice. It's not the outermost ice. So you can alarm the Winchester. So if we frog, boomerang, and trace, yeah, I think that's better, is that we sure gamble here, that we run HQ, we pay one, we boomerang the Winchester, great. Then we run Jaguar, we revolver it. Then we install the Carmen, then we run R&D, and then we uh, exploit. I think that's going to be a pretty good turn. The first time you encounter a piece of ice during that run? Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. Tributary is even better, Veronica. It's literally right there. You think I'm going to read it? Longevity? Ugh. Recursion. Hedge fund? I'd be more worried about like Isaac and Managarm. NGO front, fine. They can win in two pushes. So we're going to exploit down. What do we exploit down? Like the Winchester, I guess? Okay, so here we prognostic. No, we don't need to. Yeah, we don't need to. Masterwork, no. Uh, lock, so we know it's Boomerang Class Act. That will be shuffled, so it doesn't really matter. Ferris Winchester or Jaguar ND? Yeah, we probably derez the Ferris, you're right. Even the uh, Ked is something. They don't have a lot of money. Uh, end the run uh, from here. No, thank you, though. You can't exploit this turn. I think we can. Because we actually probably don't need to install the Carmen. They, they, yeah, they stay. They stay. This is what early FFG Neverrunner was like, just sitting around clicking for credits. Oh, no, we had Magnum Opus. It was... <laughs> you didn't click for credits. <laughs> you Magnum opus for them. So here we're going to prog one of these. Boomerang. Do you think this is a sentry? Like, if this is a sentry, we get blown out. But on five strength, there's no advanceable sentry we worry about. Uh, credits. Masterwork. Here break so we'll just do the trace just got back and confused until i saw it in pair yeah me too caddy jones a magnum yeah so we spend two not even so we still have four clicks left right i don't think we care about that that's way too expensive for them yeah thank you okay so let's think about this right do we wizard chest for tempo with the last Jaichin Yu and 14 cards? I do think we wizard chest for tempo. I just can't imagine what we get. It's really funny. So we can run archives and shoot this. I think maybe we run R&D first. It matters what this is. But if this is a sentry, we can always panic through one and then we can just like install the Carmen. I think we run R&D here first. I think you have enough clicks to install Carmen and exploit. I think we do. I just don't know if we need to. Mind you, this is expensive. You could just eat the core. Yeah, eating the core is fine. Uh, we can't even charge Kura Pier on this thing. It's really annoying. Like, ideally, this is the boomerang target. We might have messed that up. Colossus isn't realizable. They don't have enough money. But yeah, I'd rather expect hammer. Don't forget, you need to lose a click or take a tag in Jaguar. No, it's threat four text. So we don't have to. Not yet. So on six, they can res. Oh, it's a mess in chest. So that's really bad. Oh, we're cooked. They do have enough money, you're right. Hey y'all, we're getting glaciered out by Ampere. I want to concede. This was way too expensive to break. And Pear going to beat a new meta OP knife? I know. Tell me about it. Fun? Yeah. Our cat into Mesa Chesso is messed up. We can still knife? We cannot knife. Oh, we could knife. We just can't exploit. F it. It's about sending a message. Just run through Jag and risk the 1 to 6. If we, if we lose it, we get it back because we fizzer him or something. We didn't want to steal it. We wanted to knife. This is fine. 
Repairs the biggest hurdle for Andrea. Yeah, I know. It's been a problem. Okay. So we can do... Lol. It's fine. We didn't want to steal it. They can't do anything with it. They're on one credit. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, help. Uh, we can run the Jaguar. It'll give us a core damage and a tag. It's probably not likely to hit the Jaichinyo. If it hits the Carmen, it is a problem. If it hits the Exploit, it's a problem. Credit, credit, run archives. Yeah, we could just not take the core damage for credit, credit. I think that's probably better. I think credit, credit, run archives is safer because if it hits either of these two cards where we have a big issue. No. If it's Harmon, we can concede, win-win. I think people want to see the assassination. We're almost there. It's just like brutal glacier. Get out of my game. I think the corp is going down to win in like six draws. I think the corp can recover from this. Okay. So do we wizard's chest? We wizard's chest. Do we wizard's chest for a class act? No. Or do we wait? Because we have a Jaichinyo in hand we install for free. Thinking. Do we wizard's chest here? Like, what does it hit us? We don't want masterwork. We don't prog. I don't think it does anything. Any more programs? No. Uh, yeah. One Fizerum. It's a guaranteed Fizerum. E we have no econ resources. The deck is like Miss Bones, three class act, two Nuka. I don't think we want a class act here. Because our economy is messed up. It's like click for credits town. We play three sure gamble, three bravado. The best we have is diversion. Hardware to hope boomerang. Yeah, hardware to hit boomerang is probably the best. And we're guaranteed to hit boomerang, I think. What do we boomerang? The Winchester so we can diversion? I think so. I think we uh, boomerang the Winchester to get diversion. Install masterwork boomerang. Okay, boomerang. This is draw a card. Winchester is not easy to boomerang. Maybe we boomerang the Aket. Two in grip, one in heat. Oh yeah, we have no class act, you're right. Uh, missing chance exploit hurts so much. I know it would have been game ending. It literally would have been game ending, but I think we needed to boomerang the cat. I think we realized we can't break this thing for six credits or whatever nonsense advanced wise costs. So the Winchester still has one subroutine we care about. I think that's probably it. I just don't see how we ever break a cat. We could also just put on the Pharaohs to play control. Chester's already have a lot of hardware targets, but it makes it hard to get knives. It's not bad, though, because I think we can easily, like, wizard chest into tempo hardware or wizard chest into wizard chest. It's just like a convoluted, um, uh, what's it called? Gachapon. Fizerum for the Mest is okay. Yeah, Fizerum for the Mest is actually pretty good. Is it going to ask me to Jaichinyo? If it doesn't, I'm going to be upset. Oh, it does it automatically? It says May game. You're not getting my consent on this one? So they have an Ikawa in hand, but we're going to ignore agendas. Yeah, it might have been better to boomerang this, because I think the version is the only way we get back in the game. Oh, we have to Fizerum to Mesni cost us two. Yeah, that's pretty good, though. We have one MU slot. There's nothing like data dealer. There's nothing that forfeits agendas on the runner side. So, yeah. No artist call any nonsense. That being said, you can like always click to install this if you like bottom your Aesop's pawn shop deck. It's time to play Giordano Grid. Okay, so that's probably the 5-3. So they can win in a couple turns. It's not that hard. And we put the boomerang here, which is maybe wrong. We need to get a diversion. Okay. So we'll install this Jaichinyu to draw a card. We have the Fizerum. So Fizerum and Mesna Chesso is okay. The problem is we have to beat the Winchester. The Jaguarundi just doesn't do anything. Prog check? Oh, uh, yeah, we could prog check, but we were going to install a card anyways. You're right, we might as well, but unless we're going to run later in the turn. This sucks. The chest seems like a bad include because they don't have anything that costs money. We don't actually hit knives half the time. Uh, Yeah, I wanted to try it out. I don't think it's the best in this version because we are playing like 14 hardware. But it's cool. It's cool. Even just getting like a class act for free is not the worst for two influence zero install. It's not the worst. Uh, the problem is we, we drew all our resources. But like if we got a Miss Bones, or uh, sorry, a class on the turn that we also Jaichinyo, that's kind of sick. That's genuinely kind of sick. And this is the issue, is where like where if we just focused all our effort on cracking the remote server, like if we boomerang the Pharos, we'd probably have a better time trying to win the game. So what's left in our deck? We have like two pinholes, I think. One Baya bands. Uh 
a wizard's chest, unfortunately. One more knife somewhere. The back or Ashen. Ashen doesn't really work. Sorry, the back doesn't really work that well because it only gives you cards with trash abilities on it, which we have like one in the deck. Yeah, we might only have one. It might be the one revolver. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, but there's not a lot. Oh, technically wizard's chest. But who cares? I feel like you burned a lot of resources hitting the remote early. You could have been setting for stepping. I agree. I agree. I think we should have tunneled, but I'm that's what I'm I don't like about this card. It forces you not to play the game. Like I thought we had a read on Lord Getlander, but like having a read on Ampere is impossible. But unfortunately here, like, maybe we should be playing Telework, which is a job. Like, it might serve us right to have an economy card, because unfortunately our engine is interaction-based. And, like, they're already going to do this against an interaction base because they know we're on knife. Like, we probably should be playing something that gives us money, like Liberated or Telework. So here we'll run. It's Diversion to Masterwork, okay. Eric stabbed me to death on turn three the other day. It was okay. How are people dying on turn three? I don't see how it's possible. What am I missing? What's the deck? That's not the first time I've heard that. And I think it's unbelievable. But I think that's the highest to high rolls. Spend two clicks to bypass and counter ice. No. Sable for clicks. Yeah. And that sort of deck like inside jobbing centrals makes way more sense. Like even concerto for tempo is, tempo is fine. Okay. So we can break this for free. Then we hit the Winchester. We're struggling to get our Carmen down because we have to make a successful run. Fizz plus door equals GG. What's door? Oh, doof? Yeah, you're not wrong. Fizz plus doof. Well, no, they'll res something here, right? Re-education can fly line turn three. I did worlds. Oh, no, you can die. You can die in turn one, Daijin. I just don't think you could get murdered with Jaitinho. Like, runners can die on turn one. Watching the game is painful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Is this like Swift Diversion Sable? Uh, no, this is just kill as. Uh, the as package just hasn't been working because it's hard to run into this. So, yeah, that might be right. I wanted to Fizerm the Mesna Chesva because unfortunately we break the Mesna Chesva for like six credits. Like if we don't Fizerm this, I don't know what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing. Like we just, we can't click for money sooner than they can win the game behind a Pharaohs. This is making me unhappy. No, we only have two, I think. Thinking. I think we only have two of them. We can't move them or anything. But I'm pretty sure we only have two. This is not it. I should just check the tab. Hold on. Love the runner decks can now be called kill as. <laughs> Watching site, not gonna lie. It's a struggle. And the thing is, like, if we weren't, hmm. Yeah, we only have two. Make money at least, threaten the remote. Yeah, it's hard to threaten a Kurapir with a Pharos. Like, is Gatlander going to triple advance at some point? Yeah. So I think we just draw and threaten it next turn. Like, I think we just do credit, credit, credit. Discard the class act with 11 cards left. We have to get the Carmen down at some point, too. Uh, at the bottom of our deck, when we boomerang cycle, we have something there. After Doof, it feels like we can afford Unity. Mm, yeah. Well, we pay four out of our pocket, well, out of coffee to get the doof, so it's not bad. It is not bad at all. What was after doof? Or after, yeah, after diversion? What was after it? Oh, I, wow, I went to the top of the log. What happened on turn one? <laughs> you tell me where this all went wrong. It's hard to pinpoint. It's not that hard to pinpoint. Oh, wait, Cyberfeeder doesn't tell us what we prognostic. Oh, it probably clears it when you leave the tab. Oh, hidden information gets cleared once you leave the tab. That's good to know, not to find out in a tournament setting. Has anyone seen that before? Taking four credits here means that you can take two and run if they push. Ooh, uh, not really into two defensive upgrades, I don't think. We might as well make the run. It doesn't cost us anything, right? Masterwork boomerang. Okay, getting the boomerang on top is nice. I think we just here, if we want to set it up, I think we just do uh, draw, credit, credit, and then install Fizerum somewhere. I think we have a chance.
Okay, so hear me out. We first click run here. We break this for one. We install the boomerang from the top of the deck. We get through the Winchester. We probably beat the trace. If Lord Getlander boosts into the trace, I think we're okay. We access HQ. We have four clicks left. Okay. We boomerang through the Akkad. Oh, wait, we have to run R&D first. Shit. Because of the boomerangs there. So we boomerang through this. So that means we met, we have to Fazerim onto R&D. I don't want to do that now because Getlander could purge. Uh-oh, this boomerang is really bad for us. So we boomerang through the message chest So, okay, click one. Math. Click one. We install the Fazerim here. Okay. Click two. We run. We boomerang. We Fazerim through that. That cost us uh, literally two credits. We access R&D. We have two clicks left. We run R&D. We run archives. We have a small chance. Is Jagrundi just going to fire? Yeah. Is this ice going to be a century and a problem for us? Yeah. You could double boomerang off of R on R&D. Yeah, we don't want to double boomerang the message Chesfo. I think we need to boomerang the Winchester. The problem is like we probably can't afford to shovel this boomerang back unless we draw the boomerang, which it might be right here to draw. I can't tell whether we want to draw or Fazerum. Every <laughs> narrow is constant enemy. Continue against a near iceless deck and win on turn three, especially if you had buy bands. Oh yeah, yeah. that is, it's, it's very, very hard. Like it's unlikely, but it's possible. The lesson I'm taking here is that present boomerang should always be on HQ. Yes, I think this boomerang was incorrect. I just don't think we can afford to Kurapira through this. Like, I, I think there's a chance with alarm clock, we want to schedule the HQ run first always. So the first boomerang should be here. Second should be here. Third is on archives. So our options are install Carmen, which like, I don't care about Jagarundi. We also could consider doofing instead of clicking for a credit. Uh, 10 cards left. Ah, shit. I'm not sure what to do here. Because HQ, nothing seems to have changed. That's bad. Veronica, we're getting close. 10 cards left in the stack. The issue, though, is like the closer we get to the third giant genu, the more ice they just put on centrals, right? Like the game just gets longer for both players. Uh, Unity, th Winchester. So it's, do we install the Fazerum? Do they purge the Fazerum? I think if we install the Fazerum, they purge. So I think we can't do anything here. I think we just click for credit. And I think we don't shuffle the boomerang back. Not good. Let's see what they do. Hopefully they commit to like double advance uh, the, the Ikua. I don't know if there's like a tempo positive. Like they scored an SDS. We're crying. Oh, that makes it more interesting. That makes it much more interesting, doesn't it? What does that mean? What is that? <laughs> what is anything? Double events by a vault? Oh yeah, double events by a vault's a problem too. I think we'll face check into this to force a res because we can double click. So it's boomerang to doof. That's good to know. We just want them to res money. So an Anansi. Oh, fuck. Bypass, take three damage, lose Carmen, lose Fazerum. No matter what, we're taking three damage here. Yeah, it was bad. We knew this, but like also classic Ampair. Classic Ampair resing an Anansi. I imagine it's the one X-Men Doctor. That would be my guess. Unless it's like Hearts and Minds or, or Cohort or something. This game's gone for 40 minutes. Yeah, and I will concede at some point. <laughs> Plays A's that doesn't ETR seems bad. Do, I don't... Did we double click through this? We probably double click through this. I just wanted them to spend money. What? <gasps> that was the best possible option. Why click? So they don't get the value off the subroutines. Like it's going to do with the thing no matter what. That was the best case scenario by like unimaginably the best case scenario. I was like, if we lose either of these, we lose the game. Yeah, the game continues. Worst case. <laughs> uh, we might want to jack out here. Okay. Hmm. They have one, no credits. <laughs> I think running server one is now like, okay. The problem is like Kura Pier is a problem. Uh, we can't exploit them no more. Full send. So the Winchester is three traces. We have to beat all of them. So if they don't boost, if they boost once, okay, then we have to beat trace four, trace four, trace three, which is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We just jack out here. We can't pay eight credits. We should run the spin doctor. Carmen is successful run. Yeah. It's a Rashida. So there's an agenda in server one. So now we need to get down Carmen. Do you think we're looking at a glacier heavy meta? Seems like to me, to be honest. I don't think so, Gwen. It's obviously dependent on the runner side, but like, I don't think you want to play full glacier into Kit, Labasomum, Orca. 
I don't think you want to play into like Devil Charm Arceris crew, but like nobody knows what the runner side looks like. Winchester seven, not eight. Oh, uh, we have Link. So it should be eight if they pay one credit, right? Because it's trace four, trace four, trace three. So we spend three, three, two. Did Jinteki get a new way to shuffle Genesis back in R&D in this set? No. They did play Sprint, though, so sort of. This is also like, I know our turns are taking long, but the problem about playing in pairs is they don't have a strong win condition, so the games do just drag on. Admittedly, we don't have a strong win condition, weirdly enough. Okay, final Jaichinyo. We lose the damage, we lose the game. It costs us five to break a Nancy. It costs us five to break Winchester. Jesus, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, we could run archives in theory. I don't think they would have discarded an agenda, but like, it's technically free. How bad could this be? It's free to run archives, but why would we? Because there's an agenda in there. I just imagine there's so many bad cards you can discard. Uh, Masterwork? No. I did wrong order. Whatever. Prog. Wizard's Chest Doof. Okay. The Doofs are going to be important if we can get them off. Unfortunately, it's like pay six to rob five. It actually matters. We should just get our money up because they're going to lose to Wizards uh, to three Doofs in a row. Uh, two Doofs because we lost one. Uh, we don't actually have to break all of it. I don't think we can use our chest for credits. I overspent. A virus. They threw out a pivot. Okay. So I think we just do credit credit. Again, we just need some way to make money without running. So probably telework. Rogue trading clear tag. I think some of the connection packages like rogue trading clear tag with Valentina is probably not terrible with as. As is a bit slow though. It could one server one for sure. Yeah, for sure. I just don't think we have a reason to run it because we're trying not to win on points. And even then on three defensive upgrades. Remember when HQ was Thimble Rig Winchester? Oh, we were so young. And I don't even think the doof is that good because they'll be able to res this stuff. We have to wait for the like double advance on server one. Uh, we also have to play around Bio Vault, which like how? I think our bottom seven the stack is like two pinhole threadings. Pinhole threading archives is pretty reasonable. It's just like here we want to probably imagine we had twinning. I'm just saying imagine, <laughs> imagine we had the twinning. Like we'd actually have a win condition. The game would have been over. But instead, we're on this thing. Knife. They're on our level. Click for credits. I think we're fine with that. First time I've seen Ampere. It doesn't show up that much. It's weird. It's like, it's not very powerful, but I don't even think it's that fun to play against. Because playing against full random... Like, as a runner, you just make less good decisions. Empire versus Nova, that's its own thing. I think that's fun format, but, like, it's clearly not that strong. But on top of it, it's, like, it doesn't close games out quickly, so it's it's a bit of a grind. I feel like this deck might have spread a little too thin to get a more consistent stab win. Yeah, maybe it did. I think you can build a more... Like, imagine we had Estabrados, right? Like, imagine we Estabrados. It would actually be pretty sick, as much as you can Estabrados this. Estabrados this would be 100% game winning. So maybe we learned something. Draw. Credit, credit, credit. Ampere Nova's fun one time. I've heard good stuff about the Ampere Nova tournaments. I've not played in them. But like, it usually, I don't know. I, I know when Nova came out, it was accentuated by the fact of like, did you draw your endurance? They click for three, okay. It's like playing draft decks, yeah. Okay, so hear me out. If we div diversion... We break Anansi for one. We break Winchester for five. So we pay seven. They probably lose all their money. They res some of this. Nova Lu? What's Nova Lu? Like DJ Fenris? Uh, so it's not great, but it slows the game down for both of us. I <laughs> should be a scoring Sisyphus. DJ Lu, but you get Doof and White Hat. Oh, that seems fun. This is probably not right. I think we should wait for them to double advance, but they might just do like credit, credit. We don't want them to hit an economy card. Like uh, they might be struggling to play the 10 cost economy government subsidy. So what's the math? 
Again, Anansi is five to break. You need to break all of it. This is five to break. Two boost, three break, two boost, three break. So we save four on that, so it's six. So this is seven. We get back five. So it costs us two credits. It's almost definitely worth it. Uh, I think we know the top of the deck. We can install the Masterwork. No, the Wizard Chest, we shouldn't. It draws a card. Let's see what the top of the deck is. It draws us a Diversion. Okay, Amaku is actually really good. Wait, Amaku is what we need. Do we have bands left? Uh, yeah, we've won. Amaku would be straight fire. They can't really afford to purge. That being said, all their ice is like four plus strength besides the Jaguar. Mav is in the bin. How are you going to get it to five strength? Oh, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, there's Mav. Yeah, that's true. They should res some stuff here. The Axis is probably better, but like now we just cost them three turns because they just click for credits. What are we going to do next turn? You know it. Diversion again. Oh, that one turn, if we get the exploit off, the game is over. We have one more exploit and four cards as well. Which, actually, we probably need to set up exploit, and it just wish we had a better way to get credits here. I think we played every gamble. Yeah, they click for three. Fantastic. I don't want to per do it again, because they'll do that. Uh, no. So, looking at our heap, our heap is... One Baya Bands... Two masterworks? No, one by bands, one masterwork, one exploit, and then one card. I don't know. Turn 20, one agenda scored. Amazing. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. I cannot express how upset I am about this. Uh, okay, so this is six. This is something. We actually can probably do it. I don't want to time lock again because if they res, the doof is not that good. Uh, but we probably on the turn do doof into run archives, run into R&D. So we probably put the Fizerum there. I'm worried that they purge. I think we need Fizerum on the turn that we're uh, Jaichinyoing. So we just click for four. 50 minute threat two. Yep. Yep, 50 minute threat two sounds right. Oh, Boomerang is the last one. Yeah, you're right. Excuse me, there's cards in the score here. Do we run this? I think we run this to see if they res. I don't think it costs us anything to run into this. Unless it does. But it's hard. Exploit's the next card. Like, I want them to res this so they have less money. It's a tattoo bullet. Fantastic. Uh, this actually is a problem for them. Do you think they have other ice in hand? Because, like, if we core appear it, we charge to break the, the, the Aket. Do you think they have more ice in their hand? I don't think we want to give them four credits. Yeah, they probably have more ice. I think you're right. That's fine. We spend no clicks. They spend two credits. And they installed this, so they spend four credits. It's funny how with doof, you don't flip or you do flip. But yeah, okay. Oh my god. I think we can win. I think we can win. His mood is going up. Are you winning? I think we're winning, Veronica. This does resemble two blindfolded drunks flailing. Their... Okay, hold on, Tanuki. It's not that bad. Oh! Oh, it's that bad. It's that bad. I'm running archives. I'm running archives. I don't. We have to deal with this Chrysium or whatever. It hurts. This hurts. This physically hurts. Oh, sorry. It's on me. That's that's sorry. We know it is master exploit masterwork. Yeah. Volvo Boarding Control. Okay, well, Boarding Control is sick because we can farm Boarding Control so we can beat a cat. This is actually a mistake, I think. Like, every turn we should run this. In fact, we should just run this twice and jack out. I don't think we care about Volvo. Do we care about Volvo? Because what does this cost to break? It costs us one credit from pocket. Yeah, Boarding Control is great for us. I think we'll still deal with Volvo because I don't want them to get more money. Their money is tight. Uh, Two... One, two, break one subroutine. But yeah, now we can farm this every turn. You can run remote then? Yes, we can remote, but the remote has an equal in it. I'm not winning by agenda points. I refuse. Just kidding. What the hell? I don't want agenda points. This game just got longer. <laughs> Oh, no. 
Only ice resed? Yeah, but they're going to get more cards now. We just can't let them have Vovo. They also res all this for free if we let the Vovo. Get punitive RH'd. If they give us another agenda, we just run server one and we win. How did that get there? They threw it out. They're probably on punitive. The thing is they're on one punitive, so they have to give us six points. And if they give us six points, we just send it server one. They're so poor. Yeah, they're going to get a Yodel here, very likely. Uh, but I don't think they can punitive us. We have a link and a lot of money. I think they threw it out. What else did they throw at? They threw out a tree line? There's still an unknown in there. Why didn't they trash the border control? It's not very good value from them. I think they want to move the border control around with Thimble Rig. Like, that's probably the line. Got to be flooded? Yeah, maybe. But, like, that's not that's not our problem. Flood is good because they can't play the game, so then it's easier to kill them with the knives. Face down cards and archives. That's new text. The Hollow Man. Whoa, that seems like good. Uh, Vovo's gone. Um, a virus purged. Why is there still a face down card in archives? Oh, that's a bug. So the, f the f it doesn't flip, I guess, right? It doesn't flip because you flip only at the beginning of the breach step. That's super weird. Yeah, not a bug. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's like, wait a second. So we can break the board control next turn. I think they're gonna move the board control over there, which is a bit unfortunate. Yeah, that's back pro. Yeah, that's how back pro works. I forgot about that. It's been a while. Because the flip is the first part. It's not part of accessing. Yeah. Okay, there's a non-equivalent. That is the best econ card. Let's see if they give us two credits. They did, so they're on seven. Uh, they might have to start advancing because we actually... Greasing? Okay. Fuck. Come on. Come on! Really? Fourth ice on HQ? They might mill out. I honestly think our win condition is them milling out. Make a run on HQ? How bad could this be? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Anemone? Anemone would be really bad. Just stab them? It's hard. It's expensive. We have to do it twice. Like, we have to run through Messina, Chesvo, Anansi, Winchester twice. Like, we're not going to stab them. We need to exploit them. What's their win con? I, I, remote server nonsense. Like, we should flush this out, unfortunately. I think we're going to break the border control and then bypass this. We're, we're winning on points. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's see what they get. What's the, it's a bait? Ooh, you're right. It's a tributary. It was bait. It's okay. They have no money. I don't think we care about this. Draw more cards? Yeah, I know. It's May, though. Maybe we're worried about them installing more ice, but they have to pay the cost. It's not free. Oh, no. It's ignoring all costs. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Mill them, it's optional. You may draw a card. Yeah, trip is optional. Fuck. I might have made a mistake. We need to farm the border control. This is okay, too, because we can farm the Tattoo Bola for the last. But then we can run the Pharaohs. We just want to have ability to deal with this. They should crack the border control here. They cannot let us farm Kurapira when you have a Pharaohs on the table. But maybe they want it for the Thimble Rig. But now we're in a good spot. There are so many cards. Yeah. I didn't know this was ignoring all costs. Knowing it's ignoring all costs, I might want it to break that. You can't make the border control farm look that obvious. Seems fine. Oh, no, that's actually pretty good. No, that's good. What they did is good. They will crack it. I'd be happy if they cracked it. Because, like, then we farm the tattoo bola. Have you achieved the old win con? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely have. I'm sorry, y'all. We're, we're, we're remote camping. We can't. Imagine if they printed an Ashen for the corp. Oh, boy. Yeah, click for credits, I guess. Winning by points. 
Tank. <laughs> Last session only read the draw one. This session only read up to install eyes. In the future, we'll get the second sub. The second sub seems pretty nice. Actually, yeah, we do run HQ. I think we do run HQ. Thinking. Because we need to bait the tributary. So maybe we run archives. No, no. Because if you want to museum this, move this over, it's totally fine. Because we can't use the Cheswick credits, so we just fully break this. And then we go on with our day. We've definitely played more than one game of Alt Wincon. You can also just click for credits. I think there's an Ikka one here, and I want to flush this out. Because if we get the defensive upgrades, it's over. Andre's Lobby is the dead last ever 27 on Jaina. The game is far from over. Pretty good. Yep. 10 more cards. They have... A spin doctor, which is worrisome. But now we will flush the border control because they can't win if they pop the border control here. They just can't win until they triple advance the Pharos, which I'm so surprised they haven't done yet. And I can serve one, maybe. And if they fire it, I, I, fantastic. Uh, no, I think we shouldn't. I think we should do it on the run back because this charges. Oh, that's very expensive. Pretty good 56 minutes in game. game like We're running back. We're flushing it. We can deal with Anoetic. I don't care. I'm not assassinating him. Yes. <laughs> uh, we need them to spend money. What's the text on Adrian? Whenever the runner makes a successful run, okay, pay side game. If the bids differ, the runner cannot access cards other than this upgrade. So we want them to spend money. They paid two. That's the best case. We'll trash Adrian, click for credit. Nine more cards. You didn't think there'd be defensive upgrades in there? Of course there is. But there's an, uh, my G, there's an Ikawa in there. So now we can consider it's Thimble Rig on the remote. What the hell? They trash a card. It's a spin doctor. It's a spin doctor in server one. Ah, we can stop. I don't know about you, but Caprice being back warms my heart. Uh huh. Charging tattoo on HQ would have been better than clicking for credit. No, because they can bounce and get credits. I don't think I want them. Super deep time hole. Faster mill, it's about equal because it puts two cards back. It it loses one card because you draw two, mill two, return two. Do you ever check that running water sound? At this point, I don't care. At this point, we just need to wash this all away. This game is wild. At what point does Jane add time out? Like it's just like you can't be serious. So running archives would be now kind of nice. Uh here we should probably run. So the thing is with tributary, we definitely run tributary first. Again, the three cost dice that's changing how entirely we play the game, even when we have breakers, is weird. It's very, very strong. So we have to get through this. Continue counter ice. We don't need to trash that, right? We just make them use it. I want to trash the defensive upgrade. Like when it costs one to run this, I'll do it. Imagine we didn't get the chest every turn. Yeah, the Hearthstone 50 turn automatic tie function. Yes, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Like I want to make this awkward because they shuffle back agendas, but I want to get rid of the other defensive upgrade. And like running this for one is the best it'll be. Obviously, they'll move this thimble rig around. You can break just one sub if you're jacking out after. Oh, yeah, you're right. But it's a chest for credit. But you're right. Yeah, we don't have to break the second one. You're totally right. Was the game against me the least awful game tonight? No, I don't. I think we had good games tonight. Your game was good too. I couldn't tell you. We played a bunch of games tonight. This one's bad for its own reasons, but we built the prison we live in. Yeah, it's a bio vault. We don't want that to happen. So we don't know what the ice is on server one, which I think is the best case. Imagine a turbine instead of Cheswa. Um, no, Cheswa is better than turbine. It does more for our deck than turbine. Hedge fund, they found it. So now we just click four every turn. Uh, make a run, no. Mind you, we can just Fazerum the remote at some point. We have to remember that. How flooded are they? Uh, very. But I want to win by mill. That's the old win cotton in the knife is mill. Oh, fuck. They biotic something. Oh, shit. They have a win con. 
<laughs> they had you out of the aluminal! They had Bionic aluminal to click for credits! Help! They have an old win con. You think they're gonna big deal us? Like, what did they shuffle back with Spin Doctor? I probably should have paid attention to that. We're gonna lose this game. Two unseens. So there might be a, a, a 3 2 in the bin. Make a run on HQ? We don't really have a reason to do that. Like, do you think they can score three points from hand? I don't think so. They have only a couple turns with eight credits. We have diversion still. How many diversion do we have? Uh, one left? Yeah, one in hand. Can we click for enough credits to big deal if we diversion them? No. I think they'll run out of time. Uh, they could be playing more recursion cards. We've seen one spin doctor. Uh, they played the corporate hospitality or we trashed it, I think, early. We've seen Managarm, Isaac, Biovault, Adrian. There's still an Anoetic probably somewhere, which is a bit expensive. Amaku with the empty remote. Uh, we have to trash one of our installed cards, so it's probably not worth it. Maybe that's right, though. Turn 25. Hey, Pouch, how's it going? Yeah. I don't know if Amaku is better than Chesva. It might be. Diversion only doesn't want this minus one credit to Tattoo. Yes. But, like, how do they win in the remote server if we just have money and breakers? Six cards. Not 21st, turn 30? Oh, it's, yeah, it's 30, turn 31. What is this madness? Well, we built an Az deck. That's not very good. That was doing Jaichinyo, and then their ice on central servers got really good. So, unfortunately, they don't have a win condition, and it's Empire. So, we'll Fazerum that, I'm pretty sure. Oh, no, we don't even have MU for that. We'll just pay money for it. It's not turn 25, it's turn 31. Sean, we're further. And we could easily lose to this. If they have like a government subsidy, we're in a bad spot. Uh, what have we seen for Econ? Rashida, we haven't seen NGO front. They shuffled an NGO front back. We're gonna have to run an NGO front. How much is it to run R&D? Right now it's not that bad. We boomerang through Thimble Rig. We get a credit. We should run R&D. I think you're right. Immediately nope out against a pair. Well, if we had a deck that actually had like consistent win condition, like twinning, this deck, this matchup would be fine. We just make one good run on HQ when, like this, we see three cards, we win the game. The problem is our entire win condition is this, and this is really bad against Glacier. Uh, specifically when we don't have economy for sit back and we don't have, like, bypass tricks, which, like, that was a deck-building problem. Oh, shit. That's cool. That's interesting. I guess we just have to take four damage. Are we going to ground out? Anemone remote. Yeah, we should draw once to respect Anemone remote. They might be on punitive too, but I think money's not going to be a problem. So we're going to run the tributary first. It's cheaper to break this on centrals and spend a click. Uh, prognostic, no, no. Okay. Okay. And like once things are really bad, we run HQ, we win. We don't have Dawkins pass though. No. Just click break all. Uh it saves us a credit. It probably doesn't matter, but we don't have to break all. But it's probably not gonna matter in the chest, but I think you're right. Unless we like run this and want to run HQ. Which more likely we're oh magnet, fantastic. So what does this cost to break? This costs us two. This costs us six. So it costs us eight. There's still an NGO somewhere. Time save is more important. Axu. It's not a, it's not a race. We're cruising. It's 30, 66 minutes in. We can spend an extra click hitting Chesva. City works. Okay. Died a punitive. We should probably draw here. Not that punitive matters. We have 15 credits with Link. Imagine they complete image us now. Oh, it'd be really cool if they did. That's why we play exploit. <laughs> no one ever calls exploit with complete image. <laughs> yeah, I kept the exploit. Yeah, I know. Uh, imagine if we were playing with the ice strength on all these runs. Okay, Jason, you're baiting me. Anansi on R&D, yeah. Thimblerig on HQ. We probably run HQ here and win. Right, like they're on 20 points. 
three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think there's an agendas in the bin. Oh, probably not. Okay, so how do we lose in the remote server we don't run here? It's a very important question. How do we lose? Tom Long. King making or vulnerability audit? Yeah, it would have to be seamless to vulnerability audit, and I think they're probably playing vulnerability audit. Did they spin Doctor back two unseen cards? Trick a light? Yeah. RPC? Uh, doesn't really work. Uh, I guess RPC of 4-2, but I think they're on 5-3s and 3-2s. So we could lose here. But that being said, say that's a three-pointer in the bin. Like, uh, what if I lose a vulnerability audit, I'm, I'm retiring from Netrunner. 3, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's seven points among these cards. Yeah, if they score a 3-2, we don't mind. Unless it's above the law. Actually. <laughs> uh, so we can run HQ. This costs us nothing. This costs us just a bit. It charges Kurapira. There might be agendas and archives. I think they have agendas and archives. So I think we actually do alarm clock HQ. If they move the tributary over, we double click through it. Uh, I'm gonna If any trash mold RD, you could also thin the deck out. Yeah, but I'm worried we're gonna lose on this turn. 1x Audacity, yeah, 1x Audacity is another way we lose, but it'd have to be a 4-2. So it'd have to be like seamless audacity, which we're like, they're probably playing both of those, considering they're playing biotic. Uh, which means there's a chance that they're playing us. And then all the agendas in our archives. Luckily, once we break the tattoo bolo, we can just send it here. So I think we run HQ. Consider running R&D, run archives. <laughs> Don't judge, Jinyo. Uh, so we will go HQ with this click. Masterwork? No. Actually, the ordering gear matters. Buy a bands into boomerang. Could be Hollowman in the remote. Uh, the Hollowman is a face down card in archives. We know this card here is a Hollowman. It's hard to explain how that is. Actually, they could have shuffled the Hollowman back. We won't even be able to know. They're probably on vulnerability, vulnerability audit. So do we just lose a click here, which saves us three credits? Or do we double click through this? If we double click through this, it saves us three credits. Our clicks are about worth a credit. That means we double click through this. We break Tattoo Bola, Thimble Rig, Winchester. Then I think we run archives. Yeah, I think we double click through this. I'll, uh, I'll bypass. Could be Regenesis. Yeah, it could be. That's why we're running archives anyways. So this is good. Because now the Kurapira can breed Pharos, which like we'd like that. We can also, in theory, like bypass Aket, but the advancement might matter. If they advance this, it's frightening. Are we worried about the Thimble Rig going somewhere? I don't think so. We don't need to do the traces here. We'll just break this for three from pocket. What an epic. Stream's been great lately, Sanjay. Thanks so much. That was a 70 minute game. We tried a Jai Chin, yo. Nope. How many in hand? What's in the remote versus hand? Easy as that. <laughs> that was rough. I don't want to do that again. Couldn't even wait for the old win con, I know. Res all. Sick. It was a wall to wall. <laughs> Actually, they don't have to draw with it. In the bin, there's a snare. So all the agendas are in centrals. So we're in an okay spot there. Wild. They have Audacity Bologna above the law. So we had a three and four chance of winning there uh, on HQ. If they put, and if we don't win there, if they can't really Audacity the above the law. So yeah, I don't think they're on vulnerability audits. Seamless pitched. Yep. They actually could have won potentially with like seamless into audacity on the Bologna that we didn't run. Deck just had regolith, Iqua, NGO front, and descent. Oh yeah, descent is probably we should have guessed that there's a regolith and NGO. Like they're the ones you're probably gonna see. This morning at like five minutes before I had to head out to work and your Urtica Rococo at someone instantly is very efficient. Yeah, I'm worried about that deck, Sanjay. Stay safe, eh? Play a flip switch or two. Yeah, of course there's a snare. Still learning the game, not entirely sure what happened here, but it was epic to watch. Steven, welcome to the game. 
Yeah. Uh, did not like any of that, but uh, we got there at the end. Yeah, such is Empire. I really don't know if our opponent thought, like, I'm okay hanging out for 70 minutes. I don't know if our opponent, like, they got dinner, they got something on the stove. This is a 70 minute game and it's extremely long for you, but about on power when Nick and I play, I feel. <laughs> oh man. Uh, turn three, alt win con. Yeah, alt win con would have been them milling out. Yeah, that's uh, it's always it's always tricky. There's some good cards in the new set, like uh, that HB one. That's kind of like that's kind of like Rego. Like that one seems good. There's obviously good cards for unpair. The HB one seems very reasonable. It's click for three at a minimum, and then I don't want to interact because it gives you more money. Either of my econ assets, I know. It was a slog for you, but that was entertaining to watch. Yeah, hey, I'm glad. If that wasn't on film, I wouldn't have had the the um constitution, maybe. Oh my god, it's 440. Okay. Hey, real talk. We're gonna hang out here for a bit. Let's do a little recap about what we learned this week. And also. I think that's mostly what I wanted to say. Yeah, but A relies on reses and B stays forever set to trash eventually and I feel bad. What do you mean? You put nine ice on central servers. What do you, you think the remote server, you need to do something with it? I think you have time to put that there. Right? Like, like if your game plan's not very fast, just put it there. It slows the game down for everyone. Uh, mind you, daily quest is good. Even Jenny Ina is probably worth considering. Like there's any econ assets good enough in impair, I think. Most of the new assets don't work in Glacier because of the second remote problem. Yeah, but like, admittedly, is this deck using the remote server anytime soon? They had an empty remote server. I think it did have a 5-3 in it for like 10 turns. They were clicking for credits. So like, I hear you, but also Janina is really good for that because it puts it back into your hand. Yeah. Five different factions in the score area. Yeah. Hey, that's the Ampere thing. Including Criminal. Weird, huh? Steelix Dabby doesn't gel with how you like to play the game. How I like to play the game, no. But, like, admittedly, you don't see Winchester into a Nancy on HQ. Messing a chest into a cat on R&D, right? Like, that's an issue. Um, I do think we want to, like, this is a mixture between Rig, Criminal, and then, like, probably even Estabrado. This would have been over faster. Janina seems like a fun Glacier card. Going to be sad when she gets pinholed. Yeah, she's worse than Daily Quest. But, like, why not both? I was trying to, I'll get the Echo into Seamless and either Audacity, but, yeah, I didn't have the, yeah, you read the most of the money. I was gonna exploit, but I also didn't have the cash. Janina seems like a fun... I just read that. I played a two-hour game a few months ago. Oh, no. Were you in chat, at least, in voice chat? Probably over... Yeah, which was... Which, like, yeah. There's a hard balancing act. Because, like, maybe if they didn't override centrals, they would have lost a knife. But then, like, the fact that they override centrals, they can't win in the remote server. So, 70 minutes later, you find that out, I guess. No one has ever said this would be better with this Debrado. Yeah, unfortunately, running central seems important. Thanks for the game, eh? Knife three times without scoring seven against a corp trying to win the game still seems like an impossible challenge. We went out of the way, by the way, Spark, to like not steal agendas. Like we know the Aqua is in the remote server and we said no. Uh, we knew it was an HQ, we said no, which like that's unfortunately on us. She might be good in an ag deck that can protect all servers from pinhole with the boop. Is she the same influence as anything else though? As like daily quest? I'm just sad we never the thing is like with Janina, I think you'd rather just empty a regolith. Like she would be the fourth regolith. I was really surprised how much value I've gotten out of JK. The fact that she installs a card when you grab her, like that's kind of cool. It's just like Daily Quest seems reasonable. It's the same influence as Daily Quest. Yeah, that's gonna be a hard slot. Oh, excuse me, my stomach. I'm getting hungry. This idea is a pet deck of mine, so I'm gonna try until it gets maybe okay. Yeah, there's a lot of work, there's a lot of a lot of room for for uh tuning for sure hey thanks again cheers all right so at the end of a week what have we learned we have built i think five or six decks and mind you you can always find the deck list in the bottom of the video and we can talk about what we learned from the new set because the new set we've played some of the cards not all of the cards and so there's a lot of interesting things here so we started here on Nuvum. we played a bunch of Nuvum decks i think punitive Nuvum is really bad unless you put six points in archives and the runner just runs into it which like okay i don't know if you need Nuvum for that but this fast events Nuvum deck which is like step one score out of base spire actually was okay when you played all the seamless launches audacities and slash and burn this seems better than i thought it would be I don't think I have strong opinions that Nuvum is like that exciting. It was okay. I feel like it's going to feel better in person, but um, it's hard to build a thing that's like comparable to Op, and I'm not sure if this is it. 
we haven't played Ateo yet. I, I don't want to, I do want to play more Ateo. Cool things we learned about Nuvum. Economic Warfare is a six credit swing is fine, even if you're not building into it. And you want to play a lot of operations that are better on more board states. I think this deck might want to play a single copy of Oaktown Renovation because DRM into Oaktown Renovation is messed up cool because you get a credit playing this and then you start advancing the thing and you go, uh, which is really, really cool. I was both overwhelmed and underwhelmed with Nuvum at the same time, which is strange. And playing it in person is going to be a bit more interesting. It's hard to beat up, but like this is OK. Yeah, Nuvin felt better in person. I believe it. I'm excited to sleeve this up for like maybe the thing on Tuesday we have. Uh, so interesting. Uh, we learned a bot about Seb, and I think there's going to be a lot of different Seb decks. I know Jai posted a Seb deck that's like surprisingly different. The version that we ended up liking is this version. As a recap, we did not play the console because floating a tag did not seem like a good enough payoff as much as actually having resource, having card draw was a problem with the deck. So I'm not actually sure if the Singleton Julie is worth it. She's good. The deck is a bit slow, so she helps with rogue trading. But it was hard for me to build a Seb deck without spending six influence on three nuke and three rogue trading. I believe Valentina is a three of in the deck. That might be me just playing old criminal rogue trading, but she was very, very good. Extra copies are not blank, and she's fun. The problematic card here is Araceris Crew. If you're playing against Seb this weekend, upcoming weeks, ice up archives, because the messed up thing that Seb can do is Praxis. You cannot let Praxis happen. Uh, it is really, really messed up. Uh, if this fires but our Aceris crew devil charm is just an issue because all ice goes down immediately there's only one ice in the whole game that's not seven strength oh i guess in theory there's wraparound uh god of war was better than i thought it was it prevents a hard purge and in the mid to late game this was actually one of the best tools that we had to be able to break ice into ag infusion which i think is really good right now so i honestly think god of war is worth looking at the Yamakuas were a bit tricky. We did get, you know, iced up and purged up and i can't tell if we want to play more helium forest because it is very very good uh that's cool I didn't like subliminal in Nuvum. I, I didn't. I don't think there's a reason not to run. I can't believe our crew is an RMG on use. I can't either. I cannot believe this does not remove from game. Like even Devil Charm removes from game. But the fact that it's recurrable in faction without spending influence, ice destruction, that's not even attached to a cost that's attached to an advantage for Seb is weird. It's just very notably one of the few, few trash ice cards that does not remove itself from the game without having to play simul chip or stuff like that. Praxis, yeah, RFGing Praxis doesn't matter that much. I do think that playing Julie and playing DJ Fenris, we cut DJ Fenris for Julie, and I think DJ Fenris would actually be pretty good because we didn't have great value from runs. I also think Jai's version, not to like dogpile on Jai's version, wasn't playing Manuel. Manuel was sick. Manuel is really, really good. We can always access tags. So why not make every central run a double run? I think Manuel is amazing. Obviously, you play one of Iru, uh, but Manuel was like way better than I thought it was. Uh, yeah. Next up, Holloman Heartbreaker. We just talked about this. It's a Holloman combo deck. This is definitely not the best version of it. Probably should have a Sandstone. I don't know if you need the Drudge work, but this deck is messed up. Uh, you can beat it by playing Flip Switch and some other niche cards, but probably Flip Switch, but this is a problem. Ban Rococo. Uh, next, in no other order, we played Cohort Combo. This was last night. This was way cooler than I thought it was. So we had Cohort Guidance Program. We're going to use this to trash cards from HQ so we can restore agendas from the bin, which means that we don't fire, fire the text of Holloman. It was surprisingly cool. And we ended up scoring out on like turn five, turn six, even fast advancing Bologna's and stuff like that. I realized Cohort Guidance Program is actually really kind of really cool uh just very 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 powerful in general as a way to get cards out of your hand to get more cards you don't play all the cards in your hand so just throw them out you've seen anarch before let alone we even use this to never advance and fast advance this is a good ability i think this deck to prove it you probably want to play sansan San in the vladgrid slot you definitely don't want to play arella unless you're playing smaller agendas but i don't think arella makes sense so you can probably play two more ice a bit more money because money was a rate limiting fact i think there's something cool here trash the cohorts if you can they're very very good yeah. Yeah. Restore is sick. Restore is really cool because not only is it good at spamming Hollow Man, unfortunately, that's what I don't like. Like Hollow Man RFGing itself would probably be fine as well once it's trashed. But like inherently, if you restore the Hollow Man, you have not installed from HQ. So Restore seems just really fundamentally good in Hollow Man decks uh, for many reasons. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Eric, you're asking, why does Flip Switch, what is the Hollow Man or Coco combo? Okay. So if you, we did this on last night. In short, what the combo is, is that Hollow Man can put three advancements on a card if you haven't installed a card from HQ. And very luckily with AWP, it's very easy for you to install cards from your deck and not from HQ. So the idea is that you purge with a Mavirus to go get a Hollow Man down on the end of the runner's turn if you need to. And then you have a Hollow Man down you haven't installed from HQ. Then if you have a reconstruction contract on the table or you trash a two coster and get it from your deck, you can now spend four credits to put three advancements on the reconstruction contract. That's very important because now if the runner runs literally anywhere on a remote server on the table, if they commit to the access, you can go ahead and trash the reconstruction contract as long as there's an available 
advanceable card on the table. So you have to play advanceable ice. What happens is when you trash the Rikoko, you do the trash, you pay the cost. And before you do the ability, you fire a checkpoint, which checks op and op says, you know, when you trash a card first time a turn, I can't click on op. You can go get a zero coster from your deck. So then once the runner is confirmed to access, you install an Urtica cipher or a cerebral overwriter, whatever makes more sense for the board state. And then that's on the table. Once that's on the table, you finish the effect, which says move any number of advancement tokens from the reconstruction contract to a card that being advanced. So you put the three advancements on the Urtica or the Cerebral Overrider. Now, if the runner doesn't run them, next turn you put three more advancements and you do that exact same combination at the beginning of your turn to get a clearing house that does six meat damage and they die. Now, the, one of the few cards that does beat it is uh, the thing that lets you to jack out Flip Switch, because as soon as they do the combo and they've committed to use their thing to get the advancements on a Cerebral Overrider or Urtica, you just jack out in response to it. Very powerful, very fast. I think we're going to see combo Holloman decks that are going to be even meaner than this. I just don't know what they are. Uh, but it's a Rococo problem. Then finally today, of course, we played Big Wolf Kit. I think there's some tuning to do here. We ended up playing two Labasomim. I'll update this once I post it into decklist, but this is pretty straightforward. It's weak to rig shooting. I think you can build around that, but all the cards in this work the way that you want. We ended up not playing rigging up, and I think there's a lot of tuning to do here. We didn't end up playing twinning. This deck literally has 10 influence to do whatever the heck you want with it. I'd argue that Ash and Apolog is worth the two because we're mostly event-based, but yeah, it's a pretty pretty solid thing. Because I can also beats it, there's a bunch of run events that beat it, but inherently it doesn't beat it if it's behind a border control. Like you're right, because I can can beat it, uh, light the fire beats it, by any means beats it. Those cards are not very common, but if you put them behind a border control, it doesn't beat it. You need two of them. It's very hard. Are we getting to a silver bullet meta now? I don't think so. I think flip switch is just universally good if you can play it, but I do think that this is a deck that probably people don't want to exist. I think Rococo is not long for the world, not for this deck specifically, but because no change in game state, this thing's a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, of course, don't do this. Don't. You know better. By any means doesn't care about border control. Oh, you're right. By any means doesn't. Yeah, you just have to run back. Can you pinhole the Holloman? You cannot. So pinholing also doesn't work. What's really funny about pinhole is a couple things. So you have to play around pinhole. If you pinhole the Holloman and they have enough counters to make a lethal trap, once you say, do you want to access or do you want to make a successful run, right? Before the pinhole fires, then you fire the combo. And then you have the trap on the table, which you have to over install and trash the Holloman. So when you use Rococo to uh, trash itself to get the Urtica, just trash the Holloman, which you're allowed to do whenever you install a card in the root of the server. And then they have to access the card. Now you can F up if you have a, another remote server, because as soon as you have another remote server with something in it, you can't wipe both of them on the single install. So you actually, you'll always have a trap and then another card they can choose to pinhole. It's fine if it's a spin doctor because you can pop the spin doctor, but just watch out. This thing can be bait by pinhole, but only if the corporation messes up. Because if the corporation has two different cards you can access, obviously just pinhole the other one. But if there's only one card, pinhole is not a, a may ability. You have to access the trap. Uh, so yeah, it's it's a bullet, but it doesn't beat this if the a runner does it right or the corporation sets it up correctly. Just don't like don't put a drudge work on the table and don't empty it because then they'll just access the drudge work. That being said, yeah, you just can't have it. Uh, we didn't play this deck, but this is uh, Off on One's deck. It's a startup. It looks cool. It looks cool. Anyways, that's it for the week, man. Uh, it was really fun. <laughs> we streamed like, I don't know, maybe 20 hours of Netrunner. I had a good time. The set's wild. Mind you, there's a bunch of tournaments this week. Things like AMT, which you can watch on Twitch slash TV slash Null Signal Netrunner. Uh, that's coming up on Saturday night for me. Nan PCs this weekend. This, you know, the beginning of Nan PC seems like a really, really big deal and people are flying out. It won't be streamed, but we'll have the video footage up here on the channel in the future. So that's pretty cool. And that, again, is all the new cards legal. Are we getting more Tuesday streams every week moving forward? Yeah, we're going to return to Tuesday streams on the regular. We'll have a Tuesday stream next week. Again, about 12.15 we start. We might start a bit earlier, 11.15, something like that. Uh, but otherwise next Thursday, we won't be around. Also very importantly tonight, Ysengrin, I'm pretty sure is around. Jeff, if you can hear me, if you want to say no, say no. But, uh, usually Jeff is around. I think he might be playing some world tree shaper, which is good fun. Have a great vacation next week. Thank you. Yeah. My, my, uh, my father is retiring. So we're going to go to see him and congratulation on making it through. Uh, really my dad's kind of great. Had a great time watching. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's like an ending note here. Like I had a lot of fun. A lot more people showed up to hang out to do this thing than normal. That's probably the new set to a big extent. Let alone the new set is a mystery. So having, you know, a guiding hand alongside it is great. But honestly, this is a lot of fun. And I would consider streaming a bit more if it makes sense. And I need to figure out how to make it make sense. But it was an absolute treat. And just like 
obviously new cards makes it easy because every day there was more things I wanted to do than we had time to do, which is really cool. But let me know what makes sense. I think I want to put video content together in the near future. It's easier to watch. I don't know if it makes sense. Like on this channel now, there's like 15 hours of content to watch in the week. Is that approachable? Do you watch all of it? Do you go through the timestamps and watch games? Like just let me know what you like and what works for you. Cause clearly I'm doing this so that there's cool Neverwinter stuff and you can get more out of the game. It's that simple. I have fun playing the game, but it's so you can get more out of the game. So let me know what works for you. Thanks for much to stream. Oh, Cody. Hey, my pleasure. Congrats to your dad. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats to Papa Andre. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. My dad is like one of those guys that is always working and I'm worried when he doesn't have work, what he's going to get up to. Uh, he plays a lot of tennis. He just hurt his shoulder really bad. So he can't tennis. It's like really bad timing. Uh, surgery will be happening soon enough, but my dad's an absolute hero for the community. Really nice dude. Thanks for streaming all your video editing's on top. Thank you. We haven't got a video out. I'll be recording on Saturday with Jeff, the tier list. Then we'll be recording the other half Larry next week. They'll probably be coming out. Like I'll be stoked if I can get the video out on Thursday when we normally stream, but I think Jeff's goes first and then mine goes out so I can be like, if you watch this, go see Jeff's channel because Jeff's video will be up. So Jeff's will come out first. I think I get runner side, Jeff gets corpse side, which I think one side of the pack is a bit better than the other. You tell me which one. Can I go over Metro Bucket podcast to listen while I work? Just put the stream on. I think a lot of the times you can pay attention to the stream, even if there's no audio, like no video. But yeah, podcasts are fun. Yeah, we'll soon to pop Andre. Yay. He should get into Netrunner. <laughs> it's weird. Like he's so... He has a sort of thing where like, if he's not doing anything, he needs to be doing something. So he's like incredibly athletic. He plays sports. He used to play tennis like four or five times a week. That was his sport right now. He used to play a lot of basketball, but now it's tennis. Uh, he's kind of the same way I do where like, I don't like sitting around. I'd rather just do a puzzle or a board game or obviously play Netrunner, but he's that for sports, which like, if you look at me, opposite directions, the two of us went for sure. Tearless collab has been so lovely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I know a lot of people are looking forward to Tearless. If you want to see more Tearless on that note, check out, uh, there's one on Baremu. There's one on Axu's channel. The podcast, the process, they did one out. They also worked on their, their, they had problems with their, uh, their reveal where like the audio was not that good. The audio is perfect now. I, I'm not the biggest, I'm not that offended by bad audio because that stuff is hard to do great, but they fixed it. So if you heard the last process thing, you were like, that's enough process for me. No, check it out. It's, it's really quite good. It's like two hours. It's on Spotify. Uh, and that's mostly it. Anyways, enjoy your week. I had a good time. Uh, thanks for hanging out uh, again. We're supported on the Patreon. Again, yeah, this stuff just probably straight up wouldn't happen without the support of a lot of folks. So thanks so much. These are just, again, some names that support us here from Sure Gamble to Grimia Tears. Uh, but we have a lot of daily cast patrons too. If you want to support the channel, you can find a link in the description. If you just want to like the video, subscribe to the channel, notify, share, all that sort of stuff. It also helps the channel a heck of a lot. So thanks so much for that. I probably should have started that rant sooner because right now we're just going to look at all these nice names. Hey, it's Frank. He lives in my neighborhood. Nice guy. Also, if you see your name here and you want a little icon next to it, which are mostly front loaded, I don't know why that happened. Let me know. We can get a little icon next to your name, which is great. Uh, thanks for everything this week, Andre. So much fun. Yeah, it's been really fun. I thought it'd be tiring. I think the only thing that was weird is like I went to bed last night pretty late because after the stream, I do publishing stuff. And then I woke up and it's like 10 o'clock. Are you going to go back to streaming? I was like, I just finished streaming 10 hours ago. That doesn't seem right. So we waited a bit. The process is I'm out the best high level never in content for like tournament level analysis. I agree with you, Sanjay. It's really good to hear those players talk because they're very good players. I think it's really interesting because the way that they look at the game versus the way I look at the game is actually like genuinely pretty different. Uh, I do think the process, this might be offensive. I don't mean it to be offensive. Maybe they'll agree with me, but I don't think a lot of the process folks are like deck builders. Like a lot of times they'll say, if someone figures it out, we'll play it. Uh, but they're like very good value-based Netrunner players. Um, I think there's a lot of cards in this set that are like, you have to build around it or are going to build weird decks, which like, that's maybe a bit harder, but I, I watched it. I listened to the two hour thing. I, I really like the process a lot. I like that high, like high, high competitive tier players are have no problem talking openly about how they think about the game, which is not always the case for every sort of card game out there in which people play competitively. Cool. Anyways, check out that stuff. I'll, I'll link most of that in the description. Enjoy your, uh, your weekend. Enjoy your set launch, your upcoming events this weekend. And yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Take care, y'all. Ciao. It's been a fun week.